va vous faire tourner la tête. Et hey, c'est Mir de Gombilan, j'espère que vous allez bien. FF16 n'aura pas gardé longtemps son titre de vidéo la plus longue sur GML, détrôné par un certain Baldur's Gate 3, qui regroupe d'ailleurs les 4 épisodes déjà en ligne. Alors vous le savez, j'ai complètement adoré le jeu de chez Larian Studio, j'ai jamais autant passé de temps sur un jeu prévu sur la chaîne, je me devais de parcourir cette aventure à 100%, c'est-à-dire qu'en plus de l'histoire principale, vous aurez droit à toutes les quêtes secondaires que j'ai trouvées, et qui sont toutes aussi excellentes, sans oublier les quêtes de nos chers compagnons jusqu'à leur dénouement. Pour revenir à la quête principale, j'ai vraiment essayé de vous proposer le cheminement le plus épique et intéressant, alors pas forcément le plus facile, mais je pense avoir fait l'une des meilleures fins possibles. La vidéo est très longue, mais très complète, et surtout, prenez votre temps pour la savourer comme il faut, tout est important, certains personnages ou quêtes du début peuvent revenir à la fin. Ce jeu, comme la vidéo, n'est vraiment pas fait à être rushé. Au niveau de l'histoire, elle se situe un siècle après les événements de Baldur's Gate 2, mais il n'est pas vital de connaître ce dernier, même si de nombreux clins d'œil et personnages feront à coup sûr qui fait les fans. Allez, finis la parole de place au jeu, je n'ai plus qu'à vous souhaiter un bon visionnage, et si ça vous plaît, n'oubliez pas d'acheter le jeu. Bisous
This is your end. Your head throbs and your skin tingles. Visions rush past. A dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. What is this? Blesses me this day. Together, we might survive. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. notice you. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. Construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend to die for a stranger? Try that contraption next to the pod. They did something to it when they sealed me in. Hurry! Please! The console appears dormant. The console hums to life. But what is its purpose? Will it free the captain? Transform her like that other unfortunate. This device is different from the one that caused the other captive to transform. Perhaps it will open the nearby pod. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades, and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. You feel the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness, because you have a gith with you. You keep dangerous company. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. One moment. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. Lead on. We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. Kane Yank. <laughs>
Connect the nerves of the Transponder. We must escape. Now. Do it. We will deal with the Geich after we escape. It's clear. Hurry! Before they strike! The Helm's alien Transponder. You've made it in time. As you wake, the tadpole squirms in your skull. The chaos of the crash site confuses the landscape. You'll need to find a settlement or landmark, and you'll need to do it quickly. The tadpole is a death sentence, and the clock is ticking. You need a cure. the ship. I remember falling. Then nothing. First things first. We need supplies, shelter, and most of all, a healer. We might have escaped, but we still have these little monsters in our heads. One thing, just before we go. I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod. But you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. Fresh water. There must be a settlement somewhere nearby. Hey! Hurry! I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? There. Can you see it? Shh. Not a sound. Not if you want to keep that darling neck of yours. 
And you, keep your distance. No need for this to get messy. I need him alive. Stow that blade or I'll show you just how messy things can get. Oh. <laughs> promises, promises. But I have other business, I'm afraid. Now, I saw you on the ship, didn't I? Nod. You son of a... Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light. The fear. <laughs> what was that? What's going on? The worm. Of course. That explains things somewhat. And to think, I was ready to decorate the ground with your innards. <laughs> Apologies. My name's Astarian. I was in Baldur's Gate when those beasts snatched me. Of course it'll turn me into a monster. What else did I expect? Although... It hasn't happened yet. If we can find an expert, someone that can control these things, there might still be time. You know, I was ready to go this alone, but maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. And you seem like a useful person to know. There, the Mind Flayer. And it's hurt. That thing's bound to be dangerous, even if injured. Best be careful. You approached the dying monster. This is the thing that abducted you. You could end its life here and now, if only you didn't feel... compassion. Compassion? You can't move, can't think. Thinking is mercifully done for you. It will be a joy to serve, to die for it an honor. It's possessing your mind, forcing you to love it. But then the feeling slips. The creature's mind seems to focus elsewhere. Your minds fuse, lusting for something that is gone. But then its grip claws back with a vengeance, a vice locking your mind into obedience. It needs sustenance to survive, and with your very body, you can provide. The monster lies exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet orange pearls, radiate malice. You approach the sigil on the stone. Magic glitters and swirls from it erratically, as if malfunctioning. It looks slightly dangerous. A hand? Anyone? Hello. I'm Gale of Waterdeep. Apologies. I'm usually better at this. A bit shocked, but friend, it's a relief and a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Say, but I know you, don't I? In a manner of speaking. You were on the Nausloid as well. And I can only assume you too were on the receiving end of a rather unwelcome insertion in the ocular region. The insertee we speak of, this parasite, are you aware that after a period of excruciating gestation, it will turn us into mind flayers? It's a process known as ceramorphosis, and let me assure you, it is to be avoided. You don't happen to be a cleric by any chance, do you? A doctor? Surgeon? Uncannily adroit with a knitting needle? 
You seem to know enough about our condition to realize it's beyond most clerics' skills. Most, no doubt. But I find myself hoping to be in the presence of the few. You don't happen to be one of them. We're most certainly going to need a healer, and soon, too. How about we lend each other a helping hand once more and look for a healer together? You think it's dangerous? Of course it's dangerous. One of them carved up Zoru's whole squad. Zoru was right. Yellow as a toad and twice as ugly. The thing's dangerous. Leave it for the goblins to kill. And if it escapes, how will you... Oh, a guest. Your skull pounds in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips don't move, yet you hear her voice. Get rid of them. Remember how keen she was to leave me to die in the Nautiloid? We can't trust her. He's right. Let's go. We need to check out that blast. You didn't hear it. Shook our camp good, so we came for a look. Northwest. Look for Nettie. Whatever your wound, she can mend it. And be careful. There are goblin traps everywhere. Nymessa, come. Enough gawking. Get me down. Observe and listen. You'll hear goblins before you see them. As you say. The tadpole hasn't yet scrambled all your senses. Auspicious. But the longer we wait, the more it consumes. My people possess the cure for this infection. I must find a creche. You will join me. Careful. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. You are full up. Dismiss your weakest warrior. I'll be in the camp then, idling away the hours. You have made an ally from Kresh Kalir. Few know such fortune. Call me Lazel. I'll trust your judgment, but I won't trust her. Not until I've gotten the measure of her. You've a sharp tongue, elf. Would that your mind proved its equal. Half elf. I suppose the finer details are lost on a creature like you. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. You both twice as tall as me, but I'm half the bloody backbone! But we don't know what that thing even is. And what about the crypt? I'm telling you, it's a ship. And the crypt can wait. Mari and Barton have been trying to break in for days. Now we... Stop! Got ourselves competition already. The only thing we're sharing with you is our pointy ends. Get him! will be on us any second! What's going on? Goblins are on our tail! Open the gates, Sevlor, now! You let goblins hear? Where is the druid? Please! There's no time! By the nine hells! Open the gates! Come on! 
provoke the blade. Then suffer its sting. Was the last of them. Inside! All of you! More may follow! Open the gate! You let them to... There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too! Unbelievable! Shut it, horns! I'd be lying dead next to the goblins if you'd stalled any longer. My duty is to this camp. Oh, God forbid you risk your precious tail. But I shouldn't be surprised. Foul bloods ain't known for courage. Worried about your precious hides, the both of you. Enough! Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. Hmm? Come, introduce yourself in the caves. I need to get people moving. Refugees. Adventurers, no one in years, and suddenly we're overwhelmed. Well met, and thank you for beating back those goblins. Most brave of you. Is there anything you need? Act fast if you do. The ritual will be complete before too long. I pray no goblin arrow has grazed you. Nettie could put you to rights. She should be with the others in the inner chambers, but I doubt she'll be taking on new patients. The grove will be locked down soon. Please, let us through. Let my daughter go right now! She's a thief, Hellspawn. And you will wait for Korga's judgment. Now get back! Oh, let me through, Mradrashev, or I'll rip your damn throat out! <gasps> Give him a chance. You, get back! A moment, Giona. What? Oh, I understand. You! Apparently Korga wants to see you. Go ahead. Please! I'm sorry. This is madness, Korga! She's just a... A what, Wrath? A thief? A poison? A threat? I will imprison the devil. And I will cast out every stranger. We will speak soon enough. First, judgment must be passed. The parasite eats our food, drinks our water, then steals our most holy idol in thanks. Wrath, lock her up. She remains here until the rite is complete. And keep still, devil. Tila is restless. Come, Koga. We took back the idol. Surely... Do it. I hear the Tree Father's spirit in your words. It is as you say. Sivisif, Tila, to me. Out, thief. My grace has its limits. <laughs> it hurts. Thank you, Korga. Master Holsen was- Halsen isn't here. Keep his name off your tongue, lest Tila pierce it. I know that look. You're wondering why I was in pain before. Let's just clear the air about that now. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just... something I have to live with. Go on. Say it. You think I'm a monster? 
First you urge grace, then you speak truth. You surprised me twice over. A shame the grace period ends. The Viper's fangs have been bared. She must guard her brood. No matter. I took back the idol of Sylvanus, and the rite is resumed. We will seal the grove, free from harm, free of intruders. The rite of thorns. It is the Tree Father's gift that none come to harm. When we speak the final prayer, the great vine will sprout forth. The grove will be cloaked in bramble and thorn. No one enters, no one leaves. Sanctuary. None of this can happen while outlanders infect us. Sylvanus demands that we choke them out. I am first druid now. I protect the circle, whatever the cost. You showed great metal at the gate. The metal of a skilled sword for hire. I want you to provide your services to the tiefling leader. Zevlor, he's called. Offer to guide the outlanders out of the grove. I'm sure they'll reward you well. They're to be gone before final prayer. If they are not, the Viper must strike. This tale ends but one way. With the outlander rot cleansed, and the grove forever shrouded. The bird's eyes are glassy. It's breathing weak. I see you. Just give me a moment. This medicament. There. It's up to her now. Life or death. Now, what was it you needed? A tadpole. A mind flare tadpole. I... Uh, I'll do what I can. Come, follow me. I might be able to help. This one had the same problem as you. Attacked us in the woods together with some goblins. Tadpole crawled out of his head soon after. Seems so. Give Master Halson a right start. It's why he joined the adventurers on their expedition. To find out what was happening. A pity you got me instead of him. He understands these things. Studied them. Still, we have options. You don't have to be here for this. No, I'll stay. I'd rather know exactly what you're up to. All right. Let's see what we can do. Of course. Now, tell me what's been happening. Any symptoms? Strange events? Victims can identify each other. Not that the others know they're victims, of course. How do you pick up the parasite? Halson was desperate to find where all this was happening. A mind flare ship? But Master Halson was sure. Look, you've been straight with me, so I'll be straight with you. You're dangerous. If you transform here, we're all dead. But you seem like a good soul. You deserve a chance to save yourself. This is a vial of wyvern poison. Swear to me, you'll swallow it if you feel any symptoms. The thorn? Coated in a fatal toxin. It was a last resort, in case I couldn't trust you. I don't have a cure. Only a way out. I'm sorry for misleading you, but I had to be sure you weren't a threat before I told you everything. Now, do I have your word or not? Swear it. 
I hope it doesn't come to that. But thank you. Here. You know, I've spent my life treating folk and never once saw a mind flare infection. Then suddenly, there's dozens of you. Maybe more. Master Halson and I were tracking them, studying them, trying to figure out what the hells was going on. Because you should all be changing. There should be a small army of mind flayers out there. But you're not. Weird powers aside, you seem perfectly normal. Mind flayers reproduce by infecting someone with their parasite. Seven gruesome days later, the victim transforms and a new mind flayer is born. The thing in your skull, though, it's different to anything in our records. It's one of their worms for sure. But this one gives you powers, telepathic connections, and it doesn't turn you into one of them. Not yet, anyhow. Could be, but there's a lot we don't know. Infected, folks like you, have been converging on an old temple of Saluna, and I've no idea why. When Master Halson heard the adventurers were heading that way, he saw a chance to get answers, joined on the spot. Whatever he found there, he didn't make it back. The thing is, I've sent birds to find him. But the place is rotten with goblins. None of us can even get close. You, though, you're one of them. Technically speaking, I mean. They won't kill someone carrying their parasite. If you can find Halson and get him out of there, we can discover what he learned. And perhaps he can save your life. How's that sound? Thank you. It would mean everything to the Grove. To me. I wish I could tell you more. But only those adventurers know what happened out there. All I can say for sure is they all went to the old temple of Saluna. And Master Halson didn't make it back. Good luck out there. And if things start to go bad, remember the vial. Remember your oath. Chuck, be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halson, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each crash contains a Zathis purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself. ...that we may gain total understanding. Bells, it's our job to get us out of here safely. You ever scare me like that again, and... ...I'll feed you to a knoll! Mom, I'm fine. Stop it. Our little Hellion told us what happened. Thank you. Don't know what we'd do without her. Likewise. Arabella? Thank you. For helping me. I heard what happened. Thank you for protecting the child. If the druids are this far gone, then it's not just goblins we have to fear. So we can risk violence here, or face it for certain on the road. Quite the choice, isn't it? Go on. Give me a best shot. Not bad. Again. I can't do it. I'm not like you. Umi. I don't need you to be like me. You just have to buy enough time to run. Come on. I believe in you. You can do this. Hmm. You're on the right path, Umi. Go on now. Practice what you've learned.
Well met. The Blade of Frontiers at your... The man's smile bends downward, and his thoughts become yours. You are the Blade of Frontiers racing through the wastes of Avernus. Just ahead, a diabolical figure, red skin, single curled horn, blazes with flame, bloodied great axe held. <sighs> Hell's great fires. You were on the ship. Hmm. Doomed to shed our skin and become a lithid, or so the stories go. But we haven't sprouted any tentacles. Not yet, anyway. Could just be good luck. I'm not so. Your minds collide once more. Will chases the fiend ignited with rancor. She is an infernal war devil. A threat to the living. Evil incarnate. Shit! You saw her. Advocatus Diaboli. Advocatus Diaboli. A devil's advocate. A champion in the blood war between diabolical forces and demons. That ship sailed the sticks already. All I can hope for is to limit the damage. Her name is Karlak, an archdevil soldier I swore on my good eye to kill. I tracked her through the hells to the Mind Flayer ship, but the damned Elithids infected me before I could end her. She's out there now, preying on the innocent. I don't kill her, she'll leave behind nothing but a trail of corpses. Just so you know, my first duty is Karlak. I'm oath-bound to go after her. But I won't deny this infection is bothersome. I accept your invitation. Again. Swing and swing. By Mordai's eyes, another one. My friend's blood not enough. Come to rip me open too. In Kresh Kalir, a formal greeting begins with a bow. Lower. You dare interrupt. Has the tadpole ravaged your senses? On the road to Baldur's Gate, near the mountain pass. S saw us, for we saw it. Jammed its blade through Yul's belly. Straight to the other side. And I just... I just ran. The map. Show me. Up. You can keep your innards. The last time a subordinate questioned my judgment, I ate tongue stew that very night. I warned you, didn't I? You ought to reconsider keeping her around before she causes real trouble. The Teesling was clear. If there are Githyanki west of here, that must be our objective. Purification cannot wait. I am unfamiliar with the, well, I shall not say culture, custom perhaps. You will educate me on matters of this fey run. Something the matter. There's no story. None that you're entitled to hear, anyway. Just forget you ever saw it. And I haven't forgotten that you saved my life aboard the Nautiloid. Perhaps I'll be able to return the favor at some point. Go ahead. I'm listening. Let's see. I hail from Waterdeep, City of Splendors. I am a wizard of considerable acclaim and scholar of exceptional accomplishment. I have a cat, a library, and a weakness for a good glass of wine. And if the mood takes me, I'm known to try my hand at poetry. There. Who 
with you in a moment. Not a trick, my friend. Magic. Be that as it may. Ceramorphosis. What does it make you think of? Spot on. Day one, fever and memory loss. Day two, hallucinations and graying skin. Day three, hair loss and blood leaking from all orifices. Need to go on? Day four, excruciating pain as the skeleton and organs reform and reposition. Day five, the host personality has disappeared. Fingers and toes and limbs elongate. I take it you get the picture? Day six, the flesh around the mouth splits to make way for tentacles. Day seven, a mind flayer is born. This is the annotated version, of course. Our orifices remain blissfully unblooded, our heads remain clear, and our blood temperature normal. A rogue might call it luck, a priest might call it fate. As for myself, I'm a pragmatic. I see the silence before the storm. Something to sleep on. We should get some rest. You're a true soul. You can't die. Please, stay with us. I, I don't think he's conscious. C can you hear us, Ed? You, not a step closer. A strange symbol glows marked on their flesh, and something within you stirs in response. He's hurt badly. An oil bear got him deep. If there's anything you can do... I'm watching you. The injured man locks eyes with you. A familiar squirming churns in your head. Your minds intertwine. You see his siblings, Andrik and Brenna, new recruits, yours to shepherd. Protect them. He is a true soul. Mind him. He will. He. Hey. Edwin! Ed! Please! He's with the Absolute now. You're... You're a true soul. Edwin, our brother, he was chosen. Like you. Do you have orders for us? We were reporting to Edwin. I suppose... I suppose he'd want us to go on. Find a way to honor his sacrifice. May the Absolute guide us. Strange power resonates within the corpse. It calls to you. Your limbs move of their own accord. There's something of value here. Something your mind craves. Why let its host's memories go to waste? The tadpole has absorbed it all. Its experience could nourish you, strengthen you, your muscles loosen. The tadpole breaks free of its deceased host. Your mind is your own again. For now. The dog lowers his hackles, his head tilted inquisitively. Convinced that you're harmless, he turns his attention back to the corpse. The dog looks at his owner with sad eyes. He does not move. The dog sniffs your hand, his tail swung low in understanding. He knows how to find you. Owlbear tracks. Its nest must be nearby. You feel the quake of its heavy footsteps before you see it. An owlbear. Its beaked face 
looming out of the darkness. The owlbear's one good eye flicks away for a moment. You follow its glance and see an owlbear cub. The owlbear stares, then sharply inhales your scent. It sits back, its eyes still fixed on you. A silent ultimatum. You can leave now or step closer and die. Strange. It looks healthy, but it's stone dead. Dead boar. But it doesn't look like it's been touched by scavengers. The carcass seems to be fresh, only a few hours dead. You notice two small puncture wounds in its neck. Looking closer, you can see the skin around its face is desiccated. It's been completely drained of blood. Get over there! Surround them like! You spoiled us! Good! It's like they say. No fun in skewing a pig what doesn't know he's cooked. We got you surrounded. Here's how this goes. You take one step further, and we'll fill your front with arrows. Or you turn around, and your backside gets the same treatment. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. You're a true soul. But my mistake, sir. Something stirs deep within you, hungry and alert. It's taking something you'll never get back. You'll get no more trouble from us. Promise. Go try your charms on someone who's out of earshot. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? behind us. Far behind us. My, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say. For your journey is just beginning. What would suit the occasion? Hmm. The words to a lullaby, perhaps. The mouse smiled brightly. It outfoxed the cat. Then down came the claw. And that? Love. Was that? <laughs> They do know how to write them in Cormir, don't they? Well met, I am Raphael. Very much at your service. Neither. The fox, rather. Hiding, in a word. A silent observer, about to break the silence. Of course. What I have to say merits some privacy, as well as some more, let's call it, refinement. This quaint little scene is decidedly too middle of nowhere for my tastes. Come. There. Middle of somewhere. The house of hope, where the tired come to rest and the famished come to feed lavishly. Go on, partake, enjoy your supper. After all, it might just be your last.
What's better than a devil you don't know? <laughs> a devil you do. Am I a friend? Potentially. An adversary? Conceivably. But a savior? That's for certain. One skull, two tenants, and no solution in sight. I could fix it all like that. And what is madness but a denial of reality? Still, I have a feeling you'll change your mind before it's changed for you. Try to cure yourself. Shop around. Beg, borrow, and steal. Exhaust every possibility until none are left. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. Hope. <laughs> Such a tease. By all means, bite the hand that feeds you while you still have teeth. All those pretty little symptoms Sundering skin, dissolving guts, they haven't manifested yet, have they? One might say, you're a paragon of luck. I'll be there when it runs out. Something tore right through these people. They didn't stand it. Beast reeks of brimstone and offal. Every breath is thick with blood. You hear what comes next before you see it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body starts to twist and undulate. You watch with cold realization. This isn't the end of one life, but the start of another. Gnolls, vicious, monstrous humanoids can spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. Her belly splits like a rotten fruit, birthing a frenzy of claws and fangs. Please, friend. Who's there? Please, keep your distance. You're welcome to shelter here, but we've grave injuries to tend to. The devil, the most deadly foe we've yet encountered. We are paladins of Tyr, Lord of Justice. He sent us after an infernal being, straight out of the Nine Hells, hiding in the form of a one-horned tiefling. One horn? Then you mean Karlak, Archdevil's bootlicker. You know her, which means you know what the Fiend is capable of. She slaughtered countless refugees fleeing the Absolute. Yesterday, she butchered an entire family without mercy. We were lucky to survive our encounter with her. This could be the work of a devil, but they collect souls through cunning, not carnage. She ran toward the river when she saw we were merely wounded, not dead. Down the hill from here. She must pay for her crimes. If you capture her, you will have served Tyr where we could not. This is the sword of justice, blessed by Tyr. I've wielded it since I swore my oath. It's all I have, but it's yours if you stop her. Bring me her head, and Tyr will consider her crimes repaid. May the just God guide you. One horn, the stink of Avernus, Advocatus Diaboli. <laughs> Oh. <sighs> 
Well, I'll be God's damned. The Blade of Frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Bloody right. An honor to be chased by the Blade of Frontiers. But I... Ugh! A great heat roars through you. Her heat, fiery as the hells. Then you're lost in visions of demonic armies as you tear through a landscape of fire and blood. The blood war. You saw it from above as the Nautiloid passed through Avernus. This woman was on the front line. What was that? Evidence. Proof that you're a devil. A gladiator in the Archdevil Zariel's army. I can explain, but it's a whole situation. If you just hear me out... Another vision. Karnak's blade raised, slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Her rage and desperation seep into you. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. She's trying to trick us. Don't believe her lies. You saw the truth. I never wanted to serve Zariel. I was enlisted in her army against my will. Forced to fight, and fight I did. When I saw an opportunity to get away, I took it. Finally home. Near it anyway. You served her. That's enough to damn you. Will catches his breath and his lips straighten. Sheer dread twists his face. You don't know what you're saying. You're asking me to trust a devil. You know monsters, right? Better than anyone. Look into my eyes. Can't you see I'm not what you think? Shit. You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truce. I'm Karlak. But you already knew that. And you are... Well met, soldier. Nice to meet a friendly around here. It's been tough going so far. I may not be a devil, but I can put the Blade's reputation to work. How would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastards? Little background, if your moral compass needs something to point at. You already know I fought in the Blood War. I was good. Really good. It turns out I've got a knack for killing demons. That made me a valuable asset. Zariel, the archdevil herself, made me as her personal attack dog. I played along until I could get the fuck out of there, but devils don't like to lose their assets. <laughs> Zariel liked it so little. She sent a bunch of goons, so-called paladins of tear, to take me back. Problem is, I'm not going. Yes. They cornered me outside the toll house just up the hill. Doubt they've gone far after the scorching I gave them. Then we can work on evicting this parasite and take Faerun by their short hairs. Sound good? I'd hug you if it wouldn't scorch your skin off. Ah, uh, hang on though. Looks like you've got enough backup at your side. Not sure there's room for me. I'll catch up with you when it's time to camp for now. But don't get to any of the fun stuff without me. Got it? You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. It means that a reckoning's coming. And I'll be the one to pay up. One night soon when we make camp, the veil will be lifted and I'll pay my penance. You're not in any danger, I promise. I can't say the same about me. 
Tiring business, isn't it? All this traveling and adventuring. Why don't we take a little break, hmm? Allow ourselves a few moments of rest? Gives me a chance to talk to you about something. Well, rather important. We've been on the road together for a while now, haven't we? Hmm? Survived some perils, overcame some obstacles. Ever since you were kind enough to free me from that stone, I've seen you demonstrate remarkable guile and courage. The way you diffused the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you stood in front of a crossbow to prevent a murder. The way you got Korga to release the girl. In short, I've grown to trust you. The reason I make a point of saying this is that I've grown confident enough to tell you something I've yet to tell another living soul, except for my cat. You see, I have this condition. Very different from the parasite we share, but just as deadly. The specifics are rather personal, but suffice it to say that it is a malady I've learned to live with. Though not without some effort. What it comes down to is this. Every so often, I need to get my hands on a powerful magical item and absorb the weave inside. I'll spare you the finer details, but it begins with a simple biological deterioration, muscle spasms, disorientation, a slight ringing in the ears, and, if left for too long, catastrophe. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact, since before we were abducted. It is time, and by that I mean it's imperative that I find and consume strands of weave at the earliest possible juncture. We've already done the finding. In fact, you have one in your possession. You know for yourself how hard one such an item was, and it will be no easier when even more are required to assuage my hunger. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Splendid. Bit of boldness will serve us well. As luck would have it, you're already primed to give me exactly what I need. Thank you. Oh. That hit the spot. I can feel it work. The magic, it's like a lullaby that sings to sleep the demon inside. A metaphorical demon, I haste to point out, but no less dangerous. And no less bound to wake up again to continue its ravages. Such is the nature of all monsters. Oh, it's not so bad once you get used to it. And, on the plus side, my tower in Waterdeep has never been so free of clutter. Hmm. Sincerely, though, I understand I ask a lot from you with few answers in return. But in time, all will be told. My lord, I bow to your boundless kindness. You spot a name on the dog's collar. Scratch. And you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. Well, you absolute stinker. You kept me a secret. Hmm. Time to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mazora. I'm Will's patron. 
the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupsters found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria, pet. Trust me on this. The point? Oh, yes. Thanks for the reminder. Will burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the Hells, gaining their essence and their torment. have you done the promise broken a price paid you know the terms get used to the new form pet there's no going back some magic even i can't undo now let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade karlak keep an eye on him would you i'll be keeping mine on you and will don't forget our pact still stands ta-ta god's damn her straight back to the hells just look at me i did what was right and mazora made me pay for it i'd be hunting devils and demons she said traitors and hypocrites heartless evils of all sorts but not not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock pacts tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. It's Mizora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this, the moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. I'll be honest, soldier, I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. <sighs> Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. <sighs> you can say that again. When he was chasing me through Avernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. Yes. It is much more... You brought her here. We won't survive another assault. Leave us in peace, and we shall leave you in kind. Cut the crap, Anders. I know what you are. Don't let her hurt us. Please. We just want to go home. There's something in the squint of his eye. You suspect he's lying. Enough. Enough. I'll not play pretend anymore. Karlak, you're going home in pieces of needs must. And you, 
You'll soon learn what it means to ally yourself with the likes of this garbage. Avernus was never my home. It was my prison. I'm free now. And I'm never going back! May the gods take you first. <laughs> Let my enemies fall. <laughs> I'm never going back. And if any of Mummy's little friends want to pick up where the others left off, they'll find nothing but a pile of ash. That's right, she won't. She can't. She couldn't even lay a finger! <laughs> Letting off a little steam after facing off with those ignots. Granted, the fire lasted a little longer than it should. Careful, soldier. If I burn any hotter, I might explode. Hear that? Infernal engine for a heart. Let's me burn as hot as the hells. Seems to be running in overdrive since I left Avernus. Won't be seeing my mechanic anytime soon, so I'll just make the most of the extra heat. Just don't get too close till I've found a way to calm it down. Wild, right? And believe it or not, I'm one of Zariel's least mutilated pets. But it's a bit early in the game to be getting into tragic backstories. Let's save the Scar Show for later, after we've worked up an appetite for tragedy. Meanwhile, I'll need to find someone who can tune up my engine sooner rather than later. Believe me when I say this thing is hot. The first time I faced down those paladins, they let slip there was an infernal mechanic in the area. A tiefling. He might be able to stabilize things, if I can find him. <clears throat> Stop this! Fight could have been avoided, but now you've made it inevitable. Another step forward. Stop! I give up! I'm a mercy, please! I know things. If you let me live, I'll make it worth your while, I promise! My lot are kept nearby. I can get you inside, no hassle! You can loot it, do whatever! There's a hidden path. B -b 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 past the, the bridge into the camp. Over to the side before you reach the first guards. Easy. F -f -f Thanks. And apologies. And, um, bye! Baga Kamara, there's pustulant thugs. Well, get on with it. You saved me, now you'll extort me. That's how this works, yes? Uh, my own fault, really. I should have dropped my pack and outrun those bastards. Alas. Take my pack, if you can find it. 
The only reason those goblins caught me was its weight. I'll travel lightly from now on. Ignorance is alive and well, it seems. Deep gnomes aren't restricted to the Underdark, you know. I've lived in Baldur's Gate for years. I'm in search of a friend. I fear he's in trouble. See this? I gave it to him years ago before I left home. I found it around the neck of a thug in the lower city. It was speckled with blood. My friend, nowhere to be found. But I still have hope. I have reason to believe he's in the Underdark. Hopefully, I'll pick up his trail from there. I always help my friends. On that note, <clears throat> I bid thee farewell. If we should meet again, well, we will have met again. Hmm. Oi, Thicko! This is off limits. Get to the main gate, or I'll plug you full of arrows. Wolf is stupid. Oi! Stand back! Where'd you come from? As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Very sorry, Mom. Very sorry. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. Enjoy the party. Recognize the overwhelming authority that you've used on others, only infinitely stronger. Your vision clouds, leaving you in a dark, featureless shadowscape, nothingness in every direction. Then there are three figures before you an armored male elf exuding power and command, a handsome younger man with a quick, easy smile, and a pale young woman with even paler eyes. These are my chosen. They speak for me. Aid their search for the weapon. And you will be worthy to stand beside them in my presence. The visions fade and the voice falters as a strange energy swells around you. The many-sided artifact. Somehow you understand it's repelling the presence. My power grows. My forces gather. The reckoning draws near. The voice is quelled. The artifact's doing. Whatever power the artifact possesses, Shows no sign of it now. Great glory! Sing the saucy one about the Draw Ragslin's best make as a with fragulous crown and with scepter a braid. Draw Ragslin, short work of the innkeeper made. The inn burnt to ash. The captives were many. Goblet kind had reduced them to cowering filfenny. So raise it, your goblets, and drain them with pride. Draw Ragslin, the true soul, had let you collide. I reckon draw Ragslin's the gobbo in charge. You, move on! Do as she says, now. <clears throat> now, where was I, huh? Wait a tick. That a friend of yours? Oh, certainly not. What are you doing? I'm busy here. You lying. 
To you? Never. Come, let's continue our ballad. <coughs> draw rags, Lynn. Draw rags, Lynn. Um, uh, um, uh, I am a draw rags, Lynn. Um, um, come, choose. Uh, draw rags, Lynn. Uh, um. You broke him. Wait, wait. Draw rags, Lynn. We pay. We. Come on, pigeon. Back to your cage. Now, oh, look what you've done. It's got wings. Reckon it can fly? I see oh. shall we? Too fat. Dragons is fat and they fly fine. Fresh dissolve with me bare hands. Weaker than pigs is humans. Ha oh, ha you got him good. And who are you? Another pest. Humans. Think you rule the world. Ah. The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. Everyone says that, and then they spit our faces. But no more. Things are changing. We got the absolute on our side now. You better learn your place. Go on, kiss my foot. Or I'll wipe that nasty look right off your face. End him or leave him. But don't you dare grovel to this slug. Just piss off. You're not welcome here. The goblin stares, mouth agape. Then he sets his jaw and falls to his knees. There. I've done it. Arrogant swine. Oi! Ain't no party in here. We're doing the absolute's work. State your business now. As the symbol glows, power courses through you. Authority. Your mind lurches, reeling suddenly as if bitten. Oh, beg pardon. You must be here to join the other true souls. Please, go right ahead. We got them now, eh? Who wants the wealth start singing? Do you hear the absolute voice? Do you feel her inside you? Now, here's somebody special. The absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess Gut needs to touch you, too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. A priestess? One of the leaders, no doubt about it. Let's make her squeal. What's that? Tell your friend to keep quiet, or he'll lose his good eye. Ready for the fire, are ya? Let's the faithful recognize one another quick sharp. That way nobody'll mess with ya. And it's charged with magic. Ordinary slobs can't see it. Only us that follow the absolute. You ready? Brace yourself. This'll sting. Maybe you don't need it. After all, you're special, ain't ya? Like me. She probes your mind, tangling your thoughts with hers. A familiar sensation. She too carries a power. Darkness seems to swallow the temple, leaving you with a vision of the goblin priestess receiving instruction from a handsome young man, one of the chosen. The vision dissolves away. You stand before the goblin priestess in the temple once again. Her faith floods into you, a tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestles within that mania, secure, hidden. I feel you in there, digging around. Works both ways. 
And I saw some weird shadows swimming around in your head just now. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another. A creature? There's definitely something rotten in there. Let me take a closer look. I ain't seen anything like this before. Hey, eh? Ain't nothing wrong with me. You're the one who's sick in the head. No need to panic, though. With the Absolute's will, I can fix anything. Let's deal with this in my chapel. It's private. Don't want this lot interfering with true soul business. Oi! Priestess! We want like the mark! Yeah. Why do they think they're talking Aren't to a god? Aren't we good enough for the absolute? You wager this absolute's going to get chatty with us. Don't want a crowd of gawpers. Everybody else needs to leave. Smart. All you need to do is open yourself to the absolute. And I'll do the rest. Psionic feelers creep across your mind, like a pickpocket's fingers seeking flaws in fabric. It's all slippery in there. What are you hiding? An image of the Mind Flayer reaches out to her from your memories. Helps! We need to fish that thing out before it eats any important parts of your brain. You won't regret this. Being a true soul, you know the Absolute don't like to touch nothing unclean. So drink this. It'll purify ya. You recognize telltale flecks of werejackal blood. It's a potion of sleep. I ain't deceiving nobody. I'm trying to help. I guess we're doing this the hard way then. Sweet dreams. Wakey, wakey. Don't bother struggling. You ain't going nowhere. The Absolute wants to know all about that critter in your head. So start talking. I know that much. I saw the whole horrible story in your memories. And I know what happens next. Your teeth fall out, your skin rips off, and you turn into one of them. Lies! I'm stronger than ever, and I've got the absolute on my side. But you, you're on your own. Nothing more than a skin suit for that monster inside you. You're gonna be my new pet. A ferocious squiddy. All for myself. You test the weight of the chains, looking for weak points. You slip free of the chains. You're all right. What happened in there? I'm sure you had a good reason. God's rest her. There are enough absolutists in this place to fill a reserve trench. One of them must have something interesting to say, right? Let's find out. Geek! This one's mine! 
intervention. <laughs> Look at this. I'm quite saved. I guarantee the story of your daring rescue of my person will live on for eons. I intend to do just that. A trusty invisibility potion goes a long way in a place like this. <laughs> we mustn't tarry, but I hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! Day three. Again! Again! Make it squeal again. We're juicing it up. The beast came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mince too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the wargs. And it makes funny noises. We made it squeal. Look, look, you'll see. Give me that rock. I'll show you. What are you? Get lost if you can't stand a bit of rough housing. Viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. Parasites in your head that you mean you have one of them? <sighs> Oak Father, preserve you, child. You're infected, aren't you? The Mind Flayer's spawn. But something's different. You're aware of the monster inside you. You don't bow to the Absolute like the true souls do. How is this possible? You weren't speaking lightly when you said you needed help. Let me tell you what I know. I've been studying these parasites for a while now. Ever since I discovered these so-called true souls are infected with them, someone is using very powerful magic to modify these tadpoles. They're using them to exert control over the infected. I'm sorry to say, I can't undo that magic, which means I can't cure you. But that doesn't mean I can't help. I didn't find what I came here for, a way to remove the tadpoles. But I found the next best thing. I found out where they come from. That must be where these enchantments are placed on them. And it's where you'll find your cure. I overheard that the cultists are sending all of their captives to Moonrise Towers. Innocents go in, true souls come out. Given that all of these true souls are infected, it has to be the source for this magic. If you want to find a cure, you must head there and discover how the tadpoles are being manipulated. I wish I could, but there's still work I've yet to finish. Blood I've yet to spill. I've no right to ask more of you, 
But if you could help me, I'd be free to join your journey to Moonrise. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. My thanks. If you prevail, I'll owe you the debt of a lifetime. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the Drow Minthara, the Hobgoblin Draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. Be warned. My presence could make things more difficult. I can only restrain my bear form so much. I won't be able to help but attack goblins. If I join you, we'll likely have to slaughter this entire place. You may want to use discretion when approaching the goblin leaders. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. Sugan and Sukok, or Taishokek Dors! I command you, corpse. Speak! Reveal truth to the Absolute! By Vlakith's blade, a geich. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Sugan and Sukok! This is the big boss. Strike him down! The Hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The visions cloud your inner eye for a brief moment once again. You see the Hobgoblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. The Hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. If it isn't another true soul. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? Now's your chance. This Mind Flayer's build is smaller, its garb plainer. A fearsome creature even in death, but not the one that tormented you. Yet it too roamed the Nautiloid. It would have seen you, known you. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You suddenly feel a strange anxiety take hold. Not your own, but that of the artifact you carry. Somehow, it's afraid. The artifact does not want to part from you. It does not want to fall into the Absolute's clutches. You choke on black smoke as the Hobgoblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth, Lucan Ock. I'll call Dek Shulko Kank! The hideous corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Your heart seizes, and are questioning the creature might recognize you as its killer. Ragslin's mind reels, then calms. He will speak as you command. With Ragslin's voice, you ask. Who is the Absolute? Ragslin frowns in confusion at a question he would never have asked. Then the creature speaks in visions. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, null teeth dripping blood. You see other mind flayers arranged in a serene circle. Absolute unity. Absolute power. Damn it! That tells me nothing! You feel Ragslin's suspicions. He'd never have asked about his master. You remain in control, 
Raxlin's mind. Your brain howls as you force a final query into his throat. Why were the Gith chasing that ship? You see dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spreads through the earth. The sky splits open and nautiloids pour out of a void that consumes the stars. What in the... The corpse collapses, silent once more. No, no! I'm not done! Riddles, all of it, and nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat! No answers, no killer, and no damned weapon! <sighs> the damned trow was right! Can't let her get all of that glory. Seems I ain't done with you. Report to the Drow. Minthar is the name. She's mounting an attack on that blasted grove. Tell her you'll join her. Praise the Absolute. Your scouting party has not returned, and half of the intruders escaped your guards. Sorry, mistress. We mucked up. Until their sanctuary is found, I will take something precious from you every hour that passes. A trinket, a tongue, a limb. Ain't no use without my limbs. The lad'll make the prisoner squeal soon enough. I swear. Silence now, creature. Or I will silence you forever. As she turns to you, her thoughts mingle with yours. A cold hand caressing your brain. The chamber melts away to reveal a dark, endless nowhere. In it, you see a vision. The drow listens as a pale-eyed young woman whispers in her ear. One of those the voice spoke of. One of the chosen. The vision fades away. A true soul? Praise be. Are you here to join my hunt? Worshippers of a false god. Their existence is an insult to the Absolute's claim on this region. There is a weapon the Absolute seeks. I'm sure those wretches have it hidden away there. We will find it amongst the dead and the ashes. Her excitement is palpable. She lingers on thoughts of victory, of unbelievers' blood spilled, and of the weapon. She will seize it in the Absolute's name. The thief, whimpering in our dungeon, tried to flee to their sanctuary. We will continue to remove parts of him until he tells us exactly where it is. He's been resilient, but he'll talk. She is seeking the grove you visited. Already you feel her mind closing around yours. You would dare! Guards, to me! You sought a fight, and now you have one. Again! an illicit parasite in that corpse. You should take a look. This one is a true soul parasite. It can enhance you. You can absorb its potential. Open your mind to it. You already know how. Your mind swells as it subsumes everything the tadpole has to offer. Everything it was and everything it was destined to be. 
pure potential, pure power. Good. You have grown your power and improved your chances of survival. So, you've indulged. Just helped yourself to a little more power, I see. And there isn't a tentacle to be seen. <laughs> Not a bad deal, I'd say. My only complaint is that you didn't want to share. I wouldn't mind indulging myself. I admit, I wasn't keen to be the first to try it, uh, just in case there were any, uh, surprise side effects. <laughs> but now that we know it's safe, I'm all for experimenting. She'll fertilize the fields with the dead! What you need in now? <laughs> might be useful. You did it. You actually did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice, but those three were too dangerous to leave alive. And you'll receive it soon enough. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. Saluna. As if mingling with a horde of goblins wasn't bad enough. Let's do what we have to do, then get out of here. Saluna's a bad omen. Just look what's befallen her temple. Though, I'll grant it must have been impressive once, in all its profane glory. I wonder what happened. No matter. I'll breathe easier once we're clear of this place. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flares, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. That, that can't be. You're either an excellent storyteller, or you've experienced something quite exceptional. Hmm. Tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. Hmm. You! Infected by a mind flare? Oh, ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, dear sweet 
gods! If we managed it, we'd have a specimen of incredible rarity on our hands. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. Ah, another. Thy name has been recorded. I shall be here in thy camp for whenever thou hast need of my services. There are many answers to that question. None are important. Correct. No. A mending of the threads between life and death. Should thou or any of thy compatriots perish, I will cleave soul to body once more. Because it is my calling, there is little else to explain. All's well, I hope, aside from the obvious. I know. I don't understand how exactly, but I felt it go to you. It's important. Keep it close. I do, but the artifact has a will of its own, and powers to enforce it. It likely won't let me take it back. The best I can do is to stay close. Bide my time. Eventually, I'll need to take it. Then, I'll have to see what can be done about that. Heavy. Moisture drips down your forehead. Pain shoots through your fingers. Your hands shake as they reach upward. Your forehead remains drenched no matter how much you wipe. Chukil gate vlaketh mazathok! Can you feel it crawling through you? Tendrils squirming in your chest, gripping your heart, piercing your belly, your bones popping, your flesh swelling. I can. I see it in you. I feel it in me. We are lost. I will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. Bah! I cannot trust my own mind, so it seems I must trust yours. I will wait, but know this, I am watching. If the sickness does not pass come dawn, I will end us all. I came just in time. You are transforming. Yes. You have. I saved you before. And I'm here to save you again. Don't worry. 
You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Faerun, a fight we are losing, for now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. any strange dreams of late vivid ones damn I was hoping my imagination had gotten the better of me but this must be something more this dream companion wanted me to use the tadpole use its power whoever it was claimed to be an ally but I don't know it seems like we can't escape this mess, in the waking world or otherwise. Ah, my good fellow. Quite the cosy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. You won't find a more learned opinion on this matter, I assure you. You only have a matter of days to live. Don't dally, my friend. I thought I had been a good teacher to you. Clearly not. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place, forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence. The right has been ended. I will allow you to stay, but consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids. Our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Halcyon.
She shows great insolence. But time will humble her. And the Grove still needs her. You will soon see why. But enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The Grove stands. Nature prevails. And again, I am in your debt. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. You've done it. You brought House in back. Thank you. No. Thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. As am I. The grove will be whole again. Let me show you on your map where you can find the cache. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. Very good of you. Thank you. Hal Sin will likely want to thank you too, mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Corger. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing! We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. You know, I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I'd be the one they'd toast for saving so many lives. And... Now that I'm here... I hate it. This is awful. True. That was fun. Still, I would have liked more for my trouble than a pat on the head and vinegar for wine. It's a heavy, rich red. Dry and sharp. See what I mean? Awful. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? Not at all. I was hoping for companionship. And, well, maybe a little death. Figuratively speaking. And not with you, just to be clear. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> Ugh, no. Anyway, don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have someone else to sniff around. Everyone seems to be in high spirits. Strange. You know who I never thought I'd find myself caring for? Exactly right. Never gave them much thought. Certainly not that bunch in the grove. Yet we came through for them. We saved their lives. Odd. That's more easily said by some than others. But nobody's here to debate right from wrong. Share a bottle with me? We should wait a little while. Until the others have drifted off. Best not keep me waiting. I'd prefer not to entertain myself. 
You have no idea how good it feels to see these people smiling. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. You made it. Come here. Sit with me. So eager. I'm surprised it took you this long. Well, to begin, I think a toast is in order. Any suggestions? Bold. What does us entail? I suppose I'll find out. To us. Now tell me something about yourself. And no tadpoles, dragons, marauding goblins, or anything like that. Something about you. Seems like you truly know the city. I never got to explore it to my liking. Don't stop now. Not just as things are getting interesting. Don't laugh, but I'm not quite sure I have anything to share. Where I come from, that's frowned upon. Which is why I'm looking for a little company. There's still plenty of wine, and the whole night is ahead of us. Nearly light. The others will be awake soon. Another moment won't kill them, I suppose. Well, it might, but let's take that risk. Thank you for last night. Me too. She trails off. You read an invitation in her eyes. That didn't hurt, did it? Good to know. For the future. Let's head back. If we must. I trust you enjoyed your evening. After all your efforts, it was well deserved. It may be some time before you're afforded another such night. There is much to be done, and I promised I would help you however I could. I'm certain a cure for you can be found at Moonrise Towers, but it's complicated. The journey specifically, it's extremely perilous, though it seems you're well accustomed to navigating danger. I suppose it was too much to hope we were going to be cured here and now. To Moonrise, then. Wait. There's more you need to know. To get to the towers, you'll need to pass through a terrible place. A cursed place. This curse shrouds everything in shadow. You will not find life, light, or anything natural there. Any who linger are twisted by the curse. They become shadow beings, tormented, dangerous souls. You're half right. You have to get to Moonrise, but you still have a choice of how to get there. You could go overland, along the Risen Road or through the mountains. Easier at first, but you'll run into the Shadow Curse eventually. You could also go under. There is a tunnel somewhere in the ruined Temple of Saluna. It leads to Moonrise Towers through the Underdark. Long ago, a man called Ketherick Thorm built a secret stronghold deep down there before rallying a whole army of Dark Justicias. 
Shah worshippers. Sounds rather ingenious. Aridan and his lot were looking for a way down there. They were promised riches if they retrieved a relic called the Night Song. But I think there's more. From this stronghold, Ketherick's forces could access both the Temple of Saluna and Moonrise Towers. But he was defeated before he could launch an attack. If you can find this place, I'll wager it will reveal a more direct path to Moonrise Towers. And maybe even bypass the worst of the Shadow Curse. Anything is preferable to risking the Shadow Curse. I would like to join your camp, if you'll allow me. I can offer my skills, my counsel. I've long sought to return to Moonrise Towers. It seems our fates have aligned. I advise you start in the Temple of Saluna. If you find the Dark Justice Year's hidden entrance, it could lead you all the way to Moonrise. One of the adventurers had a clue to help find it, a dwarf called Brian. It might still be found on his corpse, wherever the goblins left it. May Sylvanas guide us. Do not be so impatient to move on as Halsin. As ever, the Githyanki Kresh remains our priority. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. You haven't been using the Parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Yes. Halsin is correct. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsin knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. I am not sure yet. To find the answers, we must first find the source. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute, and believe it to be a god. You witnessed it yourself with Priestess Gut. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be Mind Flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. It's complicated, but I'm an adventurer, just like you. Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. They need me. I have to go. No. I can handle this. For now. The power I used to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. 
Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. All's well, I hope. I was going to say the very same thing. As soon as I worked up my courage a little. I can't recall the last time I shared so much with someone. Maybe I never did before. It meant a lot to me. You mean a lot to me. And that was before the kiss. I hope so too. Though I'm not sure what kind of courtship we'll be afforded, given all that we're facing. But if you want to see where this goes, I do as well. I was. He mentioned Dark Justicias, and we've come across other signs of a Sharon presence during our travels. I'm not sure I can dismiss that as a coincidence. A dragon rider. My kin are near. Damn thing could blot out the sun. It would be too much to hope that's nothing to do with us, wouldn't it? You go a life. What are you doing? Hold up before they see you, Magresham! What? Apart from the dragon? Look. That lot are swarming all over the bridge. I don't know what they want, but it can't be good. I'm going to find another way around. You ought to do the same. I doubt a fight against them would go your way. Nobody. Just another harassing fool trying to stay alive. There's plenty of us around. Rag! That's it. I'm getting out of here. Drop your weapons! I'll feed your innards to the ants before I do that, Istic. This is y your last... Chance! No, look up. That was your last chance, Istic. Now burn! Wasting time, Beretta. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to. No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. A red dragon. I envy its knight. Would that I rode such a steed. A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. The dragons serve Githyanki. I'll see it does you no harm. Follow me. We are close to the cure we seek. Ryder, my time is short. Lead me to... Shh, shh, shh. Such a familiar tone. Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding. For I am nothing if not merciful. Your name child. Lazel. Lazel. Proud. Regal, even. You will call me Gestil Kithrak. Vos, Knight Supreme. The Queen's Silver, the Queen's Sword. I am who you say. A Geich vessel has fallen from the sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. It is polyhedric in shape and inscribed with the sacred runes of our people. You suddenly feel a strange anxiety take hold. Not your own, but that of the artifact you carry. Somehow, it's afraid you attune your mind to it. The artifact does not want to fall into the Gith Raiders' hands any more than it does the absolute followers. Take word to your crash. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate.
You honor me with this duty, Kithrak. I shall alert my caretaker with haste. The Kithrak nods, content with Lazel's answer. You serve your queen well, child. Take your slaves and hunt those who escaped the Geich ship. They must carry the weapon. I fly now to Vlakith, our undying queen. She will see your faith rewarded in this plane and ours. To Danos! To the sky! Damn it all! You did well to intervene, vexed as I am to admit it. The Gestil Kithrak would have flayed our skin and left our carcasses to burn in the sun. All for the sake of the artifact that we carry. The crash is near, this much we know. We follow the path forward and into the valley. No one, not even the ignoble Gestil Kithrak, will keep me from my purification. Wait. These markings. Tirsu's script scratched in the ground. A crèche must be nested in the temple below. We must go there at once. Githyanki writing. Every word a wheel. Every letter a spoke. The most powerful texts are engraved in slate. Some so ancient, only the most erudite Gish can read them. But if we stray too far that our chance is lost, I'll make my way there alone. Who <laughs> there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. May I inquire if, perchance, you retain among your traveling companions a man who adheres to the given name of Gale? Uh, ever a man of leisure. Would it pain you greatly to assist me along the little voyage I intend to undertake to this aforementioned camp? Should it be the nature of our acquaintance that interests you, well, you may safely classify Gale and I as friends. Should it be the nature of your present interlocutor that you desire to drag from the dark and unknown, I shall be glad to aid in your quest for illumination and identify myself as Elminster. Elminster Omar. Now, if this answer satisfies you, let us linger no longer in this... My thanks for your excellent guidance. Ah, and yonder I spy the object of my pursuit. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too, finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. I don't understand. How so on my behalf? I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a Ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it. Oh, for the love of... Fine, fine. I'll turn a deaf ear to the clarion calls with which my scorned stomach beseeches me. Graver matters are at hand. 
Plenty to digest. After all, a good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Right. Um... You see... I... Um... Well, that is to say... Gail, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gale. And I trust you told your fellow traveler here the nature of your ills. I can't say that so far I volunteered <clears throat> the entire truth. Do you mean to say you've never bothered to disclose how dangerous you are? Not in so many words. No. Then you two have much to discuss after I'll have taken my leave. In short, Gale, through his own doing, has become a living explosive that could wipe from this world this very gathering and, and much more besides. For his folly, Mistra forsook him, but now she has decreed he is to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider forgiveness. She would consider what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the absolute, that most insidious of evils. The very purpose of my presence, in a roundabout sort of way. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. That which renders him so dangerous is an orb of Netherese origin that is buried within his chest. And that, Gale, is how we arrive at the heart of my directive. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help, or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. And 
need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My Nahastra Mistra Italian Thras Annas It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky-strewn gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, an ocean born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. An audience with Elminster is never less than memorable. I suppose it's time we dealt with the Hollyphant in the room. You have questions for me? I promise I have answers. Ah. Well, that's a rather long and complicated story. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries, the Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse, and later even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company, body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted, I pleaded, swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A, 
Netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try. The outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. Feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread man. Bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pictures, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws. It's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Terrifying, isn't it? And that is only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however, I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. Fortunately, this need no longer be a concern. Not until I meet the heart of the Absolute, whatever that is. Elminster. Even the Githyanki have heard tell of the Sage of Shadowdale. Some of his works have been translated to Tirsu. That doesn't mean his every word carries wisdom, however. Near as I can tell, Mistra demands Gale's faith, but holds no faith in him. Why else would she demand Gale sacrifice himself, and perhaps so many others? Does she not think he can destroy the Absolute with his own immense talents? Does she not know the mighty company that he keeps? Demanding Vlakith may be, but she acts for the good of the Githyanki people. Mistra is concerned only for herself. Bah. Perhaps he'd find forgiveness in a fiery death. But I can't help but wonder why he'd want it at all. I have a confession. I was too hasty to judge you. I thought you witless, gutless, unimpressively bland. Now, well, you've earned my respect and more still. You've proven your wits. You are efficient and dominant, in and out of battle. You've proven your courage. I swear, you would tear the horns off one dragon to plunge into another. And you're hardly bland. Your scent alone is enough to make my neck sweat and my hair stand on end. If you must know, Vlakith requires everything of her children. I can't count how many bruises I've inflicted. Can't measure how much blood I've drawn in the Undying Queen's name. I know only blood red and death black. My mind is silver and my body steel. I am what I must be. Say what I must be. To survive every beast I face and every wound I bear. 
Enough talk. I will be plain. I want to taste you. Perhaps tonight. Perhaps later. But I want it all the same. Do you? Your loss, I fear. One day soon, you will wonder how my lips might have tasted, how my fingers on your skin might have felt, and you will wish you could return to this lost moment. You don't sleep well, flitting between dreams and nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong, or maybe you just get lucky. Shit. No, no, it's not what it looks like. I swear. I, I wasn't going to hurt you. I, I just needed, well, blood. There, in the dim firelight, you see him for what he really is. A vampire, a slave to sanguine hunger. It's not what you think. I'm not some monster. I feed on animals, boars, deer, kobolds, whatever I can get. I'm just too slow right now, too weak. If I just had a little blood, I could think clearer, fight better, please. A strange sensation courses through you. And your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. What's this? What's happening? A shadow swims across your vision, and a familiar voice tells you to be calm. You are loved. His mind opens up, revealing cracked and quivering memories. At their heart, you see dark eyes commanding you to feed. You open your mouth and bite down, not into a tender neck, but into the twisting body of a rat, the only thing your master lets you eat. I... Yes. Yes, I ate whatever disgusting vermin my master picked, so you can see why I'm slow to trust you. But I do trust you. And you can trust me. Thank you. Do you think you could trust me just a little further? I only need a taste. I swear. No. No, of course. Silly of me to even ask. I'll go and find something on four legs to eat, I suppose. See you in the morning. You watch him stalk away, slumped, sulking, and ready to kill. Morning. I hope last night's little unpleasantness hasn't left a bad taste in your... Well, <laughs> I hope there are no bad feelings. Indeed it could. These are very helpful in a fight. Of course, I can't summon wolves or turn to mist like a true vampire. Being a spawn has its drawbacks. Oh no. I should be cinders in this light. I hadn't seen the sun for 200 years before we crashed here. Someone, or something, wants me alive. They've changed the rules. Standing in the sun, Wading through a river, wandering into homes without an invitation. They're all perfectly mundane activities now. 
As for my other quirks, well, <laughs> we can figure those out in time. That's my theory, but who knows? I'm just glad you're being sensible about these uh, revelations. I was worried people might turn up with torches and pitchforks. Although there's still time. A vampire? Well, that explains the pallor. Given our group's nature, I don't see much harm. We're each monsters in the making, after all. For his sake, he best not develop an appetite for Githyanki. Uh, quite the opposite. I'm here in the spirit of openness and honesty to work together as a team. Fine. He stays till he's no longer of use. Besides, my flesh is not so easily tasted. Unless, of course, I have offered it. There now. We're all friends again. Shall we go? There's a long day ahead of us. Huh. So, that's what people mean when they talk about butterflies in their stomach. Did you want something? I don't know what you mean. It's nothing, really. You're not going to let this go, are you? You might wish you had. I worship Shah, the mistress of the night. It is my holy mission to oppose Saluna, her teachings and her followers. It hurts. Now that you have the truth, please don't make a big fuss about it. True. I didn't think you'd react so pragmatically. Perhaps I should have told you sooner. All right. As I said, Shah is my patron, my mistress. Goddess of darkness and loss. I assume you've heard of her? My Lady Shah is the Night Singer, the patron of darkness and loss. Most fear the dark, like children, because in darkness they see their fears reflected. But Shah teaches us to step beyond fear, beyond loss. In darkness, we do not hide. We act. Pain, hope, the promise of better days. All of these are heavy cloaks that bend our backs and burden our hearts. We shed those cloaks. Before Shah, we stand gloriously naked, beyond the vanities of mortals. There's comfort, yes. But often there has to be pain beforehand. We tear down the lies the world is drunk on. The institutions they trust, the so-called gods they worship, the lives they cling to. We destroy false idols, topple corrupt organizations, fight heretics wherever they're found. There's often suffering, death even. Many people break before they embrace Shah's truths. Curious. Most are afraid of my lady. I think I did well by joining you. Most agreeable company. You already know my biggest secrets. What more can you ask? What, besides my life's calling and the greatest problem I've ever faced? Well, I like night orchids and can't swim. Is that the sort of thing you meant? It's a deal. No. I can't. I mean, I literally can't. There's certain things I can't remember right now. Shah's secrets must be preserved above all else. All who worship her know this. I have had certain memories suppressed. Voluntarily. So that I can serve Shah without compromising her. If I manage to return to Baldur's Gate and fulfill Shah's mission, 
Then my memories will be restored. Of course. It is an act of faith, not to be undertaken lightly. Shao will reward me when I succeed. The wound on my hand. It never quite heals. And sometimes it causes terrible pain to rip through me. It's my burden, though, from Lady Sha. I can feel her influence somehow. I don't think so, but you're sweet to ask. Maybe just be patient the next time you see me wince or cry out. It'll pass quickly enough. It always does. Pain is sacred to followers of Lady Sha. Pain will give way to loss and then to the peace of her eternal darkness. You can tolerate a great deal of suffering so long as it has meaning. It's difficult to say. Sometimes I wonder if it's supposed to be guiding me, punishing me, testing me. But perhaps it's none of those. Perhaps it's completely random. I'd like to hope there's more to it than that. Some meaning that Lady Shah will reveal to me when the time is right. Until then, all I can do is endure. I cannot say. Not with what I can recall. But even then, it would not be for me to question her will. Lady Shah has her reasons. try my best. But secrecy is ingrained in me. Lady Shah considers it greater protection than any shield or armor. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now... I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. So why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. I won't lie. It's tempting. If I keep the tadpole, I risk transforming into a grotesque monster. If I lose the tadpole, Cazador has control of me, body and soul, and I return to the shadows. It's grim either way. So why not sell what's left of my soul to a devil? Better he has it than Cazador. Figuring out what's happening to us, confronting a god called the Absolute, and then finding time to kill my old master before he can control me once more? Yes, that's an option, but I wouldn't bet eternity on it. Hey! Lads, for the love of all that is holy, I've never clapped eyes on your poor sister. Drop the act, hag. You was the last to see me, Rena. Just let her go. Please. You there? Please, I don't know what's come over these boys. I just want to go home. Stop this. We... We won't ask again.
Careful. Don't trust a word out of her mouth. Our sister went to the Hag, and we ain't seen her since. Hand over heart, I don't know their sister. I will gladly help you all look for her, though. Enough. Where is she? Sweetie, be careful! He's with the Hag! Don't bloody stand there gaping. Get him! My stars! I... I didn't mean for this to happen. Those poor boys were looking for their little sister, Marina. The girl who's... staying with me. This is all my fault. But I made a promise. Marina begged me not to breathe the word if they came looking for her. And my word is my bond. That poor thing would be distraught. We can't let her know it'd break her poor heart. I'd best get going, but please stop by my house. I'd like to thank you proper. Ethel's less helpless than she made out. I don't trust her. Chill runs up your spine. You feel like you're being watched. You blink and the wilderness changes. A swamp, stinking and insidious, assaults your senses. Diminutive creature sporting a red hat glares at you. You recognize the red cap, a fey creature known for its bloodlust. That noise. Is the creature pretending to be a sheep? <laughs> ah, stranger. Forgive the aroma. You catch a waft of something foul, metallic and sickly sweet. Powdered iron vine. An old hunter's trick. Most monsters will think twice before making a meal of me. You're a monster hunter. I'm surprised. I thought all gur were vagrant cutthroats. And more. We steal chickens, curse your crops, seduce your daughters, the list goes on. I wish I had half the power settled folk think my people possess. Alas, I am a simple wanderer. A simple wanderer and monster hunter. But I'm no witch doctor or cutthroat. Something terrifying, no doubt. Dragon? Cyclops? Kobold? Nothing so dramatic. I'm hunting for a vampire spawn. His name is Astarian. But I fear he's gone to ground. I hope the hag of these lands can help me flush him out, if I can afford her blood price. Not this time. My orders are to capture him. Oh. Uh, and bring him where, exactly? Baldur's Gate. My people wait for me there. Thank you. Treating with a hag. I need all the luck I can get. May your road be kind. Need something? So it would seem. Hopefully he bumps into some knolls while stumbling around at night, and that's the last we hear from him. I didn't do anything. I was kidnapped, just like you. It seems Cazador wants me back. Kazador Tsar is a vampire lord in Baldur's Gate. The patriarch of his coven and a monster obsessed with power. He turned me nearly 200 years ago. I became his spawn. And he became my tormentor. It 
It was him, I'm sure. Only he know to send the girl after me. It was a group of girl that attacked me that night in Baldur's Gate. I would have died that Kazat will not appear and save me. <sighs> well, he didn't mention the slave claws at the time. And now he sends a girl monster hunter for me. It's a message. He's reminding me of his power. Even in the middle of nowhere, it can reach me. And he wants me back. Maybe he wants to make an example of me, to show what happens to runaways. Or maybe he thinks death is too good for me. <laughs> safe! You think I'm safe? Do you know the power? A vampire lord possesses. He can change shape, turn into mist, call walls to do his bidding, shrug off blows like they're nothing. He could walk into our camp tonight and kill you with his bare hands. And you'd be lucky if death was the worst thing that happened to you. First, we have to... Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, if we kill his lackeys, he'll just send more. We just have to be vigilant, keep our wits about us, and kill any monster hunters on sight. I don't want a crumb left on that plate, girl. Auntie Ethel, please. One more bite, and this pie is gonna come back up to say hello. Don't make me get the wooden spoon. You're eating for two, so get to it. Oh, if it isn't my hero. You took ages. Come in, come in. Feel free to relax yourself and have a cuppa, hmm? Gods, grant me patience. Eat up, Mayrina. I won't say it again. Keep that hole under your nose shut, or things will get messy. You know what that sounds like to me? Leverage. What is it? What's going on? Ha! <laughs> you want to play it like that? Fine. Yes, girl. I killed your brothers. That can't be true. Auntie Ethel. They were being rude, and I detest rudeness. You monster! The deal is off! Enough! Away with you. Blessed silence at last. Some time in the cage should do her good. And you! You'll regret sticking your nose in my business. already leave or you'll end up in tonight's stew we'll go nicely with Mayrina. she's already marinating ah. no no don't look mustn't look mustn't see i see it what's to come you realize there's magic at work. Some type of spell. 
an illusion. Me? Dead? Dead? Flesh rotten, bone shining! You feel crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoils. It can't let people through. Not again. Images flash. A man cowering, a bag open at his feet. Gold coins spilling onto the floor. His cries for mercy are cut short as the hag slices into him, dismembering him painstakingly, limb by limb. She cackles, the man's remaining flesh twisted and contorted, becoming the twisted surface of the door before you. You see the gallery, its walls lined with the hag's victims. Their bodies and minds twisted beyond ruin. Flee, you feel it cry. Frustrated, the door rattled. You see the hag and yourself. You lay bleeding as she leans over you, a smile on her face. Her teeth, a row of deadly needles, shine as they dive into your throat, blood spraying. The door twitches, but stays firm. Its form flickers, and you realize that the door is transparent. You see the hag. She walks through the door, its form shimmering. The lightest touch of hope brushes your mind as the presence within retreats. Away! Down. There, in the cage. Trap. You come to my home, interfere in my business, and now have the gall to face me in the heart of my lair! You petulant bollocks! I'll rip your spine out your asshole! I'll use your blood to spice my stew! I'll keep you alive until I've sucked the marrow from your bones! I'll bring you back and do it all over again. Stop it! Please, let me go! You want the girl so bad. <laughs> Which I <laughs> going to bring him back, bring Connor back to life. Connor would have done anything to save me. I had to do the same. I just wanted everything back, back the way it was. It's my own fault for letting her. Look, I don't like owing people. Here, this socket is worth some coin. Really? That's... My husband gave it to me. 
I should take him home. His coffin is just upstairs. A decent burial is the least I can give him. Thank you. I don't think there's anyone else who would have saved me. I can't believe it didn't work. That all of this was for nothing. What? You can! You feel a surge of power from the wand. The air suddenly tastes acrid. It wants to be used. Bring it back! Bring Connor back! Please! something pull at you. The creature yearns for a master. What have you done to him? He's not a creature. He's my husband. I wanted him back, back the way he was, not this. Connor? Connor! <sighs> I don't even know if he's in there, but he might be. And if he is, I'll find him and bring him back. Thanks. But we'll need more than luck. A bloody miracle, more like it. I'll find a wizard or something. Maybe someone in Baldur's Gate can help us. Connor always said you can find anything in that city. Remember? And thank you, I guess. Come on, love. Let's go. Using Ethel's wand wasn't the best idea. Forget it. The milk's already spilled. Tastes like chicken. No chicken. Tastes like fish. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. And what surprise is this? Brothers, look here. I have eyed yet another prize. Fortune favors our bellies. Stranger, be you friend or food. The mark is her measure. Show us the brand of the absolute. Indeed. How regrettable that your meat must go unsavored. Food? Food. Not food. Friend. Am I not astonishing? A robust diet makes for a shrewd mind, you see. I am a gourmand. And you, a delicacy. Were I so lucky? I've no use for the absolute, or any god. I follow two masters only. Gluttony and greed. The goblins understand my appetites. They sate my hunger for gold. And the rest sate my hunger for meat. Boss goblin give gold. We check brand. Good deal. 
No talk. I am, by all accounts, a student of higher commerce and extortion. Make me an offer. Tempt me. A brilliant notion, and a boon to my aching belly. We have a deal, my tasty kibble. Take my bone horn. One blow, and the ground will quake with my family name. Use it when the need arises, and never a moment before. Ogre kill everyone around, then Ogre eats them. Well spoken, indeed. Ogre kill everyone around. We will keep close. When you are ready, sound the horn. Shadowheart's attention is fixed upon the contents of an old journal. We... we should keep moving. You already know as much as I do. Best ignore it. As long as it doesn't hamper us too much. It says there's a cellar here somewhere. I don't see one. That's curious. I do not know this name. If you are known to my master, step forward and declare yourself an ally. Only a true ally of Illentoth may pass. What think you of the Zalkir known as Zastam? You remember stories of Zastam? A powerful lich in Thay who made deals with dark gods. You are no Zalkir, but are you wise? Tell me, why might one use balsam ointment? Acceptable. Finally, if you could see anything in me, what would it be? You seek to survive. You seek power. Be welcome. A well-guarded laboratory. What were they hiding down here? There you go. There's a trap. The book is locked tight with no visible keyhole, only an oval recess in the cover's mouth. You try to examine the book, but the longer you stare, the more those piercing amethyst eyes draw you in. Curious? Why don't you take a closer look? I'll observe from back here. Please don't open the creepy book. That looks terribly heavy. Why don't you let me carry it for you? Apart from an overgrowth of moss, the well looks unremarkable. Dry stones line the wall. At the bottom, something gleams in the dappled light. Better be careful. Those webs carry vibrations.
irresistible. You feel changed, bettered for having opened it. Suddenly, you are capable of anything. Filling mountains, darkening suns, conversing with the dead. Glyphs shift gently before your eyes. Words slip into your mind, onto your lips, forming words you don't understand. And something is trying to reply. The symbols dart beneath your eyes, warping and twisting. Your head throbs, but you almost understand. The world around you is gone. You can only see those glyphs, only hear those voices. You feel claws moving in the shadows. They pull at you, dragging you closer. The glyphs scream, branding your mind with strange runes. You see time rewritten, fate undone. Your future thrumming with power. You struggle to cling to scraps of what you know. Powerful necromancy, you're sure. But it darts away, leaving only Hell's screams. The book snaps closed. You've seen too much. What profane knowledge is now seared inside of you, you should never have known. I hope I can follow my scent to camp. The spider seems poised to attack, but she hesitates, tapping her claws as if trying to communicate. The other spider echoes her. The spider relaxes slightly, but you feel her hunger and fear beneath the surface. She scuttles toward the door. even after death. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. Here lies the guardian of tombs. Through knowledge comes atonement. Fate spins along as it should. Dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps a resurrection instead? That is where I was housed, yes. And thou needst not know why. You recognize the feathered creature. It's the owlbear cup you rescued. The cub tilts his head. He does not trust you. Yet.
The cub's eyes lock onto the food in your hand. He takes a hesitant step toward you, his beak chittering hungrily. Careful. Once that thing's eaten through the camp, it might start looking at you hungrily. Alarmed by your companion's approach, the cub flees into the forest. I'm not chasing after it, if that's what you're thinking. Looking at something? The only benefit to a mirror when you have my condition. It doesn't quite make up for the lack of a reflection, mind you. Preening in the looking glass. Petty vanity. Of course I miss it. I've never even seen this face. Not since it grew fangs and my eyes turned red. I... I don't know. I can't remember. My face is just some dark shape in my past. Another thing I've lost. What? And what do you see, exactly? Oh, go on. Very good. Now just tell me I'm beautiful and we can call it a day. How dare you? I thought we had something special. Still, you're nice too. I better get some beauty sleep. It seems I need it if I'm to catch up with the competition. Even in such fraught times as these, there's peace to be found in the stillness as evening draws in. I used to while away many hours just like these with my companion. I'm in far comfier surrounds. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. Not everyone is comfortable being alone with their thoughts. Though I never felt alone with a book in my hand. Or with her for company. I speak of Tara, my Tressim, assistant, my constant companion through all the ills and tribulations my hubris has thrust upon me. She'd be proud to see me keeping such fine company. The savior of those poor tieflings, no less. And I've given her precious little to be proud of recently. After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable, wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself, but Tara never did. It was her encouragement, her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. She has a good heart. She would recognize the same in your actions here. I'm sure she'd approve of me lending myself to your efforts. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of... To be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress coattails. So that's what I'm doing. I hope. Huh. <laughs> Very funny. But as we all know, nymphs are sticklers when it comes to their bathing routines. You, my friend, haven't been near a fresh spring in a ten day or more. Not that I don't appreciate your... musk. Actually rather like it. Well, this seems as good a time as any for me to stop babbling on. Hmm. 
Were I to recite that list, I fear we'd be here at dusk tomorrow. Many things, I assure you. But a conversation better saved for another time. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... excitement may tip it over the edge, so to speak. Go, enjoy your evening. Nothing better for the heart than a good night's rest. And mine is gladdened to know I'll have the pleasure of your company again come morning. If we don't deal with them gnolls, none of us are getting out of here alive. Across the chasm? You might have got in that way, but you're stuck with us now. Aye, that we can do. The fire won't hold them forever, though. Be quick about it. When the fighting starts, we'll be right alongside you. Thank the gods that's over. Wish you'd been with us when the beasts attacked on the road. Might have been more survivors. I don't suppose you saw any of my crew alive out there. This whole journey's been one grim sight after another. Gnolls, goblins, drow. Risen Road's more dangerous than ever. You're the first friendly face we've seen since Eltergard. We're bound for Baldur's Gate. Got some cargo to deliver. But we've a stop to make along the way. Joaquin's Rest. It's just up the road. I'd be enjoying a mug of ale right now if those beasts hadn't jumped us. Listen, you look like you know how to handle yourself. You should meet my associates. We've got our own drinking spot by the tavern. Invitation only. Tell the fellow on the door, Little Serpent, Long Shadow. He'll take good care of you. Shame we lost so many agents. But the chest is all that matters. Zaris would have our hides if we lost it. Aye, the whole reason we're in this mess. Trinkets for some rich tosser in Baldur's Gate. He gets his shiny baubles. We get a handful of Tarenths. Tarenths are the currency of the Zentarim, a network of merchants and mercenaries with few scruples. You know who we are. Very clever. And you probably also know it's not smart to interfere with Zent business. This is the point when a clever lad like you accepts my gratitude and walks away. I like the way you think. Didn't expect to turn this horror show to my advantage, but why not? The chest's all yours. Damn thing's sealed tighter than a duke's purse strings, so there's no point in trying to open it. I know a fence in Baldur's Gate who'll take it off your hands. Nobody will be the wiser. Don't try to cut me out of the deal, though. The Black Network has eyes and blades everywhere. Crafty swine like you could make a name for yourself in the Zahentarim. Make sure to drop by our hideout.
he of the unsleeping eyes. Grant me the might to carry this burden. Grant me the faith to face darkness without fear. A massacre. Drow and goblins slaughtered the lot. Please, just leave me be. The tracks converge here. Two, maybe three drow. At least one of ours. From here they went... Damn! It's all so confused. The old fortress? Gods, that whole area is cursed. I'll pass it up the chain of command. Whatever good it'll do for the Grand Duke. We'll stay put for now. Might get something out of these tracks. You spot a man crouching between the shelves, just as he spots you. Bugger! Oh, hell's orbs! I thought you were flaming fist. Well, down you go, then. They'll be on us soon, so if you're looking to trade, you'd best be quick. Entrance is hidden behind the wardrobe. Here's the key. Look at that. You're the one who recruited me, Rugen. You're the one who taught me rule number one. Remember? <laughs> you're dead the moment you steal from the Zentarim. No matter who you are. You recall an old Zentarim proverb coined by their founder. You've read Manchun. Seems you know our ways better than poor Rugen here. There's not much money in retribution, true. Tell you what, you've already taken Rugen's cargo. So finish the job and I'll let you live. Deliver it to Boulder's Gate. Oh, and kill him. Wait, wait! It was Ollie. I swear it was Ollie! Show some respect, Rugen. The boy was loyal to you till the end. No, 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 no! Please! And just like that, everyone profits. All right then, recruit. You can stock up here and be on your way. Bring the cargo to Baldur's Gate. Someone there will make contact. are you? They're coming. They're coming. No, listen. A mic in it. It's warning us. They're coming. You're coming. You are swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sing many voices. The harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am Sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The Sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. You detect a distinct quiver in every note. These creatures have experienced recent tragedy. Fungal roots weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody, cautious but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Don't. 
Her condition is familiar. Poison, derived from a wild weed common to the Underdark. She'll need an antidote soon, most likely held by the Poisoner. Needed it. Why are you helping me? Down here? Tends to be. <sighs> but I'm nearly good to get on my feet. I thank you for your help. But I gotta get moving. Oh <sighs> it hurts. Carl's garters. Oh I don't have time for this. My kin need me. Seems you're the helping kind. All right. I need you to rescue my kin. Not charity, mind. We can pay. We're Iron Hand Clan. Best artificers in Baldur's Gate. We were on an expedition down here when the Dwergar snatched us up. I got away, but not the others. The Greys have them digging out some old ruin across the lake. Thank you. I only wish I could go with you, but here. I nabbed these boots from the Greys when I ran. I'll feel better knowing you're using them to kick some Dwegger ass. I'll mark where I made my escape and uh, wait here, I suppose. Not much choice, eh? Sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwega, dark dwarves chopping myconid remains. They broke our peace. They killed our young. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwergar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwegar invaders? We can manage that. Better than picking this fight, surely. Deep purples swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear, chased by Dwegar. The Dwegar seek a gnome. It is a guest. The Sovereign says nothing, but you hear appreciation in its song. An illusion comes over you, a Dwergar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. Accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glowing light. Riches of magic and mind. Cleanse the rot, and they are yours. You do the circle a service. We will await word. Fleshwalker. Come, talker. Far you've come. Reach into memory. Tell me of home. It cringes in response to your sunny vision. It reveals its own home in reply. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. 
Omega destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no circle. I do not belong here. I am not welcomed here. Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Bald. Blue tunic. Dumb as a stick. Right. Never mind. Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Stop! Stop! People bang! You recognize the name, Bibberbang, a mushroom that releases dangerous spores. Highly flammable. I know that! Scroll! Escape! My bag, please! I've dropped it! Somewhere! Thank you! Thank you! As, uh, what were you saying? Damn it! I must need to go for you. Your trouble. Ta. Look at that! Got my useless old man back. I suppose that's your doing. His hands are empty as a whole. We'll have to send him back out soon enough. Please, Balin's got a job to do. We can leave when he's done it. Love? <laughs> Never heard of it. Balin's meek now, but he used to be a rotten old bastard. Treated me like an old shoe for 70 years. Losing his mind was the only good he ever did by me. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg. Proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is important, Blurg. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. 
It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No cerimorphosis. That's impossible, but intriguing. Are you looking to have it extracted? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. As the Mellowan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. No, it appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. It is not ideal. The process would surely kill you. But not to worry. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. A nautiloid? Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Illithid Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Of course. I am sorry I cannot assist you in its... removal. But... I have... an idea. Oh... perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. A tincture, distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and timusk spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. My formula will hamper the more harmful effects once the mushrooms are brewed into a potion. Your sanity, however much you possess, should remain intact. The Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Hmm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. The Southwest, when I last saw her, although her tower does have a tendency to move. May your travels be safe and swift.
disk is formed from slate and engraved with Githyanki writing. You examine them closely, but can't make much sense of them. Without a cipher or primer to aid you, the disk's message could be near impossible to discern. In your mind's eye, the symbols trade places with each other until a clear pattern forms. And from that pattern, a story emerges. The Prince of the Comet, Part 1. So it was that we were free from geek shackles and turned our blades on each other. The heavens were shattered and one great empire was divided in two. Gith traveled to the Hells to broker help for her people. Her cause. Vlakith would have you believe Mother Gith proclaimed her our queen. Lies. Gith made no such proclamation. Vlakith seized the empire against the mother's wishes. But Gith had nurtured a son, Orpheus, prince of the comet, the true heir. He knew Vlakith's treachery. Orpheus rallied Gith's honor guard and declared the throne for himself. The War of the Comet had begun. It's an intriguing tale, and a forbidden one, given how expertly it was encoded. Lazel will surely want to know of this. New sounds to the damper like a pressure break. Is it the foul? The foul contemptuous heel. You know these words. They are from the opening stanza of a play you found in this very tower. Much of love for me, not love for blood and steel. Command is if you do, my lord, my liege. Don't get me wrong. I love poetry as much as an ex-wizard, but using it to command an automaton oh, seems a bit self-indulgent to me. Of course, my love. Don't be afraid, sweet girl. What can I do? Sorry. Would you like a hug? Come here. For just a moment. The lad. His arms are too tight and too low for a comfortable hug. As if he's meant to be embracing someone slightly shorter. Remember, you are loved little so much. You can really. And everyone will be so proud of you. Proud of you. Oh, I'm I greet you, child of the sun. How has your search for the mushrooms fared? These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Omelium turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draught. I can make no promises as to its taste. Omelium watches you with cautious intensity. It expects doubt. It expects fear. Only in that you may be a danger to yourself, what the potion may make you see or feel, I cannot determine. But unless you are already a step from death, it will not kill you. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid, but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. Dark holes bite at the edges of your vision, but the void cannot draw you in. 
The temple spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull. The cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power. More power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluum, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. Indeed, although I may have another solution, albeit a temporary one. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? Fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? What a brilliant experience. To feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Here, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. That thing better work. If it doesn't, I doubt you'll be in any position to complain. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. like described before. A memory shard used to store brief mental impressions from the user's mind. The crystal's glow swells, drawing you into its depths. You are transported somewhere deep, loud, and hot as the hells themselves. Within the Underdark's bowels, beyond an ancient stronghold, hovers a giant hammer waiting to fall. An echoing clang, and you're back to yourself, left only with a firm sense of a place, a grand forge. A slender drow blade impales the stone before you, 
keeping a silent vigil. This blade was a warrior's sacrifice to Elistray. Blood can only be honored with blood. The drow script inscribed on the blade flickers and glows. It rises from the stone, hanging in the air in silent offering. A camp. Looks abandoned. What's this? Got ourselves an infiltrator. You move pretty quietly. Not quietly enough for my liking, though. Noise gets you eaten down here. Reckon I'll hush you before something hungry comes along. His gnarled fist grips an axe. The sooner I get rid of this one, the sooner I can get back to doing the Absolute's work. Uh, so... Maybe you're less useless than you look. Absolute's work needs doing right here. Hunting. Slave ran away. Took Sergeant Thrin's boots. Gonna kill the slave and fetch back the leather. Or the bosses in Moonrise will have Thrin's hide. Oh, well, look at that. Swift work. You could teach our slaves a thing or two. You want to take those boots to Sergeant Thrin in the camp across the Ebon Lake? I'll stay back here. See if I can find some more gnomes. A few more, and I reckon I could become a true soul. <clears throat> Nothing for you here. Cross the Ebon Lake to the sergeant. Or drown in it for all I can. Greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. Do you hear a new harmony? Serenity. I name you Peace Bringer. Fragrant spores waft through the air. Your heart swells with bliss with your every breath. Freely you have given to us. Freely you may take. The Guardian Gate is open. Go and claim your reward. But before this, I have another boon to ask of you. You have cut out the Dwergar blight, but not its source. In your mind's eye, Spore shows you a drow striding among Myconid dead. Near, this one is called. He hunted us. Hunt him in turn. Bring me his head. And I will know my circle is safe. More busy work. That's royalty for you. Everyone's their servant. The drow lurks in the ruins beyond the lake. Bring him death and return. Raft.
Where's Gek? Who are you? Well, I'll be. You got them? The sergeant's been whining non-stop. What about Gek? Where's he at? <laughs> More like avoiding the sergeant, I reckon. Come on. Let's get you to shore. You're the one telling the sergeant what happened. The rest of you, keep patrolling. I'll be heading back with this one. You continue forward in silence until the lights of a camp twinkle through the murk. showed up we got trouble spit it out sergeant finally choked on true soul near's prick drug no the trap soul caused a rock fall trapped tighter than a ring on a fat finger you're shitting me you pay up that's the trouble he's got the gold on him sergeant's arm is falling off with all the gnome slaves she's been beating Who's the Hoon, Greyman? Another slave for the dig. Aye. He speaks true. Found the Hoon sailing Gek's skiff. That's so. I... You feel the slightest of stirrings in your head. The Dwergar is not infected, yet your minds resonate. Oh. I'll be... You're one of them cult freaks. Felt the tingle. Your twat soul chum owes us a load of coin. You want through? Make a donation. Unclog your hole. Just shitting around. But I'm warning you. That twat soul ain't settled up soon. There'll be hell to pay for the lot of you cult buggers. Unless you're here to kick some stiffs lakeside, I suggest you bugger off. <laughs> nah, Rockfall smashed them. Can't have them stinking up the place. <clears throat> the half that weren't crushed are digging the true soul out of the wreckage. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. These trash don't have nothing on them but rocks. Rocks. You spot a shiny trinket on one of the corpses. Quit sniffing around. You're starting to get on my nerves. Nerves? I speak true, brothers. You know it in your hearts. You know it in your very souls. We need no Lolf. No Spider Queen. Father Murmuth is the head of Clan Lur. He hatched us, raised us, feeds us. What care we for his business here? He keeps us small, keeps us contained. We should be with the Spider Queen, revered, adored. You've read that harming spiders is illegal among Loth's faithful, and often punishable by death. 
Father Mermuth is our past. Lolf is our future. These spiders are loyal to the local Dwergar. In the event of a fight, they will join the fray against you with slavering enthusiasm. My bite could be stronger. My venom more devastating. Xanta, is it so? This and so much more. In Lolt's hairy embrace, all is possible. Her embrace. We're ready. We follow. <laughs> yes. Now, brothers, our new dawn awaits. How peculiar. Smooth face, cobbled edges. They're a sign. They must be. A sun dweller in these parts. Look here, my topside friend. I need fresh eyes, and I doubt I'll find fresher. The rock, the rubble, all of it, if I may be so bold. Take a look. Tell me what you see, and be thorough. The statue's meandering curves and golden edges stand out against the weathered masonry behind it. Two styles, two eras. The statue was carved from newer stone and erected by latecomers to this ancient fortress. Anything standing out? Boulders and stone bricks of various sizes clutter the corridor, many split cleanly in two. Yet some walls remain fully intact. No quake brought these rocks down. They were smashed through in an instant. Something big charged through here. Something very big. What do you think? Several glassy stones stand out in the debris. Their borders are coated with tiny yellow crystals. The hottest of flames smoothed the stone and left sulfuric crystals behind. The fires of the hells have touched Grimforge. Incredible! An entire history risen from dirt and debris. Picture it. An ancient city, hewn from the stone by disciples of Shah, later abandoned. Untold, centuries later, a new tribe revives it. Fresh walls, fresh sculptures. Until a great hell beast charges through, toppling the walls and crushing the people. Oh, that explains the infernal plate I found. Perhaps you might have use of it. But my work has only begun. There is more still to find. I must get to it. As you look at the skeletons, you realize they are all clad in the same dark armor. Dark Justicio uniforms. These were Shah worshippers. The same as me. Still, if whatever managed to murder a group of Sharans is still around, we had better watch our step. You, grab a cane and whip these droogling beasts into shape. That rubble needs clearing, and my patience is hanging on by an arse whisker. And it sounds like your arse wants for a lashing, the way you talk out of it. Something spooks the dumb shits, so stop your join and get to working. You got no need to know, and I got no need to tell. So get to caning, or to leave him. A slight glint catches your eye. Your eye finds the source of the gleam. A small moat of black metal. Adamantine. Stuff's no joke. Stronger than steel. Rarer than mithril. It ain't mine. It's made. There's an adamantine forge back there, sure as shit in. Don't get any smart ideas. That forge is clan property. But get the beasts moving and I'll toss some coin your way. No more. No more pain. No more work. 
All must die! All right. We will work. We will do as we're told. We will clear the way. Not enough caning for my tastes, but you got the job done. I almost feel bad about this. Dwegar can't hurt anymore. We'll wait until it's safe to leave. Hey, stick shit! It's stick pit, you piss pot. Another uh, stick shit? <laughs> piss pot. You flirt. Now jump to it. Or it's up to the lift and straight to the shadows. I think we've found two Dwegar who are gonna get spit in their drinks. True soul, yeah. Tell the sergeant we won't move a pebble. Hold out your hands, Oon. You heard the man. Let's see him. Five working fingers. Nice and meaty. Prime for digging. You want near, you claw him out. My drinking hand's busy. And I don't like pig shit, but damned if your mouth ain't spewing it. You want respect? Let your absolute pay for it. Till then, bugger off. Hey, stick shit, where's my drink? Coming right up, piss pot. Stick shit, dogs like smug, and he wrecked that shroom village. And then shagged it. <laughs> Here's to smug, nasty prick. When it's not, you'll be the first to know. Shit. You got one of Nair's moon lanterns, Jarg. One of them pixie lamps. If you're headed to Moonrise, you won't last without it. Top lands are clogged with the death dark. Choke you in no time. You daft? It's there in the name. Shadows up there, black as the lower dark. A few sniffs could fell an ogre. If the cure's in Moonrise, we should go. Near and his lantern be damned. After all, shadows will be the least of our worries if we start to turn. Let's just hope you're right. Otherwise, we're just aiding the enemy. What now? Never thought I'd see these back. Nasty sneak gave even Gek the slip. <sighs> Crafty little shits, these ones. You need a stiff cane to keep them in line. Here then, his bounty's yours. Now move! I've got no time for- The parasite stirs, but it's a mere tickle. You hear no thoughts or memories, just an echo of scars that never healed. A true soul, eh? Useless wreck of a lookout could have told me. Glad you're here to take responsibility. Tunnels collapsed, trapped true soul near. He's stuck in there with poisoned geezers. We don't get him out soon. It's both our heads. The famous Nier. Subject of the Myconid's ire, no? As you near the rubble, a fragmented voice clutches at your mind. A true soul. True soul. Finally, you must clear rubble, filling poison. Expedition. Passage trapped. The gnomes are useless. Don't trust Berks. Get me out! 
view through Nir's eyes is a blur. You only make out a bit of rubble and few moving figures. The blur resolves into an image, two gnomes feverishly removing debris, while two others lie dead at Nir's feet, their flesh scorched by powerful magic. You sense Nir's frustration, tinged with rage, as the connection fades. Ah, oh, it's you. The mascot of my ill fortunes. Much as I'd love to chat, I'm not allowed social breaks. I came down here looking for Walbrin. I suspected he and his little friends might have come to this region. And I was right. But I was too late. Walbrin had already been taken to Moonrise Towers. The rest put to work. You won't find a worse gaggle of rare do wells than these Iron Hand gnomes. Except for Walbrin, desperate though his taste in companions might be. As I was contemplating his folly, I was spotted by a very ugly Dwergar. Now, I dig. It isn't good. I'm speaking soft whispers, the words all but lost in the hot air. I'll never get through. We need that smoke powder. Finamine's gone, and if she's smart, she won't be coming back. Tell the sergeant where she went. Beltron's still trapped with that maniac near. Forget the smoke powder. They kill Phil on the spot. I won't let you do it. Praise Iron Hand. Lerida, our prayers are answered. Sir, our friends are trapped in the cave in, and I know a way to get them out. Bug, please. Truce or near will... you know what he'll do. Yankbuck, don't! I've... I've got no choice, Lerida. We have to chance it. A few days back, there was a... a scene. Our friend Philomene, she's a sapper, set off a blast and ran off. We set a spot for hiding if someone found trouble. I'll mark your map. If Philomene made it, You'll find her there. She'll have the stuff to blow that tunnel wide open and get Beldron and the rest out. Please, please don't hurt my Phil. I beg you. Hurry. Our people won't last in that cave in forever. This is a Harper room. There must be a stockpile nearby. Left out in plain sight like that? No, the Harpers are too smart for that. <coughs> in hand. One more step and a blow is to chunks. An ashen scent fills the air. The barrel is filled with smoke powder, but the scent is acrid, as if contaminated somehow. Or much, much more concentrated. Easy now. Let's not do anything hilarious. Shut your mouth, Hoon, or I'll shut you down. Drug! Dropping my name like your culty stars knows me. Like we're friends. I know what you are. One of Nia's cult goons. Sailed right in. Better to die in this shit heap than rot in Moonrise. You want me? Come get me. Lorida. Ruddy mind games. I, I know all about your tricks, true soul. Shit. I can't do it. Go on. Drag me to Moonrise. I'll make you cult nutters suffer.
you want to waste rune powder on? Look, you have no idea what you're dealing with. Any true Iron Hand would trade their life for a grain of this stuff. It's the whole damn reason we're here, and I'm not leaving without it. But let me go. Maybe I'll spare you a vial. Rune powder is gnomish folklore. An explosive of awesome power handed down to the gnomes by their war god, Gerdel Iron Hand. A formula so dangerous it was stricken from history. If it ever existed to begin with. Huh. We've heard the same ones, I bet. A fistful of fire that can turn cities to dust. Well, it's real. And I need to bring it back to Baldur's Gate. I'd rather my clan were with me, but the mission comes first. A vial's what I can spare you. Look. We're freedom fighters. We need this powder to prove a point. To people who really need a point proven to them. Let me go. And you'll be on the right side of history. That's all I can say. A barrel of this could light up the Underdark. A vial is plenty. Just let me go my way. Listen, you see Larida at the dig? Tell her I'm dead, impaled, half eaten. I don't care. Make up a story. Ah, oh, nothing says true love like faking your own death to avoid someone. Beloved? I might have been hers. She sure as hell wasn't mine. I'm getting the room powder back to Baldur's Gate. Alone. Choking! Dig out of here! You sense Nier's frustration, tinged with rage as the connection fades. My sister's in there! Myrna! Myrna, can you hear me? What are you waiting for? is for it. Do the right thing. Kill near. You know what to do. Finally. Worthless slaves. Your incompetence has been my ruin. Near does not fail. You care for the weak, true soul. Most curious. The Absolute demands their slaughter. Yet, here you stand, in bold defiance. A test, yes, you must be. The Absolute bade you to try Nir's faith. Thryn, carve out his heart and serve it to the Rothe. If he indeed is a true soul, let the Absolute save him. Ross. <laughs> 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 
object catches your eye. A lantern, it seems. Though no light flickers within. Is this the moon lantern? A thick layer of dust coats the bottom of the lantern. Broken. So much for protection from the shadow curse. This is pixie dust, used to illuminate a lamp, or left behind after a pixie's death. Uh, they have killed her. She's... she's really gone. <sighs> Thought I'd have to breathe my last in near stink. I'm grateful, don't mistake me, but why help us? You're one of them, aren't you? That didn't much look like begging, but no complaints from me. Here, the Iron Hand gnomes honor their debts. With Walburn gone, that falls to me. Make it quick. We need to find Walburn. Now! You're a little late, Barkus, my lad. He's already been sent to Moonrise Towers. We were just slave hands to the cult, but not Walburn. He knows things. Things they want to know, too. What has he gotten himself mixed up in now? Well, then it seems you've saved us twice over. Gods above, she bloody did it. <laughs> of course she did. <sighs> Walbrun has a way of attracting true believers. His quest for room powder was the latest dream he stuffed in our heads. <laughs> and he was bloody right. He found it. A small cache sitting down here with a manuscript. He just made sense of the formula when the cult jumped us, so he burned the damn thing. If there's a single copy left, it's sitting in his head. Those absolutists pull it out and make rune powder, they could flatten the whole of the Sword Coast. You really would, wouldn't you? But not us. My people can barely stand, and we have business back in the city. Business that sent us after the powder to begin with. The formula might be gone, but we still have the barrels. And just like that, you'd leave Walbrin behind? I knew you lot were foolish, but I didn't know you were cruel. If you knew half as much as you think, my lad, Walbrin might have kept you around. He'd admire your resolve and your optimism. My people will find somewhere to regroup across the lake, then on to the city. If you find yourself in Baldur's Gate, seek us out. We'll raise a glass to Walbrun together. I don't have time for this. The Iron Hand gnomes might already have their hands on rune powder. Certainly not. In case you haven't been paying attention, my friend has been taken captive. He needs me. Ha. I was unlucky twice. The odds of it happening again are very slim. Then again, a small rest might be prudent. Uh, give me time to think. Hmm. Hmm. Fine. Show me where to go, and I'll try my luck. I'll have a better chance of rescuing Walbrin if I'm at my best. And, um, thank you. At least... At least some of us are safe. Praise Iron Hand. If only there were more blessings to count. Move on! I gave her everything! And she has the gall to send you to break me! Just get away from me! The head breaks off cleanly from the drow's body.
peace bringer. Be at home. The drow sought to shatter our circle. Now his flesh may feed its growth. In dealing death, you have brought this circle life. And thus we name you Life Chanter. As our circle grows, so shall your song. Wherever you go, only listen, and you may hear it. This must be the forge. What a feat of engineering it is. It is heavy, but holds a subtle warmth, like it was left under the sun. Suddenly, the metal surges with heat. You feel great power and an overwhelming urge to laugh. <laughs> Can thou endure? The laugh urge fades. A quiet power spreads from hand to head and down to your feet. Thou hast done well. For what is a laugh, if not one step toward madness? <laughs> Thou art the one! Return me, take me home, and thou shalt grow with blessings. To my granddaughter, Shira Clarwen. Serves Ilmata, she does. She waits in Worms Crossing. Take me there, and thou shalt bathe in her golden gifts. Oh, thou shalt be blessed indeed. <laughs> I shall walk with thee. I shall grant you my power. <laughs> you feel a chuckle coming on, but it soon fades. I thank you for the invitation to your camp. It's, um, well appointed, not too crowded, perfect for thinking, and I've been doing just that. It's about Wolbrin. We know he's been taken to Moonrise Towers, and we know I'm going to save him. The problem is this, a preponderance of evidence that I am a terrible adventurer. I'm not sure I should trust Wolbrin's fate to well, me. Hmm. You've done so much already. I'm hesitant to prevail upon you again. But I can't risk recapture. I barely escaped last time. You'd do it then. You'd look for him. That's... 
Very decent of you. Thank you. There's something else you should know. Something I can no longer ignore. I know you've learned about the gnome's pursuit of rune powder, but do you know what it truly is? Until very recently, I thought rune powder was a myth. A substance so powerful it could fell a city. A nation. The Iron Hand gnomes have proven the impossible. Rune powder is real, and they have it in their possession. Destruction. The only thing it's good for. But destruction of what? Well, I'm hoping Wilbrin will be able to tell us. I shouldn't have let him drift away. Shouldn't have let that lot get their claws into him. Now more than ever, I need to find him. We need to find him. He's the only one I might be able to speak to sensibly. I'd kiss you, but neither of us deserve that. Thank you. You must have questions. The disc appears in your mind's eye. Lazelle sees it too, and considers the vision. Tiersu markings. Ancient. I recognize them, but I can't make sense... No. Wait. The texts are enciphered, but I've solved the pattern. It's a story. About... About Orpheus. Your head buzzes in concert with Lazelle's. But it hardly matters. Even without the connection, you'd recognize her discomfort. Drivel, all of it. Gith declared Vlakith queen of the Empire, and her own son defied her. Orpheus would have ceded control to the Geich. She did nothing of the sort. Thank your good fortunes, I'm a tolerant woman. Or I'd have sliced off a few toes for suggesting it. You carry a Githyanki relic. I will have an explanation. Or your head. Walk away. Now. I won't warn you again. That artifact is an heirloom of my people. Likely she spilled Githyanki blood in order to steal it. This cannot stand. Heirloom? Plunder from some conquered realm, more like. This artifact is the only thing keeping us from becoming slaves to our parasites. Be glad I have it. Remove yourself if you are so easily offended. This is not your concern. Nonsense. You're just finally showing us what you really are. A reaver to the bone. Spare your indignity. Every word that spills from your mouth is worth less than the last. Incorrect. Judicious bloodletting settles feuds and roots out the weak, the deceitful. Do you hear this, tribe? Our lives are at stake and she wants us to turn on each other. No others. Just you and me. Lazelle thinks I have something important to her people. She's deluded, clear. Lies. She carries an heirloom of my people. I must know why. The bad blood must be purged. A jewel come first light. You mean I'd get to prove you wrong and thrash you? I love it. Get some rest, Lazel. You'll need it. You had every chance to look the other way. But here we are. You chose this. Spare me the justifications, coward!
If anyone asks, I'll say you were transforming. Don't expect to be mourned. She's a liability. It's the artifact we need, not her. Let me up, and I'll show you. Can I do that, Lazel? Can I turn my back on you? Never. Thieves aren't afforded such luxury. Loosen the grip on your pride for one blasted moment, won't you? We needn't be enemies. There's plenty of those to go around already. What would you have? That we be friends? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But imagine what we might achieve if we channeled some of that hostility back at our real foes, instead of each other. They wouldn't stand a chance. Stand by me if you need to keep warm in this awful place. Darkness or not, we need to reach Moonrise Towers. The Shadow Curse. It doesn't seem to affect me like it does others. Not as badly, at least. Do you know what this means? I must be blessed. Lady Shah is protecting me where others are left to face her wrath. She loves me. She must do. Lady Shah wouldn't bless me like this for no reason. There must be something she wants of me. Those signs we found about Dark Justicias, perhaps they were no coincidence. In either case, I need to watch for any place dedicated to Lady Shah. A temple, perhaps. Stay together. Keep to the light. Weapons, put your hands up and walk into the light slowly. Jonas, move in. Well done. 
Now we've got to move. I know a safe place. Give me your map. Keep your torch high. If you step into the shadows, you'll be felled in a heartbeat. That's right. Protected by magic. Only spot in the region that's not been swallowed up by this damn curse. Light will save you here on the outskirts, but a few paces deeper you're screwed. If you want to catch your breath, the inn's the only place to do it. Hope to see you there. Harpers, move out! It's quite thrilling to fight off such grim creatures as this region throws at us. Especially being at your side. I, um, once read a book that explained in some detail the effect a brush with danger has on one's desire for, uh, other forms of stimulation. Have you ever read anything on that subject? Only that I find you quite irresistible. Even illuminated by such rotten light as this place produces. Perhaps it's just the thrill of our near undead experience talking. Standing at your side through such darkness and disrepair. It only makes me want you more. Unfortunately, this is neither the time nor the place to indulge such feelings. So, we must be patient and push all such thoughts aside. For now. This place is protected. Must be the refuge the Harpers spoke of. No shadows here. You there! Step forward and keep your hands off your weapons. Easy! He's with me. Come. Jahira! Hello. Absolutely. This is why we're here, you see. It is a curious creature that hides all manner of secrets. But if there's one thing that we know... knows its own kind. You should never have come here, true soul. Stop! What are you doing? He's the one who saved us! He's the one who protected the Emerald Grove. Yep. Didn't leave a goblin standing. Not so bad to hang around with either. Saved one of my friends from a druid with a snake. Knows when to be discreet, too. I pretty much trust him with my life. A true soul with a mind of his own? How is that possible? in the hells is that thing? Congratulations! You've earned yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hear me, Harpers! All clear! At ease! I'll not pretend to understand what that artifact is. 
But I'm old and wise enough to recognize a sliver of hope when it crawls out of the dark. Tell me, why have you come here? Then our interests align. We must all cure ourselves of the entire cult of the Absolute. There's food in the inn over there. Beds too, if you require rest. Aloe oil in the cupboard, in case the vines gave you a rash. Settle in. Then come join me for a drink. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. Oh my god, soldier. That's Jahira. THE Jahira. Don't you know the whole story? Years ago, over a century, Jahira was part of a group that saved Baldur's Gate from Saravok, a baal sport trying to plunge the city into war. My mum used to tell us stories about them. The legends who protected the city from evil. She said Jahira was a powerful druid. Adamant. Tough. I've told myself those stories a thousand times since. I never thought I'd meet Jahira. She's a hero, and I was always... some outer city kid. Can't believe she wants to talk to us about working together. What a day! Aha! Uh -huh. Thought I sensed an infernal. What are you doing here? Same thing as you, I reckon. Trying to stay out of the shadows. Hold on! I know you! The weaponsmith, right? Drafted into the Blood War when your city was swallowed by Avernus. Not too different from my own story. Well done making it out alive. Same to you. Though unless my senses deceive me, you brought a bit of the Hells back with you. Infernal Engine? Who needs a heart when you've got one of these to keep you warm? Thank you, Zariel. Forget warm. You're burning up. Might be burning out a piston ring. Or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Please do. I've been dying to find an infernal mechanic. Now that's hot. Too hot. I think I could sort you out. But I'll need some infernal iron and a lot of luck. Please, let this work. Mmm. The weight of it. And that blaze of chaos. Can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. to install it, I'm afraid. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect from that kind of heat. That feels... good. I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less... changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now, but I'm not giving up. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Let me sleep on it. I just might be able to work something out. Hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. I'll need more infernal iron either way, though, so keep your eyes open. Take care. Damon's upgrade didn't cool me down, but it did juice me up. I don't think I've ever felt more powerful. I hesitated to mention this back in the Druid's Grove, for obvious reasons. But no one has earned my trust, if not you. When Elturel was dragged into Avernus, I was drafted into a devil's smithy. It should have been awful. But infernal metal is like... A wild horse. Powerful. 
Exuberant. It'll kill you if you lack technique. I can sense some. Smell it almost. Somewhere in the area. Underground, maybe. Out there in the shadows. If you find it, bring it to me. I'll make something incredible. Absolutely. Rare to get your hands on this stuff. Well done keeping it to hand. draw the wrong kind of attention. Please, be welcome. Have a drink. Oh, my God! To your very good health. You perceive a faint hint of cloth grass, a herb that is said to elicit the truth. Jahira smiles at you, knowingly. It doesn't spoil the taste, if that's what you're wondering. Indulge me. You don't know what you're missing. Well over a century old, and yet it hasn't lost a hint of flavor. Still not quite so sure about you, though. People tend to lose more than just flavor when illithids get their hands on them. I speak from experience. There's an air about you. Something alien. Answer me true and do not lie. The parasite is changing you. Isn't it? Just... answer the question. I find that decidedly hard to believe. Look around you. Good men, good women. Stranded here, two feet in the grave. If we're to survive, I have no choice but to trust you. Can I? Good. Because I'll cross your heart myself if you break it. I have every reason to be cautious. I've traced people like you. People with parasites in their brains. All the way here from Baldur's Gate. The cult of the Absolute is spreading through the city. Quietly, quickly, and with unsettling deliberation. We tracked them to this ancient village, only to be faced with a man we killed and buried over a century ago. General Gadric Thorm. Remember that name. He's the leader of the Absolutists. He was a Sharan once. Took to building an army of dark justiciers beneath this very village. Alongside the local druids, we made it our business to see him deposed, dead and buried. But he's returned. Not only does General Gadric Thorm live again, it seems he is no longer mortal. He has become, in fact, Invincible. We met him on the road here. Commanding an army of the Absolute intent on destroying Baldur's Gate. I put an arrow through his eye myself. Only to watch him pluck it out like a splinter. He healed right in front of me and chased us into the shadows. Things looked hopeless. But experience has taught me that no matter how bleak things look, there's always hope. You are that hope. Protected by your artifact, you can infiltrate his forces at Moonrise Towers, posing as a true soul. Find out what it is that makes him invincible, so we can strip him of his advantage. Once Gatherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault his tower and put a final end to this blight.
Without a cure for your infection, your days are numbered too. Yet you selflessly offer to spend them fighting alongside us. I like you. I promise I will do everything I can to make sure you survive this. Any cure starts with understanding the disease. Whatever magic Gatherick's using to control these tadpoles, it must be at Moonrise. Until then, we keep drinking wine when we meet. You're not our only secret weapon. Isabel, a faithful cleric of Seluna, and a light in the darkness. She cast the moon shield around the inn. It's the only reason we're still alive. She's upstairs in her chambers. Tell her I sent you, and she'll see you through the shadows safely. Ah! You found your way. Good. I haven't forgotten. And, as it happens, I was making something to help you on your way. That is, if you're still going to help Wolbrin and the others. In that case, you'll be very pleased to learn what I have in store for you. A new type of smoke powder. All the bang and boom of the original, but with an extra surprise. I call it the Brilliant Retort. You'll need it if you're going to survive this cursed place. You'll need it if you're going to get into Moonrise Towers and help the Deep Gnomes taken prisoner there. You'll need it if you're going to save Wolbrin. Let's call a thing a thing. A Deep Gnome won't get far into the Absolute's orgy of evil. We already learned that in the Underdark with those sadistic Dwergar, didn't we? It's doubly true in this place. You, on the other hand, have proven resourceful in such infiltrations. I'll do my part according to my talents. And you, I hope, will do yours. The brilliant retort will aid you. Thus, I will make it. I didn't realize I had an audience. The true soul who's going to save us all. I'm Isabel. Pleased to meet you. Myself and Our Lady are doing what we can to hold the line. I hear you and your tadpole will be our offense. Free from the Absolute's influence. Yet, able to walk among cultists. It's almost too good to be true. But I'd be a poor cleric indeed not to avail of a blessing when I see one. Let me guess. Jahira sent you to beg a protection spell of her favorite cleric. Perfect. It'll make you immune to the lesser effects of the Shadow Curse, which will get you closer to the towers. But there are places it won't help. Places where the curse is darker, stronger. The cultists are able to traverse even the deepest shadows, though. I don't know how. The Harpers are trying to figure it out. Salunite magic. Dark Lady, forgive me. Good news. 
like a nasty little terrier. Ketherick is a frightening man, but you have something he doesn't. Allies worth having. While you're busy in the towers, I'll be sure to... Wait. Do you hear that? Something's wrong. Hello, Isabel. Marcus, is that you? What's happened to you? I've been blessed. You can be too. Come with me, and you can hear all about it from Ketherick himself. He's a flaming fist. Or was. He came with the others when we created this haven. And I thank you for your hospitality. True soul, my instructions are clear. Take the girl to Ketherick, alive. A haunting face swims into your mind's eye, its instructions vivid in your mind. Nothing is more important than bringing the girl alive. What's going on? If you have something to say, say it. Pathetic. The Absolute sees all. Your treachery will be punished. The Absolute? Of course. You can't believe them, Marcus. Ketherick will never give you whatever it is you've been promised. <laughs> he already has. Time to go, Isabel. I'm fine. <clears throat> Marcus has been with us since the start. They've been tracking us this whole time. And that was no random attack. You were the target, Isabel. They know how important you are. But they don't know about you. Ketherick will strike again. We need you to strike first. Discover the source of his invulnerability. Make him mortal so we can make him bleed. Good luck. We're in more danger than I knew. If something happens to me, everyone in this inn is dead. Like that. Why does a man like him do anything? Power, spite, some kind of twisted personal morality. I can understand why he'd want me dead. Without me keeping the curse at bay, everyone in this inn, everyone intent on killing him, is dead too. As for why he'd want to take me alive... I don't know. And I don't want to find out. Now that we have you... I hope I won't have to. No mercy. For Ketherick will have none on you. End this. That structure we saw from a distance in the Grimforge, something about it struck me as noteworthy. Perhaps we'll find an easier way to reach it if we keep pressing forward. It might all be a coincidence, but between those ruins and the signs I saw of Dark Justicias before, it might be much more. As long as I've prayed to Lady Shah, 
I wish to serve her as a dark justicia. There is scarcely a greater way to fully dedicate yourself to Lady Shah, save perhaps if you become the head of her church. To become a dark justicia is to become the Night Singer's sword arm. Her implement with which she will cast down the unbelievers and win the final battle to restore her perfect, endless darkness. It's all I ever wanted. I prayed it was my calling. But Mother forbid me from seeking to prove myself worthy of the rank. She said I was not ready. Not my mother, Mother, I should add. The Mother Superior. Head of Lady Shah's enclave in Baldur's Gate. Sometimes I wonder if she would ever deem me ready. I owe her everything, and I only wish to serve, yet she can prove... inscrutable. I don't know. Perhaps if I succeed in my mission and reach Baldur's Gate. Hope has little place amongst Lady Shah's children. It's an illusion, a distraction. But for this, I hope my time will yet come. There's something I need to say, something important. Can you spare a moment? First a parasite prods at our heads, then the shadows close in. More than ever, we need each other's trust. And I fear I've been less than honest. You're incredibly kind, but you earned the right to hear this long ago. The man I call father is Older Ravenguard, a Grand Duke of Baldur's Gate. Grand Duke Ravenguard? One of Baldur's Gate's most influential and beloved figures. Every Baldurian knows his name. I should have said sooner, but our relation was no matter of pride. Not least for him. You heard right. My father and I were close once upon a time, until he disowned me and cast me out of Baldur's Gate. I can't tell you more. The pact forbids it. My lips are quite literally sealed. The inevitable consequence of inseparable events. You still deserve to know. There is more to me than infernal power and pacts. My story is one of two men. The Blade of Frontiers. A man hunting the fiends who prey on the weak and claw at the coast. And Will Ravenguard, a memory of a memory, a man who belongs to the past. I wanted you to know the blade, not the shadow he left behind. Not so enchanting as you'd think. The poor tears, the Caldwells, they were the blue bloods hosting the fancy balls and drinking from gold goblets. Fathers, the son of a blacksmith born with barely a coin in the coffers. He made a name for himself among the Flaming Fist, brave as Balderan, stubborn as a deep rofe, daring, outspoken, but hardly posh. <laughs> I spent more time dueling with father than I did rubbing elbows with lords. Not to say I didn't develop a taste for good wine and the talent for courtly dance. It's been a badger's age since I've twinkled my toes. A drunk ogre could put on a better show. <laughs> well, give it some time. Develop a bond and maybe I'll show you a move or two. I promise, Clumsy Oaf is well within my repertoire. The shadow curse is upon us, as foul as I remember it, perhaps even worse. But with the Oak Father's blessing, we may soon see it banished from these lands.
This land is more than just soil and rock, root and leaf. It is a living being, in the form of a young fey boy, with the forest itself in his eyes. His name is Thaniel. I've met him in my meditations. But since the curse was unleashed, I have not felt his presence. He is its prisoner, I fear. And as long as he remains so, his domain will lie in darkness. But if we can find him, we can break the curse. If you learn anything of the Shadow Fell, or of a boy with the forest in his eyes, find me at once. I can't be exact, unfortunately. Time and the Shadow Curse won't have been kind to any traces that would have been left behind. A living witness is unlikely, I'll admit. But perhaps there'll be an unliving witness, or some lingering echo of what we seek. Don't worry. If you find something, you will know it. Playtime's over. Pet. What do you want, Mizora? Drop the attitude and perk up your ears. You've got a new mission. Absolute's cult has gone and grabbed one of Zariel's assets. A devil. And a powerful one at that. They're locked up in the cult's fortress, Moonrise Towers. And you're getting them out. <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. Should promised soul refuse obeyance or neglect duty, the pact holder shall cast the promised into a vernus as a lemur. I'll make it simple. Will fails or refuses, and he turns to a thick blob of stink flesh and sinks to a vernus. Now, be a good boy and play fetch, pup. Or you'll spend an eternity sizzling in the hells. Mizora's words may be flippant, but they are tinged with desperation. She cannot afford for Will to fail this mission. This may be your best chance to negotiate Will out of his pact. Oh, and what condition is that? Your mind links with Wills, drawn in by his increasing panic. What are you doing? Will relaxes, and your connection fades. Interesting. Now... Why should I go letting my favorite pet off his leash? Incredible. You actually think you hold the winning hand. Fine. I'll play your game. But I amend the pact once the mission's done, not before. Clause F. Section 9. Soulbinder shall bestow reward or favor only upon soul bearer's fulfillment of related obligation. Now, to Moonrise, pet. And do mind the shadows. They've been especially hungry. The more bullshit she pours, the more of it I'm forced to swallow. Mazora set me on fiends inside and outside the Hells. She's never ordered a rescue. Gods. She makes a mockery of everything the Blade stands for. Such an asshole. Thank you for sticking your neck out for me. I mean it, but I'm not going to celebrate till I'm actually free. I can already feel her scheming. She won't let me go without a fuss. Trust me on this. Not just rot. I'd have to fight. 
One of those mindless blobs clawing at demons on the front lines of the blood war. And it means everything to me. I always knew what my future held, and I know I chose right. <clears throat> God damn it! Why did it have to be Mizora? Why did it have to be Zariel? We're supposed to risk our necks to get one of her assets? What if it's a runaway like me? Or something far worse? I want to believe that as much as you do. Almost as much as Will does. But I just know there will be more to the story. There always is. It's a bad idea to play games with the devil. We'd never win. Not ever. This dark land must be filled with the broken, the beaten, the desperate. The perfect praying ground for a devil who offers a way out for those who sign on the dotted line. I hope we end up seeing our friend Raphael down here somewhere. Help me find him, and you'll find out. When I was taken to his house, I was caught off guard. But now, now I know what to ask for. The voice of the Absolute is strong here, and getting stronger. I don't know how much longer I can resist it. But it's good to see you're making progress. You took an unexpected route here. You did a brave thing. Saving those people in the grove. Not everyone would have helped. The hurt runs deeper than she's willing to show you. Yes. Yes, I am. Beneath the resilient veneer, a touch of fragility. She needs comfort. It's been a very long time since someone did that. For me. A woman by the name of Berlin. We were close. It just doesn't stop. We are being bombarded by waves of telepathic energy. Wave after wave with hardly a breath between them. I almost dare not rest. Each wave a set of orders to the infected. The order for your transformation has been given many times already. I just hope my powers last long enough to see this through. You know... I've been catching myself smiling more lately. I think that's your fault. I'm not sure what else I can say, at least until I can remember more. She taught me. Trained me. Punished me. Often, I think I feel her influence when the wound pains me. Not even memories, just... Glimpses, impressions. Perhaps the wound is her doing, something Lady Shah bid her to do. I don't know. Pain is the gauntlet that all who love Lady Shah must endure. Only her embrace can truly heal me. To try and. Salve myself would do nothing but shame me in the Night Singer's eyes.
perhaps you're right. And perhaps one day I won't have to suffer. But I don't think that day has arrived yet. Lady Shah will ease my pain when she wishes to. There's something I've been wanting to share with you, if now's a good time. It's difficult to put into words. I think it might be easier to just show you. Use the tadpole. The connection. Come into my mind. I don't remember how it started. Only how it ended. I was fleeing. my name. I can't remember what I said. I can't remember anything before those words. All I know is she saved my life and gave me a new home with Lady Shah. That's all I remember. You remember that it is common amongst Saluna's followers to send their children into the woods alone. A rite of passage to find their way home. Perhaps this one has gone awry. <laughs> You're reading too much into things. A childhood bauble, that's all. Just because Salunites claim something doesn't mean they own it. Lady Shah. But yes, her and those who saved me and taught me her ways. The Mother Superior. She made me who I am. At least as best as I can remember. She taught me, trained me, punished me when I failed her. Which was often. Perhaps I was. She sent me on this mission, after all. There you are. I was wondering where you'd run off to. Well, two things. Good news and bad news. The good news, obviously. I only need one more piece of infernal iron to craft an insulating chamber that can make it possible for Karlik to touch people exactly oh my god it's really happening it's been so long we've got the iron let's do this thing hang on i think you'll want to hear the bad news too yeah sure but first fix me please Fine. Well, go on then. I don't enjoy saying this, Karlak, but there's no two ways about it. Your engine is going to blow and I can't fix it. I'm not sure anyone can. It's simply too hot to exist here in the material plane. Unless you return to Avernus, for good, this thing is going to blow. Sooner rather than later. But still, you, you can give me something that will let me touch again, right? Safely. Yes, but... That's all I need to know. Do it. Please.
Well. All right. This shouldn't take long. Same as last time. You'll need to install it yourself. This should do the trick. There. So did it... work? Only one way to find out. It. Thank you, Dallon. Thank you so much. It's the least I could do. Before you go, there's something I need to tell you. That engine of yours, it's contained for the moment, but it's just too hot to exist here in the material plane indefinitely. I know you know that, but the thing is, there's a cure. I wasn't making any headway with the mechanics, none at all. The environment here is just too cold to sustain metals like the ones inside you. You have to return to Avernus. For good. Or this thing is going to burn you up from the inside out. And sooner than you think. The minute I set foot back in Avernus, Zarya will force me back into service. I'm not doing her bidding again. I'd rather die. I get that, but don't rule it out. The world just might be better with you in it. Even in Avernus. I won't stop trying to figure out a cure, but... At this point, I think we all have to face the inevitable. Right? All this doom and gloom. I have something far more exciting on my mind than this bloody tin box. Thanks, Damon. Really, you've given me more than I could ever repay. It's been my pleasure. Good luck, both of you. Look after yourself, all right? This is the best day. The best day! I'm so happy for me, too. Now, I just need to find someone to cuddle up to tonight, and I'll be the happiest woman on the Sword Coast. I'm not sure. Depends who's got me in mind. Withers was giving me the old eye the other night. Then again, maybe it was just an old eye. Listen, I'm never going back. If you said I could die right now or live a thousand years in the hells, I'd choose to go out now with my freedom intact. I don't expect anyone to understand that. But I've been dealt a hand most people don't have to contemplate playing. You heard Damon? There is no solution. It's hell or bust. I choose bust. But I don't want to talk about this now. I've been given a huge gift. I can touch the people I love for the first time in a decade. And for the first time in a decade, there are people I care about all around me. Let me enjoy that, please. Thanks, soldier. I just want to celebrate this. At least for a little. You mean to reach Moonrise? And I have orders to help you. The path to the towers is drenched in blackness so deep even a torch cannot quell it. 
Yet, the cultists have found a way to move freely. Whatever this method, you must claim it. A cultist convoy crosses the land as we speak. I've readied an ambush. Say the word, and we fly. Harper's with me. Stray no more than an arm's length from your course. Keep steady. We're closing in. We bring more to your church every day, my queen. Your followers are legion. Go. We'll wait for your signal. Your faith will stand ready, Majesty. Soon. Soon the world will bow to you. Here, web ass. Something moved up there. Want me to drag it out? They stay in the light. They do not go into the dark. I didn't figure something as big and ugly as you for a coward. Huh? No! They will not go into the dark. Brass, stop! They will not become shadow! They will not feed the curse! Forgive me, my queen, but I had to, before the dark got any stronger. Heretics in the dark, tell them, destroy the blasphemers! Tremor! Soul is in good hands. The lantern gives off a chilly glow, protecting all in its vicinity from the surrounding shadows. Incredible magic. I can feel the light lifting the shadows, even those within me. Be safe and be brave. We expect no less. You notice a tiny pixie trapped within. These fey creatures are infamous for their trickery. Sometimes playful, sometimes malicious. Oh, please! Oh, golly me, oh my! You must release me or I'll die. This lantern only lights the way when I am hurting night and day. My name? My name is Dolly Thrice. Now won't you free me from this vice? It would be my pleasure, truly. Once I'm freed, I'll help you, duly. Finally! Been trapped in that coffin with no one but a mad rider and my own farts for company. Did me a good turn there, didn't you? What do I owe you? Sure I can, but will I? Yeah, sure, why not? Here, give this bell a shake. Speak the magic words and you'll get what you've earned. Protection from the Shadow Curse. What more could a dingus want? You're welcome. Where lies your guilt? The waning moon. You walk in the darkness unafraid. How curious. <laughs> A fair point. Perhaps this one could assist us. The murdered lie silent. The raven asks, will you be their voice? She is not the victim. Nay, she is the perpetrator. This woman tended a bar where she took her patrons, her friends, into her confidence. 
promised their secrets were safe with her. Yet she turned their words into knives and stabbed them in the back. They died because of her. And to this day, her victims lie unavenged. Death is not the end, merely another beginning. I seek a record of this one's crimes, written in her own hand. Through it, I can summon her spirit and force her to face trial for her crimes. Go to the distillery, the one she calls the Waning Moon. Find the ledger and bring it to me. Someone new. Boo! I scared you! I saw it! Nobody beats me at hide and seek. Will you play with me? I'm Oliver. I'm seven. Will you play with me? I don't know anyone called that. Don't ask me again. Now play with me. All right. I'll hide and you seek. Find me and you win. Get ready. And no cheating. smarter than some playmates I've had. They always tried to leave before I was done with them. Try to find me again, but my family will be looking for you at the same time, so don't get caught! Better than most, though, so I'll let you go. Here, second prize. You'll need it. The objective of the Scalpel Sisters is to soothe. For the Scalpel, indeed, is an extension of Sha. See how the patient reacts when I but stroke the right nerve. Hear its comfort, hear the very melody of mercy. <laughs> Pray, sister, show us the extent of your beneficence. Stop. Stay your hand, for it slaps where it should stroke. We can hardly hear the patient's sighs of solace. Perhaps it is our unexpected audience that makes you quiver. Come, step forward. You are no sister, but that matters none. Every student is welcome. Behold, sisters, the very face of ignorance. One who mistakes tenderness for torture. Go on, acquaint the face of ignorance with the true object of our studies. Absence. Absence. No other word captures the heart of Shah so very perfectly. It is the scalpel-led journey that leads from pain to peace. What the fuck is this loon talking about? See? What is the light of eyes but the cancer that causes one to witness the laceration of being? If light 
is the symptom, then darkness is the cure. For in light there is presence, but in darkness there is absence. In light is presence, in darkness, absence. But you, look how the sucker of Shar eludes you. See how painfully present you remain. We do not wish to see you suffer so. Let us cure you. The sisters' blades are bloodied and dull. Only the most measured hand could make a clean incision. You remember Ashar and Maxim. Go forth and sow doubt, but do not compel it, for only the willing may know the lady's embrace. Their incisions are, as yet, still streaked with imprecision. That much, I must concede. How to steady their hands, I wonder. Yes, for are we not all in need of a cure? The scalpel does not discriminate. Let each and every one of you partake in its soothing journey. Absent sisters, acquaint yourselves. It is a proud moment when one sees one's teachings so lovingly taken to heart. are to be commended for their graduation, rewarded with the promised cure. Come, I will acquaint you with the lady's dark-fingered embrace. Your diligence is exemplary. Very well. Your own scalpel you will be. Observe, then succeed me into the sucker of Shah. Corpse. It's Arabella's mother. The doctors found oblivion. Well, no time to mourn. I'll fix this without him. Hey! I know you! You're... Twist him up! <laughs> That's Arabella, kid from the Druid's Grove. That snake woman nearly did her in. Looks like she's learned a thing or two. Sorry, it knocks the wind right out of me. I was looking for Mum and Pops. When Zevlor, when he, well, there was an ambush. Mum yelled, run. So we ran. I could hear him running behind me. Till I couldn't. Still can't find him. But I bet you can. You'll help me, I just know it. You notice the girl shivering in fear and anger. She is not yet ready to hear the truth of her parents' fate. Oh, thanks, mister. I knew you'd help me again. The vines won't last forever. I don't... I don't suppose I can stay with you. Just till you find Mum and Pops. I won't be any trouble, I swear it. Oh, thanks. You're the best. So you send Mum and Pops there. I'll be waiting, hero man.
Thumb! Son of Sword Coast! Go on! Kiss! Bottoms up! Go next! This guy looks like he had a long, long, long night. Might be best to keep him happy for now. Leaning in, you can see how the creature's skin barely holds it together. The bulge of its belly is on the cusp of bursting wide open. Oh, gods. I do not want whatever's inside that guy all over me. Go on, drink. Make it drink. Be drunk.
research notes, they describe a powerful venom extracted from a rare purple worm. Distiller Thizzable Thorn sought to create a fatal poison using the worm's gullet. He procured several parts of a worm gullet, but rinsed one in error. The poison he brewed was noxious, but not fatal. Thizzable devoted months to formulating a deadly poison with the remaining ingredients, without success. After exhaustive experimentation, he was able to make a near-deadly extract from the glands. But to complete his poison, Thizzable required one last ingredient the petals of a corpse rose. The book's index reveals corpse roses may grow near tombs, mausoleums, and particularly redolent cadavers. Thesabald enlisted a courier from Baldur's Gate to obtain corpse rose petals and other ingredients and deliver them to a covert location. Unfortunately, a deep purple stain darkens the final page, obscuring the parcel's destination. Your mind separates the black from the blue, revealing the stash's location. You mark your map as a reminder. With the corpse rose petals the package contains, you might create Thizzabald's purple worm poison. The air stirs in trepidation. You have the ledger. We have it. Her lies. Her guilt. Madeline reported her friends to a dark justicia and fled when they were butchered. Well, she flees no more. I will be the conduit for Madeline's spirit. I will force her to face trial. And you will be the judge. Make her beg. Make her suffer. There's no justice for traitors, only pain. Witness. That I was gonna be punished. That you'd be the judge. But I didn't mean to hurt anyone. I said it didn't mean nothing. That Ben and Mark were just drunk and whining. The Dark Justicia promised she was gonna chat with him. She promised. She gave him a dagger each and told them to press it against their stomachs on the count of three to start stabbing and not stop till she said so. She never said stop. I'd do anything to take it back. Anything. What I did was wrong and I won't ever forgive myself. But here in that just one person doesn't hate me. That one person forgives me. Makes the load so much lighter. Thank you. You were supposed to make her suffer, not forgive her. That doesn't matter. I seek the guilty, the tormented, the anguished. You have crossed me. And for that, I end your pathetic life. Another. Let's do this. You have been judged.
that you have. You may pass the river, but first you must pay. The gold is not for me. The gold is for the tall. I collect the tall. I collect the gold. 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 No. I paid back. That's far enough. His thoughts invade your own, probing for purchase. Your parasite purrs in recognition. Ah, one blessed like myself. What news, true soul? Who better to suss out his like? You'll find Zrell in the audience chamber, true soul. She'll be wanting to hear from you. Enjoy the view. This feels like it stretch all the way to the Sea of Swords in a clear day. If this place ever gets a clear day. I'm afraid you missed the ship, true soul. But there'll be another along soon enough. We're already stacking the cargo. Baldur's Gate. The army marches overland. But we sent some friends ahead to smooth the way. Locums need to see her truth. Take their place in her design. Or they don't, and we send them to meet the old gods they cling to. Doesn't matter much either way. Nothing of note. Just supplies for the battle ahead. I've already checked it twice over. As the symbol glows, Power courses through you. Authority. The presence deep in your mind is awake, unblinking. This is it. A single word pervades your consciousness. Soon. As you bear down on his mind, you feel a pulse in response. A thousand pulses, echoing from the nearby crates. Tadpoles. His mind had rejected the knowledge, forced it behind a mental wall. A wall you just took a hammer to. Worms. Worms in their heads. Worms all over. Parasites. Worms. <laughs> be no doubt. This is the place. This is where we'll discover the secret of the Absolute. Another true soul. The Disciple will want to see you through the main doors. Well, Flo didn't tell a lie. She said you'd find me, and here you are. Karlak, isn't it? Now there's a name I'd hope never to hear again. What was Flo doing here? Didn't think to quiz her about her business. Florenta the Garotta. A Cambian I knew back in Avernus. She was the closest thing I had to a friend. That said, she would have choked the life out of me if I ever turned my back on her. The fact that she knows where I am, where I might be going, doesn't exactly delight me. Maybe. Probably. I don't know. She's a half-devil. Impossible to read. I wouldn't have given her the time of day, but even I needed a laugh once in a while. What can I say? The bitch had good jokes. Enough chatter. Your friend gave me three soul coins, said I could sell them if I wanted. But if I kept them for you, she'd consider it a favor owed. Soul coins, huh? This could come in handy. Infernal currency. Each one is inscribed with a soul. Usually an evil soul, but... not always. 
I'll explain later. Away from prying ears. But trust me, you'll be into it. Sure. But she did have a condition. For every coin you take, you've got to hear the story of the soul trapped inside. There you have it. Flo came all this way just to try to make me feel like shit. Clever use of her time. Memorized a bunch of sad stories on her behalf, did you? Didn't need to. Your Flo did some devil woo-woo and stuck him in my head. Couldn't forget now if I wanted to. Do you want the coins or not? First coins got the soul of a woman named Mavery. She was born to a cruel mother and a violent father and three evil brothers, all named Balder. She never knew a day of love in all her life. When she was a girl of 15, she sold her soul to Tiamat in exchange for someone who would love her unconditionally. She got what she asked for. A fellow named Clint, destined to be her soulmate, struck by a cart and died a few moments after clapping eyes on our Mavery. Poor guy. The scud of her soul is yours now. Thanks, I guess. This one has got the soul of a man named Frakes. Lived in a village near Neverwinter. Hit hard by the worst hunger in a thousand years. Frakes called out for help. Prayed for his children to have meat to eat. Zariel answered. Made old Frakes grow flesh upon flesh after flesh. His wee ones had all the meat they could stomach. He should have known. Better to die a thousand deaths than let Zariel into your life. Last one's got the soul of a little boy named Ongir. Eight years old. He liked playing in the sun with his friends. That's all I know. That's all? That's all. Oh, and this slip of scratch. Well, thanks, Flo. Hearing a bunch of desperate horror has ruined my day, which I suppose was the point. You got three soul coins out of the bargain, didn't you? I'd quit whinging if I were you. I did my part. That means our business is done. Unless you've got actual gold to hand. We did as we was told, General. Followed every order. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. Ass! No, no, it was Minfara. She got the orders. She... Enough! A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpole squirms, urging you to obey. You failed to retrieve the artifact. You failed to protect your true soul. You do not deserve to live. A new true soul come to share their wisdom? We did as we were told. We're loyal to the Absolute. Tell him! Silence! True soul, you have seen these goblins at work, have you not? What say you? See? What I tell ya? Praise the Absolute. Faith without action is anemic, sickly, in a word, useless. We are too close to the ending and the new beginning. I can coddle failure no longer. Kill them quickly. What? No! You creaking old bag of shit! <laughs> I'm so sorry, my lord. She's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again.
Dispose of the rest as you see fit. Or better yet, put that true soul to use. You have far more important matters to attend to. Or have you forgotten? Of course not, my lord. Thank you. You heard the general. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. Here in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done. Please! You gotta help me! For old time's sake! Oh, praise the Absolute! And praise her true soul! Your merciful streak will be the death of us one day. Let's hope Zarel won't be too angry. Hush! Meat sounds above. Here. Yeah. For a moment, you do hear it. Flesh sliding on stone. Like a living being extending through the walls. In walls above, maybe whole tower, Lodis near kitchen, but Mig band not allowed to pet nose. You find meat, you share. Slimy seems to be dripping from the rafters above. <clears throat> what now? Who is that? Not if you keep them. Which of us would you rather feed on That's curious. if he had free reign? Through a narrow crack in the wall, you hear something shift against stone. The pulse of a crawling, living thing. You can't quite catch a glimpse, but you recognize this feeling. The same alien presence you felt on the Nautiloid. Your awareness unfolds, expanding through every wall in the tower, every mind. A vast living network extending down into the dark, where something wakes. I can feel it. Looking deep inside. It's a trap! Tendrils snap like iron cords around your wrist. That presence in your mind looms large. Closer now, you stop resisting, your arm bending with the movement of the flesh. And suddenly, an opening appears. With a soft sucking sound, your hand pulls free. The flesh within the wall retreats. I appreciate a wandering hand now and again, but maybe control your urges for now. A moment, true soul. You use a spoon to stir the soup, Barnabas. Forget the axe, my darling. <laughs> now, how can I help you? I've shown Barnabas a kinder way. A kinder name is only fitting. That is the gift the Absolute gave me when I stood before her. To rewrite the lives of her faithful. Make them believe there's something better. She gathers many threads for her design. But it is still her design. And Barnabas has found his place in it. Observe. Oh! 
proud of us, sweetie. Come show what a good boy you are. What would you like him to do? The prayer, I think. Barnabas struggles with civilized speech, but he's been practicing. You feel her will surge outwards and envelop the creature, inexorable as the tide. <clears throat> Trace of restraint is gone. Barnabas has tasted blood and wants more. As if following a well worn path, your mind reaches out and knows where to squeeze. Your blood runs quicker, feeding the gnawing absence at the center of your mind. General Thorne's prayers and preparations must not be disturbed. The rooftop is off-limits to everyone. Even you, Disciples Rel? Everyone. Keep watch and ensure that nobody passes. Excellent timing, true soul. The goblins. Tell me how they suffered. No. Better yet. Show me. Her mind enters yours abruptly, flickering across your memories in a blaze of excitement. She sees the goblins walking free, and a burning rage fans across your mind like wildfire. Explain yourself. Very pragmatic, but very boring. Let's see if there's anything interesting in this brain of yours. She parts the folds of your mind again. Touching your wants and hopes, tasting them. Every emotion soaks into her mind's palate. But there is purpose to her exploration. She is searching for proof of your faith. There is a tremor of shared ecstasy as she finds a mirror to her own desire. Perfect. You crave what all true souls should, to be touched by the Absolute. I have already been blessed to stand in her presence. It was bliss. She gave me everything I wanted. Why not? What's the point in power if you don't get to have a little fun every now and again? She gave me the power to cut the thread of life with a thought. But I can caress as well as cut. That's why you should stay on my good side. And the best way to do that is to serve General Thorne. I have a mission for you. That's it. Play along. The closer you can get to the General, the closer you'll be to the answers you seek. There is a relic that General Thorm requires. He sent his most trusted advisor, Disciple Balthazar, to retrieve it. The relic is beneath the Thorm family mausoleum. That is where you will find Balthazar. But we have lost contact with him. Go there, aid Balthazar if you can, and bring the relic home. Oh no, the Kogut. Your conversation has been cut short. These prisoners are for Disciple Balthazar's attention only. Yeah. 
Your reasoning is hard to argue with. You're free to speak to the prisoners. The gnomes. Speak to the gnomes. You ordered that guard about as if you were the Absolute herself. What do you want with us, exactly? Huh. And why would you be so inclined? Barkas is out here? Mm, didn't think he had the stones. Well, if he sent you, you're no slave to the Absolute. You're a damn wolf among sheep, aren't you? <laughs> I reckon you and I were meant to meet. I'm Wilbrun. We've got a plan. For us and the tieflings both. But we're scuppered without the right equipment. We need tools. That head case of a warden robbed ours. But anything that breaks rock will do. Even if it's not iron hand quality. Whatever you find, throw it through the bars. But for the love of Gerdor, make sure a guard doesn't see you. Or we're both done for. Good work. We're gonna wait until it's quiet, and then bust out the back wall. We'll grab the tieflings along the way. We'll need them if it comes to a fight. You, however, are the clincher. Once we move, keep the patrols busy. If the bastards spot us, all of bloody Moonrise will come down on us. Good to go. All that's left is to ship off. My plan for now is to hide out on the water. Unless you have a better idea. dark until time skill or luck brings you to last light's dock hold there you can't just land and start unloading strangers they're procedures damn it no one gets in without being tested commander jahira's orders and they'll have it once we know they're free from infection it, form a line. Let's see if the Absolute's little pet recognizes any of you. The Absolute's what? What are you doing? If what you've said is true, no one has anything to fear. If not, well, we'll soon find out. Now, form a line. I'll not ask again. The shadows haven't consumed you. Good. Gruesome, isn't it? I'm glad you survived the encounter, at least. Did you learn anything more? Chosen? Oh, that's three masters Kedrick has served. Our paladin isn't very picky. He's aligned himself with mind flares. But I cannot see what he gains. Perhaps we can force it out of him once we have him up against a wall. Was there anything else? The great general is paranoid. Good. That means he's protecting something. I'll wager it's the source of his invulnerability. He'd protect that at any cost. Ah, everyone seems to be quite a flutter. Do you know why? You... you did? But, but that means... Wolverine! Wolverine! Oh, where is he? 
Wolverine! Ah, uh, I heard you might be about. Uh, how the devil did you get stuck here, Barkas? <laughs> I'm not stuck. I came to find you, of course. Why would you do a foolish thing like that? Really, Barkas? Uh, unfortunately for me, you're my friend. Rescuing you from mortal peril is my right. But you didn't rescue me, did you? I rescued myself, with the aid of this... helper. Ah, it's you. I should have guessed. Thank you very much for your help finding Wolbrin. You don't belong here, Barkas. As soon as the way is clear, pack up and head to Baldur's Gate. But... W Wolbrin... The rune powder... We need to discuss what you're going to... I said go home! Please, that, that isn't necessary. Indeed. Neither of you has any clue what's at stake. A and why should you? It's Iron Hand Gnome business. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a great deal to do. Well, there we have it. Wolbrin is safe and sound, thanks to you. I owe you a great deal. The brilliant retort, for starters. Here you are, as promised. I give you the brilliant retort. Now, I believe our business is well and truly concluded. Well, <laughs> perhaps Wolbrin is right. Perhaps I ought to return to Baldur's Gate. Oh, that's all right. I'm a patient fellow. I'm, I'm sure you'll clear a path for everyone soon enough. In my years as the Blade, I've witnessed countless cruelties, faced unimaginable evil. But Thorn, he is made of pure hate. The Sword Coast will rejoice when the bastard's fallen. And lest we forget, we've a devil to rescue. Two missions, one destination. <laughs> Not in a mere prison cell, certainly. My guess, Thorn will have confined him in the bowels of the tower. The deeper we dig, the closer we get. What were you before you were... this? There is no before. So you've always been a bone man? In a sense. Hey, you. I made it. Easy peasy. You find mum and pops? No. No, no, no. I don't believe you. It isn't true. It isn't! Get away from me! Go! Greetings. I sought to reach a Githyanki crash and be rid of these tadpoles. Now we stalk forgotten lands haunted by darkness. I'm going to find my people. If you have any sense, you will follow. You can see. Good evening. I'm here on behalf of Gale of Waterdeep. He wishes to extend you an invitation for a private conversation in a more suitable locale. Gladly. Simply follow yonder path and soon you will find him. this time of night. There's an almost reverent silence that accompanies the peak of darkness, when you'd almost believe the dawn will never break. 
the cradle of eternity. The timelessness of lovers. That most beautiful of fantasies. I will be. Soon. I am perhaps just one hard day away from being without any troubles at all. This may be my last night alive. I wanted it to be under a canopy of beauty and wonder. And with company to match. I thought this place might bring me peace. I thought it might make the weight of what I must do feel a little lighter. But I'm not so sure. Babe or crone, coward or hero, death is assured. Mistra's forgiveness is not. If you knew the end was near, would you not want to ensure it had meaning? I am terrified. I will not claim otherwise. My face could scarcely conceal it, even if my words sought to deny it. There is no point in running from the inevitable. Better to meet it on my own terms. I can feel it. Ever since we set foot in this strange, corrupted land, the closer we get, the heavier my own heart becomes. Stay with me a while, will you? Day will come all too soon, even in this place. One moment with you could sate me for a lifetime and prize the fear from my heart. I'm so very glad you came to share this with me. I know this is all unreal, but I created it for you. You must know that you're... you're very special to me. If things were different, if we were home, I'd have taken time to do things properly, to say it all better. But time is short. I'm in love with you. I see. Well, perhaps this is for the best. Should my time be short, you will not be wounded too deeply by my absence. Thank you for spending this time with me. I think I want to be alone now. at a crimson splash on his leg. The cub looks at you with glistening eyes. With a sad hoot, he holds out his paw, revealing a wound. As the wound closes, the cub begins testing his weight on the leg. beasts quite charming once you get accustomed to the smell of rotting flesh I was hoping to speak to you as a matter of fact about the night you were kind enough to keep this melancholy wizard company I wanted to to thank you I was sinking into a dark place but you reminded me there is still light in the world and I should care to look for it you you may well have prevented me from doing something very rash in the near future I count myself lucky to call you a friend. Hmm, <laughs> careful. I may just take you up on that. To the crash. And do try to keep up. Ah. <sighs> 
This view's almost worth the walk. That's enough! On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No. No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now! The captain is expecting you. Forward. Carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. Within the artifact, a feeling stirs. Uncertainty. Your curiosity is getting the better of you. Do not let it. Stay away from the Githyanki. Tell me, Lazelle, what is it like on the astral plane? Your home realm intrigues me. Githyanki lay their eggs on other planes. They cannot mature in the astral. Sentries to arms! Istik! State your purpose, quickly! Stand down, Gish! Is it not Vlacketh's command to welcome her, Faithful? I expected no visitors, Faithful or otherwise. Why have you come? We seek the Saithisk. Show me the way. You are infected! A gate thrall is something to eradicate, not reason with! The Faithful may be purified. This is Vlacketh's protocol. Fine. Let the Gustil carry out your fate. Report to the infirmary at once. And step carefully. Crescia like watches you. This imposing portrait depicts a powerful Githyanki warrior, undeniably regal in her mien. Vlacketh herself. She is both the sun that blinds us and the void that contains us. Praise be. In the corner of the painting is a small symbol you can't quite place. You remember seeing this symbol in a book about the denizens of the astral plane. It appears to be a depiction of a comet. This Githyanki looks different from the others you've seen here. The way her stark white skin stretches over her sharp features gives her a distinctly otherworldly aspect. Vertical incision from pineal eye to end of notochord. Intestinal coloration consistent with samples 231 to 259. Do you have a question? Or are you just going to stand there gawking? I am a child of Gith, not discarded rat flesh. Am I not due your respect? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Let the istic with you speak. And I will decide what respect you are owed. Nothing your kind is capable of understanding. The better question is, what brings an istic to my infirmary? You must be desperate to seek my aid. Tell me, how long have you been infected? Fascinating. So you're conscious of your infection, but showing no signs of cerebral impairment. 
Either your tadpole is special, or you are. We must find out which. Go to the Saithisk. I will ensure you are cured. The apparatus at the top of those stairs. Quickly, now. Time is of the essence. Even Gith Yankee rarely experiences Aethys. You are very lucky, Isdick. The device is strange. Made of taut flesh and pockmarked metal. It waits for something. The Zethisk. Vlaketh's purity distilled. My duty. My right. The device is an ingenious synthesis of illithid anatomy and metal alloys. It hums with psionic energy, hinting at paths into unknown mines and unseen planes. Stand aside! My time has come. Sit, child. Let the Zathisk end your suffering. You must focus on the parasite at all times. The Zathisk will do the rest. An unseen blade cleaves your mind in two. Impossible pain sears your bones and body in concert with Lazel's. The Zathisk's psionic forces batter Lazel's thoughts. There is no chance she will survive this unscathed. Yes, child, speak the Tanakit. Meditate on its verses. You feel Lazel's mind rip and rupture. Is this purification? Is this the cure? I... Oh, yes. Oh, I feel it. Oh, splitting. Burning! Ah! <laughs> what madness is this? The Zathis can nearly destroyed me! I am Githyanki! I will not be Geich! My life's work! Gone! And yet she lives! And so does her parasite. Her voice cuts with a fanatical edge, an obsession bordering on mania. If there's a chance the parasite lives, she wants it. Really? Then all this destruction was a symptom of its power? <laughs> Incredible. I am disappointed that we could not extract it alive. It would have been an exceptional specimen. In any case, the problem is resolved. Leave me. I must salvage what I can. I followed protocol. I kept to my faith. Yet the Zathisk might have killed me. Someone must have tampered with it. An aberrance I can't begin to comprehend. Now hurry. We must go to the Chirai and inform him of the Zathisk's tampering. Please, Chirai, I can explain. The latest batch of cultists knew nothing of the Astral Prism. They were just trying to find Moonrise. They all head there. My Gish have drafted plans to assault the tower. They are ready to fight, Chirai. We could sift the missing artifact from the tower's ashes if you would give us... Quiet. Find the astral prism, Therizin. My patience falters. Yes, Chirai. You heard him! Go! Do as she says. She remains your Kithrak. For now. An istic! 
in my crash. You are one of the mercenaries sent to bring the weapon. The Istik is with me, honored Kithrak. So noted. But my question goes unanswered. Do you bring the weapon? Don't tell her anything. The Inquisitor? On what grounds? We have all the proof we need, and it has not moved his resolve. We know infected flock to Moonrise Towers. I reported the gathering masses back to Tunarath. In response, they sent an Inquisitor. Instead of ordering an assault, we were told to join in this mad hunt for an ancient relic. Meanwhile, illithid sickness spreads right in front of us. I do not know. This hunt is the Inquisitor's folly, not mine. It is small, angular, metal, adorned with Tiersu script, stolen by true soul heretics. You sense Shadowheart's worry. This weapon sounds like the artifact you carry. What was that look? You know something. Do you have it? I sincerely hope you know what you're doing. Shema Zalav Lakith. Give it to me! No. No! Yes. There it is. Exactly as described. The Inquisition will finally come to an end. it when I cannot? It appears you have been chosen, Istik. You are lucky. It is not for me to question why. Go, seek the Inquisitor below, and take the cursed thing with you. The Inquisitor awaits. Follow the corridor. much to discuss. My Arden spoke of one of our kin that escaped a crashing geek slave vessel. Chry. Vlacketh's justice in flesh. You have accomplished much, child. I am pleased to finally meet you. I heard there is so much goblin blood on your hands that it soaks their children's nightmares. To business. I suspect you plucked something precious from the Geik ship. Something that belongs to us. The weapon. Give it to me. Don't do it. The weapon is how I protect you. Do it. Do not disobey the Inquisitor. What makes you think we are not? We are talking about the grand design, the restoration of the Illithid Empire. There is nothing of greater importance. But the weapon is the solution. I have heard it directly from Queen Vlacketh herself. It is how we will stop the Mind Flayers before they destroy us all. Hand it over. No. So it is far. Shkathzai. My queen. Shkathzai. You are permitted to look upon me. You are invited to kneel. The deathless queen has spoken. You will obey.
These attendants you keep, you taught them well. My child, my laser. Chma Zala Vlaketh, you know me. Alon of Kalia speaks most highly, as did Achaia before. You seek purity. I may yet grant it. Istic, you bear that which is ours. But are you friend, or are you thief? Your utility is proven, but your heroism is yet to be witnessed. A test, then, to see if you are as capable as you profess to be. That weapon you carry, the astral prison, it is corrupted. I will cleanse it for you, my queen. Tell me how. There is someone inside. Their mind is warped, broken, a blight. They are an agent of the Grand Design, sent to sabotage the Astral Prism. Our last defense against the return of the Elithid Empire. As long as they live, the prison is compromised. Kill them! Do this, and I will cleanse you and your allies. Do this and ascend! Ascension? My queen, an honor gained, a burden borne. You must accept, refuse, and you will know my fury. Use the Planecaster's power to enter the artifact. Be wary of the creature's lying tongue. Cut it out if you must. Yes. They are not to leave until it is done. As you say, my queen. Chma Zala Vlaketh. We will not waste a second. My orders were to keep the artifact safe, not pry into it. But I'd be lying if I said I wasn't curious as to what exactly it's hiding. We have our orders, and the queen of the Githyanki herself, no less. Now might be the time to consider obeying them. The Undying Queen has spoken. Insert the artifact into the Crescent's Planecaster. We will kill the threat inside. And I will have Lacket's eternal regard. She will cleanse me. She will ascend me. Timeless space, bounded, compressed in a fold, a pocket of astral plane. Boundless, timeless, like every dream that ever was stitched together. It is home. So you came. In spite of all my warnings. Disappointing. Come. We will talk in private. Just the two of us. I may have made a mistake trusting you. I told you to stay away from the Githyanki. But you just couldn't help yourself. Could you? And now... 
You've come here to murder me. <laughs> I told you I stole the artifact from someone. Well, I stole it from Vlakith. Since then, she has become desperate. Vlakith wants me dead because I know her secret. It is a secret so great that if her people ever found out, that would be the end of her rule, the end of her. That same secret is how I've been protecting you from the Absolute. I can hear your thoughts. You think I'm lying. Vlakith warned you that I would try to deceive you. But consider this. What reason have I to deceive you? I want the same thing as you. Freedom. I'm on your side. I have been since the very beginning. It seems I was right to put my faith in you after all. Thank you. Lakith will be furious, to make no mention of your Githyanki companion. The Lich Queen fears nothing more than the loss of her empire. The knowledge I have of her deception will bring that about. Godlike in power, yes, but with none of the sanctity. Vlakith is lying to her people. She pretends to know how Gith destroyed the Mind Flayer Empire. In truth, she knows nothing. If the Illithid Empire were ever to return, she would be incapable of stopping them. And if her people found out about her impotence, there would be mutiny, revolution, the end of her rule. But that very power, the power to resist Illithid control, which Vlakith only pretends to know, is how I've been protecting you. I suppose she hoped to extract it from my corpse. Since you spared me that fate, she will come for you. As do I. I have delayed long enough. The next attack is overdue, and I can't risk you being caught in the middle of it. I need you out there, searching for the Absolute. You were on the right path, to Moonrise Towers. Return to it. Be warned, the Inquisitor awaits your return from this place with orders to kill you. No doubt the rest of the Kresh will join him. Good luck. What happened in there? Speak. Have you killed my Queen's enemy? Vlakith does not lie to her faithful. Open your mind. Show me. Your mind tingles. Lysel seeks entrance. I've a mind to end you here and now. But you either believe your own words, or have suddenly mastered the duplicitous arts. To the Inquisitor, and let us see who speaks with Serpent's tongue. Lazel, I've been waiting. You are named Hashalak. Bend your head, for my blade is ready. Shrai, please! Summon Vlakith! There's much- Irrelevant, Gake wretch! The Queen has spoken. Your death is decreed! You realize what Lazel doesn't? Whatever the outcome of your visit to the Astral Prism, Vlakith had no intention of letting either of you live. What do I have to lose?
glad you came to your senses. Now leave, before the others come for us. Did your fury as a blade, roared your wrath as a dragon. You promised ascension, yet I crawl among my own people, low as an asp's belly. Shkaketh! I followed your path. What good, this heart of stone, for it to be shattered? That crash would be a smoking ruin if it wasn't for us. Still, better move along. I don't want to test the limits of Gith Yankee gratitude. I don't believe it. They can't be. Breathe, child. Resist not the winds of change. Let them carry thee. No. No! Listen. Dost thou not hear it? Where creation meets ruin, where morning meets midnight, the root of all being, balance. They're dead! I can't! Balance. Your very soul is tangled in shadow. Arabella's magic, wild as cursed briar. Her talent is now yours, too. The girl must learn the ways of the arcane, but she shan't remain here. Arabella holds a power beyond reckoning, that of the decaying forest and the seedling that bore it. But it is unbalanced. Her yoke is already heavy. If she walks thy path, it will surely break. Arabella will depart once thou dost leave these accursed lands. She will find her way safely. Thus, it is fated. Bowman, you're making me leave. Fear not, girl. The Weave knows thy purpose. It will guide thee, if thou dost listen. I... <laughs> you feel the grief fade as if it were your own. There is a lightness in her now, veiling the power within, soothing it. Is that my future? Is that why they died? It is. It's wonderful. Thank you, Bowman, for being nice. If there are people like you around, perhaps everything will be all right. Nothing. Both animals look fine. Scratch's tail wags furiously. These two have become firm friends.
Supreme Kithrak. Has Vlakith sent you to slay me with your own blade? I've not come to kill you, Lazel. I've come to aid you. Don't trust him. Skakek Kia Gith Shabeleth. My blade rests. Mother Gith compels you to listen. Speak. My ear is yours. I know you carry the astral prism, Lazel. Within it lies the seed of Vlakith's demise, and I intend to help you bring it to fruition. Vlakith's demise? Shkaketh! I should run you through for suggesting it. If they have not said, they must have good reason, and I won't be the one to betray them. But the one inside's chosen you as an ally, protects you with their power. That very power will be the end of Vlakith's tyranny. The Prism's tenant must be let loose. I've sought their freedom for eons. When the Prism went missing, I feared the worst. Instead, you've granted the opportunity I've so long awaited. All that remains is the key that unchains them. And I've found someone who I believe can provide it. Bring the prism to Baldur's Gate. I'll be waiting in a taproom called Shares's Caress. That is where we decide the fate of my people. Lazel, together we will break our chains and be Vlakith slaves no longer. I am no slave, just still Kithrak. The Undying Queen is my freedom. It is she who will purify me, and she who will ascend me! Lies, Lazel, every last one. There is no purification, no ascension. The Zaith Isk does not purify. It extracts memory and kills the infected. Nor does the Lich Queen glorify the ascended. She feeds on most all of them to grow her power and pursue godhood. Madness! You flood me with this... this heresy! I... I will hear no more of it. I served Flacketh the whole of my life. Learned her words, fought her battles, yet she names me her Sharlak. Your words carry truth. I will meet you in Baldur's Gate. Do not make me regret it. Lazel, I see Talakma gear in you. Sister in freedom. Together we will be our people's light. Take this. It is a Quanith, a psionic detector. The Queen's warriors hunt you. The Quanith will sound you out when you come near their portals. Hear its cry and prepare for battle or slip away. I should go. Vlakith's gaze pierces the seas and skies. She believes me loyal, and I can't afford her mistrust. Keep the astral prism close. Let no one take it from you. Slay any who try. Now to Baldur's Gate. I'll be waiting, Lazo. Vlakith Kasivim Hrath Krashet. Only in Vlakith may we find light. These were the first words I ever read on Tirsu Slate. But they are no mere aphorism. They are law. They are creed. The root from which the 10,000 protocols stem. Forsake one protocol and forsake Vlakith. Forsake Vlakith and be the blood and meat which sates her dragons. If Voss speaks true, if Ascension is a lie, 
If tadpole purification is a fairy tale, then I have not sinned against Flakith. She has sinned against me. I'd never thought Vlakith a tyrant, or me as a vassal. She was the source of my might, and I the envoy of her will. A warrior, a champion, a destroyer. But if Voss is right, and Vlakith consumes the Ascended to gain power, then I am no destroyer. I am mere livestock, bred to be harvested and devoured. Every Githyanki is a slave with a singular purpose. Not to cull the Geich, not to prevent their grand design, but to raise Vlakith to true godhood. I don't know. I can't know. And that drives me mad. At first, I thought them an illithid deception, a trick of the tadpole. But the dream figure is real. It lives in the prism. Vos believes they are the seed of Vlakith's demise and the agent of Githyanki freedom. And I believe he may be right. We'll meet Kithrak Vos at Charesis Caress in Baldur's Gate. Until then, be vigilant. Vlakith's eyes are upon us. Our hero thought but a treasure ahead, did not consider the peace of the dead. Through the dark he went creeping, and awoke what was sleeping. A new grave they dug, which he himself fed. Merely protecting my assets. I've grown quite fond of you, you know, in my way. I thought it only fair to warn you about the dangers ahead. <laughs> Intrepid as ever. It would be pointless of me to try to bar you from entering. But I can... set the scene, as it were. Prepare you for your role. Ah, I had an inkling that was one of your main motivators. Delighted to see it confirmed. You're welcome to give it your best shot, of course. It's just that, well, the man has proven to be more or less resilient to death, which is not the only obstacle you're likely to face. There is a stage down in the dark upon which a great drama has suspended itself in time. Its actors dwell there still, mired in the languor of their long, tired scenes. If you, however, through the dark, go creeping and awake what is sleeping, chances are many more graves than yours alone will soon be fed. Very well. There is a creature that lurks in silence and shadow. A creature who, like me, is very much of the infernal persuasion. Should it make its way out through the very doors you are about to brazenly swing open, you'll have unleashed a pestilence upon this realm. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. This creature and I go back a long way. I admit it would be in my best interest as well should it remain trapped in the dark. Or misplace its head, perhaps? I should not relish its reacquaintance. Let's leave it at that. You have it in you to author a thrilling finale, if... if you heed this warning.
Do not underestimate this opponent. At best, you will have the blink of an eye to strike. Strike first, strike true, defy the odds, for they are distinctly in its favor. That much I owe the bastard to concede. After all, if there is one rule I hold dear, it's that one must always give the devil his due. Me, Zarel, Minthara, whoever you are, leave. I shall carry out General Form's will alone. Not wanted, not needed, leave. Here lies Melodia Thorm, beloved wife and mother. A Armiel Tellere Manon here. An open tomb, empty. I'm sure it's not ominous in the trap. Mr. Shah's presence is near. Here lies Isabel Thorm. Follow my voice and prove your... A place of offering to the Dark Lady. May she embrace the entire world. A pleasurable shiver runs down your spine. You feel as if you've unburdened a troubling thought and forgotten it forever. in a dead, putrid skull, somehow hosting a tadpole amongst a squirm of maggots. Another presence lurks within, manipulating the corpse like a puppet. Ah, a friend, an uninvited friend. I do not request help. Join me and find out. I want to look at you with my own eyes. Stinking pile of ogre afterbath! The quakes herald the shadows. They found me.
And in one piece as well. Not just any true soul would have succeeded in following my path through this place. You should be pleased. You are a true soul. There is no excuse for you to not recognize your betters. But never mind. Your potential may in a way your ignorance. I am Balthazar. Chief Advisor to General Thor, and entrusted with a mission of utmost importance. Do you know what is at stake here? It comes back to you. Balthazar headed a monastic order that controlled a place called Amkethran in the deserts of Kalimshan. But he is long dead from what you recall. Oh, him. Yes. I decided to take his name for myself. After taking his rib bones. Suits me better, I think. But enough idle chatter. Keep to the matter at hand. You do know what's at stake here. Yes? There is a relic here. One which General Thorn desires. No, needs. I will retrieve it for him, and you will help me. Ignorant you may be, you've shown some prowess in scouting and combat by making it this far. This necromancer has Cethric's trust. Helping him could be just what you need to gain access to the man himself. Fine, if it'll spare me your bleating. The relic lends the general his strength, his invulnerability. It must be recovered before his enemies attempt to exploit it. I do not need you or your help, but you are here in spite of that, so I may as well make use of you. The relic is close. But the way is barred, and Shah's dead are uncooperative. Clear the path for me by blade, cunning, or whatever it takes. I will remain here until you have succeeded or fallen. I trust this gas bag about as far as I can throw him, which isn't far. But perhaps better to play along for now. I will assign flesh to aid you on your way. Ring this bell, and he will come. Mm -hmm. My brother is no intellectual powerhouse, but he is strong, loyal, and punctual. Should a fight turn against you, remember the bell. Flesh will remain here until called. But don't fear. He has very sharp hearing. I chose his ears myself. Now, get to work. entertainment but you're too fresh for this place aren't you there's a whiff of the surface to you holy shit an orphan powerful devils i wouldn't get on their bad side without a good reason you tiefling you've got the stench of the hells about you the stench of home and a whiff of the surface besides a servant of zaria if i'm not mistaken I'd know the stench of her infernal machinery anywhere. What do you know of infernal machinery? Only what I can smell. And whatever engine burns within you is grinding to an inevitable explosion. Burning and fear. <laughs> you reek with it. There's something else, almost hidden by your fear stink. Cherries. Musk. 
Alpha. Raphael! I can smell him all over you! Where is he? That perfume trickster swindled me! Trapped me! Where is he? Spit it out. Now! Go on. Tell the bastard. All the better for us if he keeps Raphael... busy. <laughs> Bargaining, are you? A Karator warlord once tried the same. I made him watch as I ate his concubines in young, then fashioned a codpiece from his skull. You can't help. It's not just walls that keep me here. Not the traps, the dark, or the creatures it hides. Something stronger holds me. A contract. Either I fulfill the contract, die trying, or forfeit my freedom. If I leave this place now, I'll become Raphael's slave. Spill all the blood swarm to the night. Silence or prayers smother each right. Wonder Shah's halls hungry to slay. Leave no justice here. Alive to obey. Leave none to hear it, then be set free. This song is your oath. Swear, swear it to me. Well, that explains where all the dark justices went. The final lyrics linger in your mind. There is a trick buried within them. A clause that cannot easily be fulfilled. That's it. So this was the war devil who slaughtered Shah's faithful. At Raphael's urging, no less. Asking why doesn't get me paid. Hunting and killing does. Raphael mentioned something about an Asima. Meant nothing to me. I did my part. I filled these halls with ghosts. But Raphael's playing some other game. One that involves stiffing me. Anyway, enough prattle. The lyrics are clear. All who hear the song must die. Time to die. Americans. They barely have a thought to share among themselves. But they do have ears. Kill yourselves. Back to the house with you. I still hear it. Seems your theory is wrong. Stay very still. My beauty. I still hear it! If you're wrong about this, I'll claw my way out of the furnace and eat you alive. Contract be damned. Nicely played, Raphael. Bastard. That silver tongue of yours is dangerous. Bravo. I can't believe you actually pulled that off. On the 
the altar is an inscription. Brave the gauntlet of your Lady Shah, surmount her trials, and rise a dark justicia. The gauntlet of Shah. This place is legendary. Even with half my memories locked away, I still remember the stories. The Dark Lady's finest warriors arose from this place. Now I'm here. There are recesses on the altar that look intended to house something. Another such receptacle already contains a gemstone. In order to join Lady Shah's elite, you had to pass her trials. Then make a sacrifice in her innermost sanctum. One revealed only when you've proven yourself. Very few made it that far. I've dreamed of this place. This is my destiny. I must complete the trials. What does it mean? It means we'll have power. Power we can use to take on the Absolute and rid ourselves of these parasites, once and for all. If I become a Dark Justicia, I'll have Lady Shah's highest blessing and her arsenal at my disposal. This will be good for all of us. Let's explore. The bowl contains an ancient rust-colored bloodstain. It forms a neat disc, as if spilled calmly and willingly. This is one of Lady Shah's trials. Allow me. It's important. the gentlest of presences disturbing the temple's ancient stale air it seems to encircle shadow heart welcoming her my lady Shah you may have felt her but I heard her she gave me a mission there is a holy weapon hidden away the spear of night I have to claim it, then use it to make a sacrifice in Lady Shah's inner sanctum. If I succeed, I'll become a dark justicia. Don't worry. This place has been empty for years. The sacrifice can't be a simple mortal. More likely it's a monster. And we're well versed in dealing with those, aren't we? We need to get that spear. There's a library in this place somewhere. That's where I need to look. Disc is moving. This must lead to the next part of Shah's gauntlet. Vanquish your own life to receive my wisdom. Ready for this. undertook their final preparations. The end is near. Deliver the Night Mother's mercy upon her enemies. 
trust your secrets to the night. Shroud yourself in blackest night. Dark justicia. This must be the last step. I need to pray. Only by Lady Shah's grace did we even make it this far. All right. No need to dash in ahead of me. I'm ready. Nothing. Just a show of respect. Trust me. You wouldn't want to displease her. Not here. Let's continue. Your party is gathered. You are ready. Or so you hope. As you step into the silent water, a foreign dread travels through you. It curls its way up your leg, squeezing tight. This is her domain. This is the Shadowfell. You did well. Better than I would have credited you with. Now, hurry along and bear witness to my masterpiece. This is the Dark Lady's domain. He does not belong here. Simple. I followed you. It seems Shah still holds a grudge against General Thorne, and so sought to prevent me from entering in his name. Luckily, you were the perfect agent in helping me slip past her defenses. Now the Night Song is within reach. Your lack of ability, perhaps? You made for an adequate errand boy thus far, but let's not overstate your virtues. Raise one finger to me, and I'd sunder you like lightning would a rotten oak. Now, enough dullard questions. Follow me. Lady Shah, hear my words of faith. Or perhaps to lead this would-be Justicia's blade directly to my heart. I invite you. Heap more sins upon your head. My retribution will be all the sweeter for them. All this time, and you still fail to appreciate the gifts I bestowed on you, Aileen. Sad. To see a thing of beauty not recognize its own worth. But General Thorn, he appreciates you, and he wants you close at hand. So, I am here to whisk you back to him. Ketherick. I welcome the sight of him after these hundred years. He whose immortality I supply with my very soul. General Thorn. I'm sure you'll be on your best behavior for him, but just in case, I've taken some precautions. Keep back. 
It will take quite some concentration to secure Aelin for her little journey. Person? Please. You insult her. You insult me. Aelin is so much more than that. She is an Asimar, bound to a soul cage of my creation and lending her immortal strength to general form. Her power, his will, and my genius. An unsurpassable feat. Ramblings most unsane. Poor Balthazar, for maggots ate his brain long ago. Hold your tongue, Aelin, or I'll take it away from you again. And you. No more questions. No more interference. Dead man, you haven't been paying attention, have you? Perhaps I'll revive your carcass and add you to my retinue. Then you'll have all the time in the world to think on your mistakes. Let us make short work of this. to put an end to your follies. Balthazar has drawn his final rancid breath. <laughs> A pity it was not my hand that brought it about. Instead, it was you. You, who have come to seek the praise of your wicked goddess. You, who have come to drive a dagger through my heart. Not a dagger, a spear. My Lady Shah's spear. Her fate is mine to seal, let me handle this. The fate you seal is your own. To be a dark justicia is to turn your heart from everything but loss. You will know no love, no joy, only servitude. Until, of course, your mistress inevitably discards you. And there is much she does not tell you. A terrible blood price that may extend beyond my own death. You feel Shadowheart bristling. This is important to her. But your bond is strong. You may yet be able to sway her from the path of duty to the path of light. And Nightsong is not blind to your conflict. Behind that raging heart is the restless beat of one who knows too well that her fate hangs in the balance. Cannot allow! This is my mistress's will, my life's purpose!
can't believe I did that. Shah will disown me. Now I'm truly lost. You were already lost, little warrior. A lost child, frightened by wolves. What did you say? Much has been promised to you, hasn't it? But what has been taken from you? What do you know of your own heart? Your own life? Lay a hand on me in friendship, not quite Sharon. And I will fight the battle that has been waiting for me this last century. Then, oh then, we will have much to discuss. Lady of Silver, hear me. She who guides the Moon Maiden Saluna, mother of the so called Night Song, the Night Song is no more. given me a great gift, little warrior. Don't you find it oh so curious that you would spurn your dark lady? Perhaps you feel a stirring of the truth already. But that will come later. There is a battle yet to be fought. You have done what we feared was impossible. You have released me from a century of sorrow. Your power is great. So too must be your weapon. You must choose what you will wield. And the Moon Maiden will provide. Thus I have said, thus will it be so. Are you ready? To kill Ketheric Thorn. to leave. Lady Shah won't stand for us to be here, not after what we did. That's what frightens me. She must be angry. Yet, I don't feel it. Or hear it. There's only silence. Let's get out of here, please. Whatever's coming, I don't want to be in the heart of the Shadowfell when it finds me. The Night Song will be headed for Moonrise Towers. We'd better get there and see what she's unleashed against Ketheric Thorn. What happened? You were missing for a moment. I... I thought I was done for. I thought perhaps I might have been dead. This... This is all like some sort of terrible dream. But it's real, isn't it? I stood before the Night Song, 
I heard Lady Shah's words, and I failed her. Worse than failed her, I defied her. Just because of what that Asimar said. I tried to leave, but Shah blocked me. Punished me for failing her. I thought I knew the limit of pain that the incurable wound could inflict, but... I had no idea. It felt like I was suffering the agony of a thousand people all at once. My blood was boiling, my hair was on fire. I thought I'd claw my own face off with the pain. But then she released me. Banished me, more like. She said I was an outcast. That all of her children would know me and revile me. Shadowheart looks distraught, abandoned by her goddess and all former allies. And as for her divine magic, admitting who empowers her now may break her spirit for good. I suppose I do, don't I? You've done more to help me than my faith has in recent times, if I'm honest. Thank you. There's been something between us for some time. A connection. More than friends. I recognized it, but didn't act on it. I thought my faith was the most important thing in my life. I couldn't have been more wrong. I've squandered too much time already. I want to be with you, now and always. Do you want the same? It wasn't too long ago that I could never imagine smiling again. Shows what I know. Night Song promised she'd tell me something about myself. I need to speak with her as soon as I can. What she said to me back in the Shadowfell about the wolves. That's no coincidence. She took flight to hunt down Kethrick Thorm. All I can do is help hasten his demise. And hope that answers soon follow. There you are. What's happening out there? Who was that streaking across the sky? An immortal. But it couldn't possibly be. Never mind. It doesn't matter. What matters is you have him in a corner. Jahira and every fighting body in this place have gone to Moonrise Towers to face Ketherick down. She's waiting for you there. End this. Now, we're all counting on you. I know the name. Paulson spoke of him. Something about the spirit of the land. The patient is physically well, but psychologically detached. Dissociated from himself. He's been in the Shadowfell. All memories will have been stripped away. We need to remind him who he is. Some personal effects, maybe? Hmm. <laughs> Daniel and me are Clive, Clive, climbing up a tree. We are fearsome, black and red. We are living, we are dead. Trapped there. He needs help. 
My loot? You got it back? How? You killed a thorn? The Ketherix elite, how did you... Never mind. He needs us. Needs our help. I've been lost in the shadows so long. And I met a boy there, too. Thaniel. He's the only reason my mind survived that... emptiness. That... <laughs> loss. He told me about someone he knew. Someone called... Hausen. A druid. Thaniel spoke of little else. Do you know him? was freed to find you. It's fate. You and I were meant to meet to save Daniel. Bring Halsen as soon as you can. The Shadow Fell is no place for a child. Especially a child like Daniel. You wish to speak? A survivor? Sylvanus blesses us. This could be just the person we need to speak to. I will go to see him at once. Join me when you can. You're Halsin. Thaniel said to find you. You must help him. Please. I will. But I need to know where Thaniel is. If I venture into the Shadowfell blind, I will never find him. I'm not sure I can... Put it into words. The landscape there shifts and changes. Lavender. Whenever I saw Thaniel, I always smelled lavender. I can work with that. Rest now. We have what we need to proceed, and not a moment too soon. A winged Asima flew overhead, and now an assault is brewing against Moonrise. I still need your help. Meet me by the lakeshore and be prepared. What comes next could prove perilous. You're here. Good. Now we can begin. Very well. Once I begin the ritual, a portal to the Shadowfell will open. One that will help me save Thaniel. Whatever happens, I must go alone. No. This opportunity has been a hundred years in the making. It has to be me. And only me. But I didn't bring you here to witness an old druid's grandstanding. You have a part to play in this. And I trust you will play it well. With the Oak Father's blessing, I can infiltrate the Shadowfell, but doing so will sap my strength. I'll need your help if I'm to return. I need you to stay here, keep the portal open until I return, and defend it at all costs. Good. Now it's important that only I pass through the portal once it opens. The magic is fragile, any mistake, and our one chance will be lost forever. It took me years of study, of seeking the Oak Father's favor to find a way to part the veil. Pray that this works. Oak Father, hear me. Aid me. Force open the jaws of darkness. Make passage for your vessel of light. It's ready. I'll return with Thaniel as soon as possible. Stay close to the portal. Buy me what time you can.
It's done. I have him. <sighs> but something's wrong. Dreadfully wrong. No. It can't be. Yes. I'll bring him back to camp. He'll be safest with us. I need to examine him. I need to understand what's wrong. It's almost like something's... missing from him. Come see us when you can, and be careful out there. Forces may be rallying against Moonrise, but Ketherick Thorm is most dangerous when cornered. I know from experience. Thaniel is resting, but it's no easy slumber. I discovered what's wrong with him. The shadows rendered him in two when they bore him away to the Shadowfell. Half of his essence remained here, amidst the curse. What stayed behind would have been the strongest part of him. But after all these years left in the darkness, corruption must have taken hold. It's both simple and not. We need to find Thaniel's missing half and make him whole again. Only the missing half may not come willingly. The curse will have sunk its tendrils deep, twisting Thaniel's essence into something else. And you saw this boy yourself. That can't be a coincidence, but we need to be sure. And I truly mean we, if you wish. Every moment counts, and I've asked much of you already without being at your side. If you want me, I'm yours. Against the curse, against the absolute... anything. Just say the word. I hear nature's symphony in this place. Now, it is quiet. Quiet and dead. I can make some animal noises, if it will make you feel more at home. You bleat well enough as it is. I won fair and square. There's no point in playing again. I want a challenge. Though shrouded in shadows, the child's resemblance to Thaniel is unmistakable. This must be his dark half, warped by the curse. Go on, find someone else to play with. Spoil sport. I'm not going back. I like it here. I made a family for myself. I get to play all the time. Not harder. Impossible. I don't want to play with you anymore. He's fled. We need to track him down. Wherever the curse is the strongest, that's where he'll go. That's where he'll feel safe. Made a grave mistake. You should have just left me alone! Spoil my fun! everything I've ever wanted, right here! And you've ruined it! I'm not leaving. You can't make me. Be gentle. He's much more than a child. But he doesn't truly know that. He's nothing to me. He left me here all this time. I had to do everything for myself. 
Even when it was scary, even when I was alone, I didn't give up. But would he even want me back? I've changed. A lot. So I wouldn't have to be alone anymore. He'd stay with me. Play with me. I'd like that. And he would too, I think. All right. I'll do it. I want to do it. Well done. Are you crying? You're a bit big to be crying. But I suppose that's okay. Bye. And thank you for playing with me. It's done, at last. Soon the land will be unshrouded. We should return to Thaniel when we can. The druid Halsin spoke to me while I was sleeping. He spoke of you. Said that you fought shadow and spite to restore me. The hundred years of sickness almost ended. I feel every root that riddles the earth beginning to unfold. But there is one anchor, still holding the shadows in place. The soul that brought it into being, for the land to heal. Catherick Thorne must die. Oakfather preserve you. It's true, and I can't imagine I helped with that. Sometimes I let the task at hand consume me, and people think I'm obsessed. Trust me, the day I no longer have to talk about the Shadow Curse will be a happy one. What would you like to know? I am? <laughs> Trust me, it's been said. You show more restraint than most in avoiding the subject until now. Who's to say? <laughs> Perhaps there's a half-orc buried somewhere in my ancestry. Or perhaps not. Sometimes I think conventional wisdom is too narrow about what someone can or cannot be. Stranger things have most certainly happened. Honestly, I never thought I'd make it that far. But the Absolute is a threat to all, and I promised I'd help you with your parasite. So, I'll remain with you. If you'll have me, that is. So do I. But one duty at a time. Unshackled from shadows. She will rise in moonlit glory and carve a path of brightness to the accursed one's second death. So saith the wise Alondo. That beacon of angelic wrath has taken the fight to Catherick on the rooftop, and the first line of defense are dead. But storming the tower won't be easy, and if we wait too long, Catherick will gather his strength and retaliate. For now, though, he's on the back foot for the first time since he returned from the grave. This is it. The spearhead moment. You brought us this far. So how shall we proceed? At the ready, Harpers! In this alight, there will be victory. In this alight, we will avenge the fallen! The time has come. Gatherick will taste of death at last. You dare show yourself here after all you've done? You have betrayed me. You have betrayed General Thorm. You have betrayed our god! And for what? These Harpers. Moonrise will be their tomb, and in death, you will all serve the Absolute. Boys, make this traitor bleed. Time for some bloody work.
by my hand. Catherick's been studying something called the Apostle, but of which God? That's curious. Letter from Catherick's wife. Sounds like she loved him very much. You. What have you done? What have you done to me? There is no redemption, can't you see? It is too late. If Melodia could see all I've done, she'd know. She'd know her husband died long ago with Isabel. Unlike Isabel, he could not be brought back. forgotten her embrace. Melodious. No saloons. But the Moon Maiden did not intervene when my life was dismantled piece by piece. And when I tried to buy it back, it cost me everything. Everything. We are copper pieces in their belts. Tokens to be traded for scraps. You have beaten me, true soul. But the gods beat me first. has come, and her sword is my sword. <laughs> Ketherick Thorne would sooner die than lay down his rank cause. Isn't that right, General? I was a fool to hesitate. Power like mine cannot be hidden, cannot be cowed. But power like mine has a price. A price I am destined to pay. You have one last chance to bow. Once it's gone, I'll have no choice but to destroy you both. Do you hear? My lord, 
beckons me. You must return to your prison, and my daughter must be reclaimed. Your daughter? Isabel. How can such a thing be possible? That thing came from below. We need to find out where it took Ketherick. The General will call that a tactical retreat, I'm sure. But you have him on the run. That thing he summoned was illicit. Follow it below and find him, before he has a chance to subdue the Night Song again. The hole yawns back at you, impossibly wide. A single tentacle burrowed through stone. The gaping abyss. You don't intend to jump, or do you? This must be where they harvest the tadpoles. We're close to the source of the infections. Tread carefully. We are very close to the source of the Absolute now. That telepathic storm has become a tempest. Mind flayers and civilians, side by side. And this must be where they infect and transform those they kidnap. Your tadpole forms a telep- Every mind flayer in the room calls out hungrily from its pod, seeking release and sustenance. But there are others in the pods, those not yet infected, not yet a lithid, terrified, desperate to escape. The device is open to your tadpole's command, to your authority. I didn't think I was going to make it. Thank you. I owe you an explanation. Much more than that. But first, please, the others, the ambush. Tell me they survived. You've heard some of it, I'm sure. That I froze, or broke, or some other lie that is kinder than the truth. We were ambushed by cultists, yes. And then I heard her, their false god, whispering promises in my mind. I would be a paladin again with a god's purpose, a god's power, everything I needed to protect my people. And all the while, the cult tortured them. They fought and ran and died around me while I imagined myself their savior. By the time I regained my senses, it was too late. I did not just surrender to the Absolute. For a moment, I welcomed it. I fell short of that mark in Avernus, and even so, it was not so bad as this. I won't make excuses. I can't make amends. But I know something of what you came to do. I want to help, if you'll let me. Ketherick is below. He thinks you're no longer a menace. Descend and show him how wrong he is. If there are any more survivors to be found, I'll find them and lead them out of this place. 
And you, my friend, and pathetic, inadequate as it is. Thank you. Brine pools, but empty of tadpoles. Unusual. Harvesting all the larvae indicates they are getting ready for something big. Mazora, you're Zariel's asset. My dumb little stinker. Took you long enough. Now, my Grazit's cock get me out of this thing. I'll do it, and you'll set me free. That was the deal. Yeah, yeah. So, get to it already. The controls are open to your tadpole's command. To your authority. You did all right, Will. I'd give your belly a good rub, but never could stand a smell. You're free, Mazora. I held up my end. Now you hold up yours. Sever the pact. <clears throat> <clears throat> Clause Z, Section 13. If the Soulbinder consents to separation, she will release the Soul Bearer from all obligation within six months. Six months? Gods damn you! Ignorant thing. It's always the terms and conditions that get you. And to think you want to throw it away. Now, you've got business in the towers to take care of. Don't you fret. I'll find you soon enough. You're going to need me. Count on it. Oh, and go ahead. Tell your chums how we met. It's a real cracker of a tale. Ta-ta. Zariel's asset was none other than Mazora herself. Of course. Tricks on top of tricks on top of tricks. But I've only got six months before I made a free man. Thanks be to the Triad. No, scratch that. Thanks be to you. Bring death. Embrace! General Thorm was attacked. The order to evacuate given. You should not be here. I conclude you are one of the attackers! Trying to pull rank? And yet not a word of concern for our dear General. I shall present your bones to General Thorm as retribution for what you did to him! into life, a mind touches your own. Alien and full of desperate need, but fragmented too. It is incomplete. It yearns to connect, but needs you to guide the process, linking each part of your mind to its like. Well, welcome back, Master. Uh, 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 uh. That should do it. Time to see what's back there. Our destiny, design, downfall. Your tadpole echoes, not with presence, but memory, tinged with loss. The grand design, order, perfection, unity. Being in their place. That 
darkness blooms into a sudden fury, burying claws in your mind. And just as suddenly, pain and memory are gone, leaving only stone once more. The grand design. The restoration of the Mind Flayer Empire. The dream of all Illithids. A whole fleet of Nautiloids. How many true souls have passed through this place? Is anyone else's tadpole squirming around more than usual? It's almost like it's excited by something. Drawn to it. No longer a background murmur. The presence in your mind builds to a roar. We found it. The Absolute is behind this door. You said it was under control. It isn't you I answer to, Gortash. Oh, the general voice. Is this where we salute? Salute, yes. With cleavers through his blood-starved flesh. How it crawls with failure. Like flies on lick-wet carrion. You forget yourself, Orin. I have played my part. You've built an army for our masters, true enough. But what of the astral prison? A rogue true soul flaunting it under your nose all this time, and you ran from him. Sure that they would follow and deliver it into my hands here. If you would cease these distractions. The distractions have been yours, Ketherick. Perhaps we never should have dug your daughter up. So you haven't lost your edge, but you're still not as sharp as Orin, I wager. The Slayer against the Undying One. That'd be fun to see. His crypt breath sings to my sinews again, 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 again. But he must lead the murder march to Border's grave. If the weapon is truly in your grasp, Ketherick, might I suggest closing your fist? Orin and I can wait for you no longer. The plan proceeds. We're going to the city and we expect you to follow, army and the weapon in tow. The Edict of Bane! The last of Thor! One of the cruelest and most powerful creatures in existence, enslaved by mere mortals. There we are. It wouldn't do to fight in front of our guests. Behold, Duke Ravenguard, the Absolute. Whom preserve us? You wag your word flap in vain, Alderling. Once the worm holds the whip, your shredded flesh will serve us. Shit, no! Father! Now, it's really time we were going. We will empty this place and begin the march. You may catch up with the army once you've retrieved the weapon. And Ketherick, do try not to sulk. You're supposed to be the fearsome general come to conquer the city. 
And I am the hero who will save it. It is time, faithful ones. March on Boulder's Gate. We go to prepare the way! There you are, as predicted. What is it, I wonder, that draws one toward death like a moth to light? You could have run away absconded with the prism. The one thing that could prevent me from fulfilling my destiny. But the lure of one's destiny is irresistible, isn't it? Perhaps you hope to learn your place in history before you are erased from it. A bright flash of clarity before the snuffing out. Finer champions than you have tried and failed. But perhaps they lacked the fear that drives you. Your freedom hanging in the balance. Let us speak plainly. My Lord Merkel gave me the one thing I desired. The one thing no other god could grant me. My daughter's life returned. Her heart beating once more. For that, he asked that I serve as his chosen. Join Orin and Gortash to grow the cult of the Absolute, and then take control of it. He's never had a more devoted follower. I have fought great wars before, in the service of other gods and other powers. But for Merkel, I would condemn all of Faerun to death. You are all that stands between me and my destiny. And you have brought the prism here. I will kill you now. And then I will raise you as my servant. Join the army of the dead, true soul. Witness Lord Merkel's glory. No time for mercy. Kill me. I am eternal. Merkel, Lord of Bones, I am here. I am ready. I am yours.
triad help us? What you learn? One life to my life. Sustain. Have my sword, my fealty. Do what you must, then we fly this foul place. In death, the body is cooling, but energy radiates from the stone. Remarkable. Truly. And now the picture comes together. The Absolute is neither God nor man. It is the Elder Brain you saw, held here by those three against its will. The crown it wears controls it, and these stones control the crown. It has been dominated. To master an Elder Brain, to subdue it, our enemies are formidable. A temporary reprieve, but a welcome one. With a brain on its way to the city, its influence here is weakened. The crown's markings suggest it was forged in Netherrealm. An ancient empire whose mastery over magic rivaled that of the gods. It is a crown of domination. The stones were taken from its crest. They are nether stones, imbued with the ability to control the wearer of the crown. The crown's netherese magic must be the true source of the parasite's abilities. This must be what elevates their potential. And it must be the reason nobody could heal you. If the Crown can do this to the Parasite, I dare not imagine what it is doing to the Brain. One of them I know, Lord Enver Gortash. An arms dealer and a slaver. A worshipper of Bane, the god of tyranny. The other is a mystery to me. But the way she spoke, it is most likely she follows Baal. God of murder. Ketherick was a follower of Merkel, which means the Absolute is a front for the gods of death, and our enemies are the chosen of the dead three.
Bane, Baal, and Merkel. The Tyrant, the Assassin, and the Necromancer. They are known to pick from their most devout followers, a Chosen, granting them incredible powers. Each one alone would be a formidable enemy. But working together and controlling an Elder Brain, I dare not imagine what they might achieve. Hope is a luxury for those who have a choice. This is the battle of our lives, and the lives of everyone in Faerun. The army of the Absolute is marching on Baldur's Gate. Within the city, an Elder Brain, brimming with power, ready to turn everyone within its reach into Mind Flayers. All it needs is an order. An order the Death Gods Chosen are on the cusp of giving. We must wrest control of the brain from the Chosen before that happens. We must take their stones. Our chances of success are slim, but we must not fail. If we fail, everything ends. I will be your shield, but you must be the sword. And when the chance comes to strike, you must take it, for there may only be one chance. Helen. Isabel! My love! You were dead! I saw your body! I'm here. And... and so are you. And my father, he... He can't hurt us any longer. I dreamt every night that you'd come back to me. That somehow it was all a nightmare Dawn would undo. I had no dreams at all. Nothing but darkness. And when I woke, my father said you were dead. His soul was poisoned by the god of death. His sick devotion ruined him. But for all his sins, he brought you back to me. Are you all right? I will be. And you? In this moment, I want for nothing. Ah, oh, there you are. This. Is Aelin. Aelin, this is... Oh, but we have met. This is the soldier that freed me most valiantly from the Shadowfell. They watched my boot crush the very brain of villainy, and fought well against your changed father. May he rest in peace at last, now that he's dead. I have more to thank you for than I knew, and we have much to discuss. Perhaps we could join you in your camp later? I am. And I'm glad he's dead. But this is precisely what I want to speak to you about later. It'll keep. I promise. Very good. We look forward to it. Now, you will leave us. We must take succor in one another's bodies and words. Aelin! We'll see you later. Gods be damned. With that parasite in his brain, Father could wreak untold havoc in the Absolute's name. Should Baldur's Gate fall to the Absolute, every one of the coast cities will be ripe for the plucking. We're not just fighting for our cure. We're fighting for my father. We're fighting for the Gate. We're fighting for all of Faerun. Worms Rock Fortress. All travelers to Baldur's Gate flow through it. It serves as headquarters for the Flaming Fist and their commander, my father. The Absolute's armies on the march. Gods forbid a tadpole Grand Duke throw open the gates for them.
Yes, but first, a question. If your home were under siege, what would you sacrifice to save it? As would I, and more. I was 17. Father, older Raven Guard, had just been named a Grand Duke and was called away to Elturel to help settle a dispute. That's when the Cult of the Dragon made its move. The Cult of the Dragon, a fractured religion. Some believers hold that undead dragons will inherit the world. Others worship the dragon goddess Tiamat and intend to summon her to Faerun. A ten day after Father left, I heard a whisper as I slept. Dusk Hawk Hill, the Queen of Chaos awakens. Go alone. I grabbed a rapier and set out. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, yet not a single star was shining. There they were, gathered at the foot of the hill. Your head tingles. Will wants to show you what happened in the looming shadow of the mount. Five groups of five figures, each encircle a lofty totem. Atop each totem, a dragon's head is carved, and a massive orb held in its mouth. The cultists chant, first softly, then crying to the starless sky. There is a crack of thunder, a gust of wind, and a dragon's white head appears in the storm. The first of Tiamat's five heads. As the maelstrom howls, Mizora's lips press to your ear. She will destroy Baldur's Gate. Grant me your soul and I will give you the power to save it. She whispers. She read the terms while two devils stood witness. And I said yes. One soul for one city. She didn't. She came on order of her mistress, Zariel. Tiamat made a play for power. Zariel had other plans. That was the most Mazora's ever said. All that mattered was that she got her prize. Another pet added to her warlock menagerie. I don't know that it was brave. I just know that it was right. The moment I agreed, I burned with the fires of Avernus and oozed the rot of Dis. The cultists choked on our poisons and burned from our flames. And when we were done, all that remained were five great orbs atop a pile of ash. My soul was bound, and my lips were sealed. It is the one scar I ever bore of it. Mizora replaced it with a sending stone. She uses it to track my location and speak from a distance. I could flee to the spine of the world or the depths of the lower dark and still never shake her. The shadows yet fester. The dead three united under cover of darkness. The balance shifts. There are depths to this alliance yet unplumbed. Consider, mortal. Do illithids possess souls? No. Nor canst thou count mind flares among them. Yet. The three amass an illithid army, void of apostolic souls that could imbue them with power. A flock without souls, yet to what end, mortal? This is the question thou must come to answer. Until such time, be availed of my services. Daniel rests well. 
He's healing very rapidly, now that Oliver has returned to him. I can't say for certain, but we'll see it come to pass long before this place recedes behind us. Don't worry. All is at hand. We can depart whenever you're ready. I knew I could put my faith in you. If only we had met sooner. No more than my right hand can absorb my left. Oliver is helping Thaniel to recover. They both lie dormant, like trees awaiting spring. Once the curse is lifted, they can stand as one or as a pair. Whatever they wish, I hope they will remain as a pair. It will be good for them both to have a friend once I'm gone. Still, I would like to return here someday. See Thaniel and Oliver again. In my meditations, or... Perhaps in person, if the Oak Father wills it. I hope he does. I have, but perhaps there is more that I want. Anyway, once the curse is lifted, nature can take its course without me. I belong at your side. And I'm glad to be had. Glad to be with you, I mean. There you are. I was wondering where the devil you'd been. Who? Oh, right. Well, forget about that, McGungus. We have more important things to worry about. Like Walbrin. Oh, forget about that. Wolprin and the Iron Hand Gnomes are planning something dreadful in the city. They have room powder, they have motive. We have to stop them. With the sword of justice in one hand and the shield of self-righteousness in the other, we most certainly will. To saving the city. And my fool of a friend. I owe you an apology. Barkas and I are another matter. I'm dealing with you right now. I saw you as a means to escape, nothing more. But when the sky lit up, when I followed it here, I knew you were behind it. I apologize for not seeing your true worth. And for being, quite frankly, rude in Last Light. I wasn't sure you would. I appreciate it. And that's precisely why I want you by my side in Baldur's Gate. The Iron Hand Gnomes are going to save the city. And you can be part of it. The plan is what it's always been to bring the work and innovations of the Iron Hand Gnomes to every corner of the realm. Problem is, Baldur's Gate is sick. Once the pinnacle of greatness, it's eating itself alive to save itself from starving. Find me in the city. And once you see what it's become, you'll know that I, and I alone, can stop it. We leave the heart of the Absolute alive, thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick, but Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. You have the makings of a leader. Your actions have already inspired those around you. Jahira's wisdom will be an asset to you on the journey ahead. Her harpers, too. Halsin's strength and loyalty will bolster you in times of need. But if we are to succeed, we will need others. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Baldur's Gate may not know it yet, but its fate is bound to ours.
Seek on its streets those whose purpose aligns with our own and invite them to our cause. Together, we will put an end to the Absolute, the Chosen, all. The psionic detector is sounding. Vlakith's warriors are upon us. Where Wargaz failed to kill you, I won't make the same mistake. As if. I will take the artifact. Oh, my queen! Us was right. The Quan had alerted us to the hunters. It is as we knew. My people have turned their blades against us. They will emerge from the shadows and descend from the skies. And we will grant them their only just fate. Death. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me. Ketherick Thorm, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, Most High. Darling Isabel is safe and well. Safe and well and return to my embrace. Blessings upon the Slayer of the Wicked One. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I am pleased to hear it. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Do I not radiate with my mother's brightness, her glory? There can be no doubt. I am of her silvered flesh, her celestial womb. Why, she already has. She has brought her sword to your side, Dame Aelin. So mighty are her wonders, her great wisdom. Together, we will set this fair land free of tyranny and murder. <sighs> Ketherick Thorn, father of my one and only love, enslaver of Dame Aelin. <sighs> Ketherick Thorn never did trust me, even when he worshipped the Moon Maiden. He was threatened by my love for Isabel, by her love for me. When she died, curse the day, the hour. We each of us mourned bitterly, but Ketherick's pain could be touched by no aid, no boundary. He turned to wretched Shah, the Lady of Loss, for relief, and she whispered into his ear, poisoning his mind. He and his loathsome advisor, Balthazar, lured me into the Shadowfell. Claimed they'd found someone in need of my aid. There, they trapped me in their infernal cage. I was killed, murdered, made dead over and over and over by justicias of every make and kind. I was reborn, for it is my nature. And Ketherick fed upon my immortality all the while. But lo... The Brute is dead, and we, we live! I can't believe it. I can't believe Aelin is here. And my father. I heard what happened. What he'd become. By killing him. You set him free. You set Aelin free. And me. A great deal. But still, some of the details elude me. K 
Ketherick Thorm is, was, my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? That's exactly it. And I tell you, I took one look at her and I just knew she was it. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... And this is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how, why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. I didn't know that then. But I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now. Said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak. Could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them, and myself, no matter what. It's all out in the open now, and with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing, rest. I'm grateful for your help, your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long, but I'm grateful for a safe place to, well, just to be. You saw Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? I'd never have protected a Bainite even a decade ago. I looked after that fucker with my life. I trusted him. He gave me away to Zariel without a second thought. And now he's looking to ruin the entire Sword Coast! He has to die! And I'm gonna be the one who kills him! He can't get away with what he's done to me, to us. He won't get away with it. Guy named Gortash, politician, inventor. One of these wheeler dealer types who seems to have a finger in every pie. I guess I was naive to think everything he got up to was above board. What did I know? I saw a job, a good job, with people I liked, doing work I was good at. Sometimes I'm jealous of that girl. Oh, to feel so invincible again. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, <laughs> brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work, guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I like that. Not like that, you know. Just, it felt like a good fit. I kept him safe. And he paid me well. Well enough to move my folks into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future, 
I respected him, trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in Avernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed, said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil monster. You did it. Catherick Thorm is no more. The Shadow's grip is broken. Soon, the land shall heal. It is. But mine is just beginning again. Soon. This will be a place of sunlight and greenery again. With birdsong, honoring your triumph. Nature moves at its own pace. And bestows its bounty when it sees fit. Give it time. A reward shall come to you. When you need it most. What do you know about me? You spoke of my past being chased by wolves. I told no one about that. Almost no one. But I certainly didn't share that with you. There is nothing I can tell you that you do not already know yourself. They trained you well, trained you hard. Chiseled away any part of you that did not fit their plan. They made you forget. I chose to do that. For the mission to protect Shaz... Secrets. Yes, yes, that is an old song, girl. Your goddess cares more for her precious secrets than she does her devotees. Get to the point. When you freed me, you severed a bond between me and that dog, Thorm. A bond of pain. His, inflicted on me. When I laid eyes on you, I sensed a similar bond. You, tethered to two others. Someplace distant. Let me help you remember. You feel Shadowheart's mind tug at the edges of your own. You know this sensation. She wants you to see whatever is about to be revealed. Your mind joins with Shadowheart's. Something pulls at you both, bringing you elsewhere. Remember that it is a common right among Saluna's followers to send their children off into the woods to find their way home. Perhaps this time it had gone awry. It seems that one child never came back. She was taken. What? Who was that man? You already know. Did you not see yourself in him? Do you not recognize your own blood? My father. That was him. That is him. He lives still. And your mother, too. No. It can't be. I'm an orphan. And who told you that? Your adoptive family? You are not to blame. You were young. Impressionable. They took you because they wanted to break and remake you. But you are a child no longer. You are a woman. 
One who knows what must be done. My parents... I need to save them. Your parents are with your abductors. You will need to return to their lair. But be warned. You may have once thought of them as comrades, mentors, friends, even lovers. They will all be enemies now. You have been forewarned for what is to come. But not yet forearmed. I was able to retrieve it before it sank too far into Shah's umbral domain. Shah is quick to discard whatever she has no use for. I think you know that well enough. But I felt it call to me as I took flight. Whatever Shah calls her own, Saluna has equal claim to. They are one and the same. Their power is matched and mirrored. Take it. You will find it useful. What you do with it, that will be up to you. Same as before. I'll need every advantage, it seems. Thank you. A debt repaid. You returned my life unto me. Now go and claim your own. <laughs> it hurts. Shah torments you still. What a spiteful creature she is. This will not stop until you take action. See that your parents' sacrifices are not in vain. Allow the Moon Maiden to guide you at last. I've been lied to. My whole life. And I was gullible enough to just believe it. My parents are alive, and I have to save them. I think a part of me always knew that. A part that Shah denied to me. Thank you. But I want you to refrain from foolish heroics. When the time comes, we'll be entering a nest of vipers. I couldn't bear to lose you. Not after everything. We'd better press on for now, and hope we're ready when the moment comes. But before that, there's one thing I need to see to. Be honest. What do you think of the new look? I'm glad. Though, I don't think I'm quite done with the past yet. Not until I've been to Baldur's Gate. The curse has been lifted, the lands cleansed of the shadows. Cethric's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this at least, you have triumphed. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Wern's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. 
patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to peel you. To split your skin. To see your skull shine in the light. Little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at High Sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of Mind Flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. Hear me. <laughs> <laughs>
Supreme Guardian. I'm here. Help me. I'm under attack. It's not over. Come to the skull. Hurry. I can't hold them back alone. against the Absolute. I must subdue him, or everything we've worked towards is lost. Don't let my form deceive you. I am the one that's been protecting you. I am the one that came to you in your dreams. saved a child from a viper, back in the druid's grove. You saved the Asima night soul from her soul cage. You let me live last time you were here, though it brought Black Eith's wrath upon you. I told you about my room in the Elsong Tavern, that night when you held me. I was vulnerable. You comforted me. Your Continued existence as yourself, and not a mind flayer, should be all the proof you need. Now, help me! The God. Destroy the God. They prevent me from subduing their master. Do it now! Together, we can turn. Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. You may call me the Emperor. An adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate. Though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance, I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. the absolute I was a thrall like any other but I was fortunate I broke free and started a new life in my old city 
I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillman. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain, where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call me Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall. Prince Orpheus, son of the first leader of the Githyanki. Orpheus? Impossible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus' mother to bring about the fall of the Elithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus' mother left, the usurper took her place. Vlakith declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlakith wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prism. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my home on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. I don't understand. The histories claim the prince was burned to ash in the skies. Your histories are fabrications. The prince was not killed. As you can very well see, he was imprisoned. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside, and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. 
All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid. A sworn enemy, just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel. But the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance. I already had to hand in the form of magic, and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. I felt that. It's your nature. You cannot fight it. So embrace it. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A tadpole. Nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia, it has become extraordinary. A wave of disappointment, stronger than any you've ever felt. And then, stillness. You have resisted your lithid instincts. For now. You are not ready yet. Keep hold of it, then. Until you are. It has enough vitality to further your evolution. And your allies. Perhaps you will be more inclined to try it when you see more of what our enemy can do. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain and bring it under our control. Orpheus, Gith's only son. He lives. It is not the Gaith visitor that Vlakith would destroy and Vos would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. And even more powerful still. It said he could bring a thousand Githyanki to their knees with one command. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Lacketh. Long ago, when we rose up against our Gith slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, 
and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Our current Vlakith has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlakith I. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshas teach us. Yet the prince of the comet's been with us, subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlakith's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. We meet Voss in the city, and we obtain the key to freeing Orpheus from his prison. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our Geich slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. So, we owe our lack of tentacles to one of the very creatures that kidnapped us. And now it's offering us power, if we're willing to... evolve. The gate is closed. As is Casador. And we are no closer to knowing why that bastard is so obsessed with getting me back. I think we should track down my fellow Spawn. I'm not exactly looking forward to a reunion, but perhaps they'll know something. If we can find them, we can force them to tell us what he's been doing since I was gone. And honestly, I imagine they'll be coming for me in the night if I don't. Shadowheart walks a little freer of the shadows. She could shave her skull and paint it purple. It would still suit her. That speaks well of your taste. I've heard my share of bad ballads about things I never did. If you have questions, ask. Just don't expect my answers to rhyme. It was Baal alone we faced in our time. And bad as that was, he had no elder brain for a lapdog then. Help won't come from the history books, or from any old tales I can spin you. This is your story to write. <laughs> there. Have I fulfilled my role as your wise and wizened elder? Don't tell me which. Against all life experience, I will choose to assume the best. will be watching, no doubt. Waiting for my return. We should do what we can to find them. What they know could help us. Watching gods. But I never thought I would be happy to see this city again. <laughs> Much less to smell it. The Harper safe house I spoke of is on the bridge at Worms Crossing. Danthelon's dancing axe. Information. The Chosen have a head start on us. We'd like to know what they've done with it. Um, excuse me. I can't find my mum. She was, um, she was sick. She had spots on her face and hands. She went to go get some herbs, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Wow. Thanks. 
My mum would like this. She's the best cook in the world. And she taught me too. I'll, um, I'll look for her. I think she'll probably come soon. Thanks a lot. Stand back. You're in my house. The place was empty. Keep those thugs away from my family. Denuvia! Get these spotters out of my house now! Arthur, sweetheart, you paid me and my boys to be caravan guards, not cattle wranglers. If you want us to get our hands dirty, it'd be our pleasure. But that'll be extra. I just want to remove these unlawful interlopers from my property. I can't let them stay here. What if the little frat gets into the basement? My basement? Oh, nothing interesting. Just materials. I'm a craftsman, you see. This man is definitely lying. And he's really hoping you don't pry any further. Look, I have some very valuable components in there. I need to get that lot out before they damage something. Who do you think you are? Zenobia? People are lining up to break into my property. Do something about it. You paid us to protect you and your high-quality merchandise on the road. And we've since arrived at our destination. As I said, anything else is extra. Ugh. This is the last time I hire someone from the guild. Fine. Here's the extra. Finish the job. Strike hard, strike fast. <laughs> to lose. You see, those animals are out of the picture. Can we stay now? Or are you going to turn us next? I don't want to take charity from some stranger. But... I will. For the sake of my daughter, thank you. We'll get going as soon as we've got our things together. Finally, those awful squatters are gone. I can feel everything unclenching already. I've got so much to do now, I'd really better get on with it. Excuse me, would you? Go away. That might be worth a look. It's as ruined. Looks like a trap there. Might be worth checking Arthur's donations. Looks like his generosity's compromised. Look, I really don't have time to chat. I'm sure you can find someone less busy to listen to somewhere. Sinister? <laughs> Nonsense! Those are experimental toys, guaranteed to bring a smile to the face of even the unhappiest child. They're extremely precious, and you shouldn't be poking around in my workshop and tampering with them. Really? There's no this? And nothing to get to the bottom of. Please just go home. You're ruining a perfectly uneventful posting. The flaming fists are supposed to protect this good city, but they allow trash and vermin to take our homes and goods. You, 
You're a true Baldarian, I can tell. You must understand why we need to keep these strays out of our city. Another bleeding heart. Piss off and take it elsewhere. And we won't... Oh, gods. Not another protester. Go talk to Nestor if you must. I've got plenty on my plate with these mewling geese. That's an order. Why don't you protect us? Donations. I'm gonna let you through because I don't want to take any risks. But you better not be lying. Is everything all right, Manip Nestor? Sir? There's been a report of dangerous contraband in the donations, and we're going to check it out. Why? All these goods have already been checked in. I didn't ask for your opinion, Fist. Fall in and do your job. Careful. There's a trap here. You were right. Explosives. Now give me some room. I need to make sure the rest of these donations are safe. You try and find whoever is responsible for this. Hail, friend. Fine day, isn't it? Forgive me, you're in no mood to talk about the weather. Your journey here was a hard one, no doubt. Is this your first time in Baldur's Gate? It's a fine city, isn't it? No better place to hail from. Used to be you'd arrive knowing you had a full belly and a warm bed waiting for you. Not anymore. These days, there's barely enough to go around. I had the refugees on top and well. Folk aren't feeling too generous. Tensions? That's putting it mildly. Some well-to-do's in the city donated enough to see the newcomers right for the time being. Only they didn't bother helping everyone else. Locals going without while strangers feast. It stoked the fire, all right. Some Baldarians are kicking up a fuss round the front of the barn as we speak. If I wasn't wearing this uniform, I'd walk round there and teach them a lesson they'd never forget. What peace. If no one steps in, there'll be bodies piled high in the streets before long. Those refugees have been leeching on our city for too long. If we don't show them that we mean business, they'll bleed us dry. We need to march round the front and kill every last one of them. Let's see them eat our food with their guts on the floor. What do you say? Tell them! I'll cut out their eyes and make them watch! So, you're the Lick Spittle who crushed the Bone Lord's thrall. Have you come b begging, sniffing for our stones? Gortash won't like that. A throat his black hand can't choke the spit from. You'll need to bleed and carve this city if you want to turn him to grave meat. He shivers at the thought. <laughs> when you find the Lordling, tell him Oren is watching. Orin is a shapeshifter. How long has she been watching? So Bell's Chosen is a doppelganger. <sighs> I should not be surprised. They have ever been among his favorite servants. Orin is testing you. Either she thinks herself a predator, playing with her food. Or she fears what you might do. Good. Shapeshifting monstrosities of unknown origin. Doppelgangers are unnatural predators. Her latent empathic ability is helping them to know, imitate, and eventually replace their prey.
Exactly. Hmm. The last time I fought doppelgangers, the Balspawn Saravok was using them to subvert the city government. Aid his rise to power. But Orin... ...is more predator than politician, I think. She simply wants to make us feel... ...hunted. Isolated. Tell the Lordling that Orin is watching. Seems that... ...Gortash and Orin have had a little falling out. We should leverage that. I just lost a wager. Who are you? Someone who bets that you'd never be foolish enough to actually show your face in this city again. But here you are. And the gold in my purse is soon to take flight. I can't help but feel the strangest twinge of disgust as I look upon you. Is it true? Has Our Lady forsaken you? I have... strayed, it is true. But I have returned to make amends. I will put my fate in the Mother Superior's hands and trust that Lady Shah will guide her. Bold of you. Brave, even. Though, do not assume passing admiration will translate to mercy when you kneel before the Mother Superior. Now I must report your reappearance. If you are intent on bringing matters to a head, then seek out the House of Grief in the Lower City. Though, if I was you, I'd be very tempted to just forget it all and disappear. You have some form of doing so, after all. Haven't you got anything better to do with your time than harass innocent craftspeople? What? How? Nine hells. Whatever you think you know, I, I, I'm sure some gold would help you to forget. I'm just a simple toy maker, an artisan. I don't know anything. They would have killed me if I refused to rig the toys. And they're definitely going to kill me now. I can't tell you. I won't tell you. All right, all right. Just don't hurt me. The teddy bears were an experiment. My greatest invention. A clever little device in their chest allows them to speak. But there's more. Smoke powder inside the device. I collect packages from Veloga's fireworks in the lower city and stuff the bears with it. Not because I want to. Because I have to. <laughs> Otherwise they'll kill me. I don't know who's in charge, but it starts at the fireworks shop. That's where the packages come from. Go there. Tell them Uncle Fologia sent you, and they'll show you the smoke powder. Lots of it. There. I told you what you wanted to know. Now, will you let me go? His plea comes with an offering. A pass granting you access to the lower city. again. No incapable. Not for you to know. Well, come close, your mind to mine. <laughs> Satisfied? Keep quiet, and you won't have to find out. 
good little hero. Though, perhaps your better nature would extend a little further for little old me. I need to get into the city, but it's hard to shuffle your way to the front of the queue when you're, well, big as an ox. But what if I was smaller, more discreet? Maybe then a kind soul might bring me through. Right in their little pocket. Ooh. This day has ended so much better than it started. Now, you don't worry about me. I'll be a good, quiet little apple you can tuck into the corner of your pack. Just until we're inside the city walls. Hail, Cyric! I can't wait to get inside. Dad, what's that monster? That's just a man in a costume. Self cheese! Between his piggy toes! How dare you! What in the hell is all of this? A necessity, good sir. The Steel Watch loves pretending sweet Rivington doesn't exist. So we have decided to protect you, dear patrons. <laughs> no need to thank us. You'll be allowed in once I've done this batch. Next! Hello, hello, and welcome to the Circus of the Last Days. The finest extra planar circus there is. Oh, uh, this is Benjamin. Say hi, Benji. Me! Benji here checks all our patrons to make sure none of you are vicious murderers. <laughs> Can't be too careful. But enough of this. The circus is a place of joy and distraction, so uh, come inside and forget your worries. Not a problem, dear patron. Benji just has to check if you're a vicious murderer. Benji? <sighs> ah! Brain juice smells like piss and iron! No like. Oh, well, that's a first. Usually I'd allow you in, but in these times, I can take no chances. Move along. No circus for you. Oh, damned if I'm not a sucker for big eyes and a heartfelt plea. Very well. Welcome to the Circus of the Last Days. Have fun and be sure to catch the star of our show, Dribbles the Clown. Then let's go inside. No. The city of stone and steel is an endless scream in nature's womb. I have felt no peace here. Until now, your eyes, Stira. There is pain, endless and deep, but also devotion, blazing like the sun. You're in love, are you not? You are wise to admit it. When it comes to love, vulnerability is armor. Truth, a sword, and trust, a shield. I pray you wield all three, Stira. Bring the one you love to me. I will look into your hearts and see if your love is eternal or doomed eternally. You can't hurt, I suppose, unless you embarrass me. Then you might find yourself hurting in a whole manner of ways. Close your eyes, little ones. Be still as stone to earth. And remember to breathe. I 
I see you. I see the bond between you. So tender. So fragile. But do you see it for yourselves? Shadowheart. An endless storm surges behind sharp eyes. Listen. Think. From where does Shadowheart draw comfort on a cold, dark night? Well put. Though I'll forgive a middling wine so long as the company makes up the difference. Hear how your bond thrums with pleasure. Strong. Vital, pulsing with affection. The heart craves comfort, but needs respect. How does one earn the dark-haired maiden's respect? Very good. Just don't say it so loud. The sweetest loves dance lightly on the tongue. But now we must dig deeper into the most painful reaches of the spirit. Shame sits in the soul of all. To tame it, we must name it. Shadow Heart, what is her deepest shame? I didn't think a little game would sting so much when I agreed to this. But you're right. A perfect score. I'm flattered. Have you been studying up on me every night at camp? How close you are. Two hearts beating a perfect rhythm. But I know the truth. Only one face haunts your dreams each night. Close your eyes, sweetness, and she will come to you. Oh, still rolling in the muck, I see. Gortash knows you are coming. Knows you have the Bone Lord Stone. Do not let him hiss hot air into your worm weak. Oh, your bond will not save you. He will wrap its cord around your neck and make you swing from it. Remember, his throat spits lies, but my blade carves the truth. You will read it on your skin soon enough. She's toying with me. What does she want? Ah! Lucille! It's Pose, Grapevine, then Pivot Step. Jacob, you have the grace of my great-grandmother's missing leg. Ah! And Boris, Boris! Put some sensuality into those lovely hip bones. I know you have it in you. Step it up. Interrupting a massacre? Merkel, help me. These three make the art of dance look like a ritual sacrifice. Call me Lucretius, ringmaster, necromancer, bringer of the night. Oh, and wine lover extraordinaire. Normally, I'd invite you into my tent for a lovely vintage. But these graceless skellies need my full attention. Enjoy my circus, darling. <laughs> Buddy the dog is my very best friend. Do you know why? Why? Because with him, anything is possible. Way!
Between you and me, I love a good clown. And Dribbles is the best. Did you hear about the Scarecrow who lost a fight? He got the stuff in, kicked out of him. Wahey! Oh, you're all such good friends. I've had a wonderful time, but I have to go. Oh, oh well, if you insist. <gasps> How about a magic trick? But first, I need a volunteer with nerves of steel and the heart of a lion. Who will it be? Who? The hair on the back of your neck raises as a shiver passes through you. You, my special assistant. Come on up. A round of applause for the stalwart heart! <laughs> Go on, have your fun. You won't regret it. Now, I always tell children that they're special that each and every one of them is unique. You notice the clown reaching for something behind his back. Tell me, what makes you special? Boring! Boring! Anyone can do that! You, my friend, are the most special person in the circus, in all of Baldur's Gate! Does anyone know why? Why? You're special, my friend. Because I have a message just for you. Praise the absolute. You sense something behind you. Instinct takes over. Is that a bleed? This part of the show? Praise the absolute. I always knew I Ganger, not so good. <laughs> oh dear, screaming children and oozing corpse, and it's not even my birthday. I thought the absolute wouldn't dare set foot in my circus. To use such a woeful dribbles impersonator, why it's downright rude. As much as I love a good murder, my customers don't. The real dribbles, charms animals and makes puns. Awful puns. Not this. Alas, I cannot afford to lose any more staff. Funerals are so very expensive. I need to move the circus. But I cannot leave just yet. Not without dribbles. He was a star. Customers of every color and creed simply adored him. I need him back, and I'll shower the person who finds him in love, adoration, and adequate compensation. What do you say? That's the spirit, darling. And remember, I look after those who make me happy. Hmm? Good luck, and thanks ever so much. Papa sells good things! Oi! Give that back! It's my special hand! I found it by the clown man's tent! Fought a rat for it and everything's... 
It's a, a one-of-a-kind hand with artisanal bite marks. It's worth lots. All right. Mama Lucretia says we family. Suppose that means Dribbles was too. Yeah. But don't tell nobodies I gave it to you for free. Got to protect my reputation as a tough business lord. Here we be. Take me to my cherished chair, and I reward shall be plenty. Look, Investigator, Brilgor might have been a criminal, but he was no murderer. You're missing something. You have to be. Enough, Yanis. Listen to yourself. You are defending a man who ritually slaughtered your high priest. The evidence speaks for itself. Brilgor killed Father Lorgan, then, be it out of shame or profane duty, offed himself with the same blade. Case closed, Sister Yanis. Shitey little elephant. Oh, um, I apologize, stranger. Language like that hardly befits a rector of Ilmata. You could certainly say that. Two people just died on temple grounds. A high priest, Father Logan, and one of the new refugees, Brilgor. Investigator Valeria thinks it's a murder and is content to blame Brilgor, the politically convenient target. Feel free to look around the temple, but fair warning. The investigator won't change her mind without significant new evidence. Valeria never found the murder weapon, so that could be a start. Anything disproving the refugee murder suicide angle, really. I've nothing against Father Lorcan. We let more outsiders in and more Baldurians die. Duke Stelmane, Father Lorcan, it's no coincidence. We have faith here, Bill. Faith in people, no matter where they're from. Who had more faith than Father Lorcan? How did that work out? Exactly. Logan let a killer into our temple due to his misguided compassion. His faith got him murdered. Bill, I beg you, be quiet. Even sinners receive Ilmater's grace, and Father Logan knew that. We don't pick and choose who we aid. Thank you, stranger. I take some solace knowing that he died in Ilmater's service. Does Ilmater's service involve protecting heretic absolutists? Or perhaps I missed that sermon. Enough, Bill. You seem a kind soul. Our temple is open to you. Walk well. What ails you? Marsh fever? Feather lung? Be quick, I've not got all day. What do you want to know? I reckon Investigator Valeria is right. One of the refugees killed him. Cruelly, too. They cut off his hand, sawed right through the bone. I found a paralytic poison on one of his wounds. Logan was alive while they took the hand. He just couldn't scream. It's sick. We give them everything, and all we get is nothing but a good man to bury. In the corpse regards you lifelessly. Dwarf, dressed in red, hiding Brilgor from fists. A poison blade, paralysis. To 
him to the tunnel with the rest of fool. Must protect innocence. He'll make us will. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. A crypt. This must be where Shira Clarwin is buried. Here lies Sister Shira Clarwin. Date of birth unknown. Died 1491 DR. Here it is. The tomb of the amulet spirit's granddaughter. Time for a family reunion. <laughs> Faithful to the crying god, long didst I wait, only to find thine empty flesh. Oh, 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 oh. honored Shira, her spirit hath fled, and her body but merely a husk. <laughs> Swear I did to shed this foul mania and bestow it upon Shira. She was to endure, to suffer, as was her god Ilmata's want. Who now shall bear the madness Shah has wrought on me, so I might no longer suffer? Oh, 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 oh. Shall it be thou? The monk himself holds your answer. Tasha's hideous laughter is a powerful skill, but earning it may come at the cost of wisdom. <laughs> well, if laugh I must, let our alliance end on a lark. It's my way. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it had to end like this. A torturous fate by any measure. Kill them! Let's kill the victims openly now. The colorful torso torn and butchered. Hello, dribbles. So much blood. Must be where Father Logan was slaughtered. That's it! Proof that Valeria missed something. They'll have to listen to you now. If you can convince them of Brilgor's innocence, then perhaps Ilmata could shed one less tear this day. Brilgor fell to anger and rage, taking Father Logan with him. May Ilmater forgive him. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Dwarf. Red clothes. Stranger. Father Lorgan. Helping me. Fists. After me. Needed to hide. Pierced. Once. Paralyzed. The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions.
before you lies the unconscious body of a mind flare, glistening and raw. A newborn. Unattended. How fortunate. Oh, but it is. This one has only just transformed. It is weak, vulnerable, its potential ripe for harvesting. Go on, kill it, absorb its power, just like you did before. Come no closer, you. You. What are you? What am I sensing? You are like me. Like I was. A vessel yet to transform. Help me. I am so hungry. My vessel. He fought the transformation. He found it excoriating. I can still taste his terror. It is delicious, but will not sustain me. We need to feed. We need a brain fresh and frantic to restore our strength. I shall be here, waiting for your return. Curtail your sympathy. We wish to destroy the Elder Brain, not nourish its doors. Another quake? What's going on? It's the Elder Brain. There's something happening to it. But the bombs we share, and they are stronger than ever. Just wait for the next. Rechtei hathran rust. My friend from the Hag Swamp. You join us as we honor our fallen dead. You're a bright light on a dark day. Even you, my erstwhile quarry. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> hello again. Frey, Valdisk Durovna. Frey, Valdisk Ablast. I feel we're intruding. We should leave quickly. Calm yourself. You will not be harmed. Our leader has called off the hunt. She wishes to speak to you. Im orak nete. Trasin netra. So, the impossible spawn walks among us in the blazing sun. We have been looking for you. The last time your friend came to our camp, he stole our children, our future. When I was hunting you, I was to bring you back here, interrogate you, discover how to save our children, and then destroy you. But things have changed. You have changed. Is it true you left your master? That you broke the spell that binds you to him? Well, I, I mean, uh, kind of. It's a long story, honestly. Free. Not while his master still lives. But he has, perhaps, earned a second chance. We have tried to save our children once already, attacking Kazadorzar's palace at first light. Even then, it was too well defended. But if his own spawn approached, someone he thought he could control, he would throw his doors open and welcome you in. And once inside, you could do what we could not. You could save the children you damned. You don't know Casador like I do. He's merciless. You want me to march into the lion's den and save your children? But I promise you, they're already dead. I spent 
Two hundred years, bringing him victims! Each and every one was whisked away to be fed on that night. But you never saw him feed yourself. He could keep prisoners for days before killing them. I know our plight is grim, but if there is even a chance to save them, we must take it. If our children are truly gone, then we ask for blood. I know you can understand that, Spawn. I suppose. Yes. Yes. Revenge. I can do. Thank you. From me and all my people. If you can do this, we will be in your debt. You have lived a life of violence and sin. You have stolen lives, broken families, and caused immeasurable grief. Doing this will not right those wrongs. <laughs> If you're trying to encourage me, you're failing abysmally. But it will be a start. You may still be redeemed. Please go. Time is short, but we will see you again when it is done. Welcome to Sword Coast Couriers. To send and to serve. Delivery not guaranteed. Well, we've had to change the policy. Hard to send letters by road when there's a rampage and army of fanatics bearing down on you. I'll tell you, it's left me in a right pickle. I've sent what I can by pigeon, but now something's attacking them and all. Become a postmaster, Danzo. It'll be easy. Nobody mentions having to spend your evenings hunting for pigeon carcasses, do they? You sense there's more to his anxiety than a few missing letters. Oh, well, uh, one of the missing letters is my own correspondence. A, a personal matter, nothing serious. But you can understand, if people think I can't even deliver my own letters, I'd be finished. Not the foggiest. Normally they fly true as an elven arrow. Something nearby is snatching them. I can tell you that much. You do that? Well, if it's not too much bother, I... Yes, I'd appreciate the help. Bring me the letter, unopened, of course and I'll happily compensate you for your troubles. The pigeon carries itself with an air of dignity, its mannerisms stern and commanding. Name and rank quickly now. There's a war on. At ease. At ease. <clears throat> I am Commander Lightfeather, leader of the finest aerial communication regiment this side of the Chionfa. State your purpose, Brown Walker. I don't have all day. Oh, damned awful business. Fine flyers, a lot of them. Gone without a trace. Intelligence is in short supply, but... We know our enemies flanked us on the west side. Not one rooftop away. They're avoiding the whole area. I won't lose one more beak to the blighter. If you pass that way, beware the sign of the featherless wings. From that rooftop, none return. <coughs> Mr. Dakarios, heavens! Fancy seeing you here. Tara! That can't be you, can it? I suppose you won't be terribly shocked to find your old friend Tara amongst the pigeons. They've always been a personal favourite. My, is that a ring? For us? Oh, you shouldn't have. Enjoy yourself now, Tara. Looks like you've got yourself set up quite nicely here. Oh! 
Right. Did you hear that, Tara? Um, stop it? Well, these must be important birds indeed, Mr. Decarios. Forgive me for feasting on their bodies and bones so very voraciously. Oh, she's agreed. Just about. Just... We have the juice. Don't suppose you've, uh, stumbled across those letters yet? Thank the gods. Unopened as well. Oh, what a relief. My customers will be most pleased. Here's your fee. As promised. We've got enough mouths to feed. We don't need your car. Ah, are you trying to get into the city? Got a minute to tell me about your experience at the gate today? I'm Lens, roving reporter for the Boulder's Mouth Gazette. My editor sent me to cover the drama out here at the gate. He wants some fluff piece about the heroic steel watch keeping the mob at bay, whether or not that's the truth or not. That the refugees here are desperate, hungry, scared people. They're no mob. They just want to be safe. I've heard the rumors. Absolutists marching from Moonrise Towers. Whole towns felled by strange curses. It's no wonder they ran. Of course, I can't write any of that. My editor only releases stories his friend Lord Gortash approves of. And he's very selective. Doesn't it just... Of course, we're off the record and this conversation never happened. Now, if you don't mind, I've got some edits to make. <clears throat> Footprints leading right into that cave. The boss is expecting you. Hasn't forgotten what you did for him at Moonrise. Ah! There you are. Good. We need to strategize. Wolbrin is planning something. Uh, lots of moving parts. Uh, I'm still trying to suss the details myself. Uh, some. But what he has planned is... unthinkable. Maybe... You can help him see sense. Someone has to. Good to see you. Wasn't sure you'd make it to the city. Regretting it yet? I spent a lot of time thinking of worst case scenarios while I was locked in that cell you plucked me out of at Moonrise. I didn't imagine anything as bad as this. The Gondians have handed Enver Gortash the means to bring about the end of liberty in Baldur's Gate. And the citizens have rolled out the red carpet for the new tyrant. Resistance fighters are few and far between. My iron hands, what's left of the Harpers, and you. I hope. As long as our objective is the same, the reason doesn't matter to me. We have a common enemy. But neither of us gets what we want until we deal with our biggest obstacle. The Steel Watch. They're a threat to you, me, and every man, woman, and child in this city. They act all civilized, servants of the people, but they only serve one man. When he becomes Grand Duke, it will only get worse. Laws will change. Freedoms will vanish, and soon you'll be accused and sentenced before you've even committed a crime. And the fucking Gondians are to blame for all of it. A tyrant's nothing without lackeys. And the Gondians are the perfect lackeys. Dangerously intelligent, pathetically submissive. They invented the Steel Watchers, and they're building an army of them. 
They've always been happy to provide their technology to despots in exchange for a stipend and the freedom to work in peace. They would have licked Saravok's boots, given the chance. And now they'll kiss Gortash's ring while this city screams. I had a plan to put a stop to them. But the way things are now, if we stick our heads above ground, the Watchers are on us like flies on shit. Same as it always is. Eliminate the threat. In this case, the foundry where these atrocities are produced. The Gondians are ingenious, but we're more than equal to them. There's nothing they can build that the Iron Hands can't tear down. I've built something unique for just that purpose. A room powder bomb. First of its kind. Fifty wizards high on the weave couldn't summon this kind of firepower. Get the bomb inside the Gondian facility and... Boom. Problem solved. Walbrin, please. This is too far. Everyone in the foundry would be killed. Quiet, Barkus. The adults are talking. The Gondians picked their side the minute they took orders from Gortash. If they had any courage, they'd have refused him and died like heroes, spitting in his face. Now they'll die like the dogs they are. That's what I've been saying. There may yet be a peaceful solution. Fine. You want to try flapping your gums in the belly of the beast? Be my guest. But their idea of diplomacy is a steel fist shoved where the sun don't shine. So take the bomb. Just in case I'm right and you're wrong. As long as you see sense, I don't care when you see it. The foundry is in the lower city, down by the docks. Beautiful building, belching smoke into the sky day and night. Getting inside won't be easy, but when you do, place the bomb at the heart of the facility. Get yourself back to street level. The streets will be clear of watchers in no time. Um, hi. It's me, Yenna. You remember me, right? You were really nice to me before, and, um, my mum hasn't come back yet. She might come later. I don't think she's coming. Could we maybe stay here? What harm? She's little, won't take up much space, or make much of a dent in our provisions. you killed Catherick and took his netherstone, the Chosen's control of the brain has been brittle. It's rebelling against Orin and Gortash, fiercely. I suspected that when we took Catherick's stone, the brain would begin to break free.
Those brain quakes confirm that my suspicion was correct. I do not know what happens now when it receives their orders, and I do not dare guess. You feel the Emperor's fear as if it were your own. An Elder Brain enslaved is one thing. An Elder Brain unleashed will be the end of everything. Beautiful, isn't it? The mighty Prince Orpheus, contained in submissive slumber. Come. You may as well sit a while, now that you are here. Your company isn't unwelcome. An accurate summary. I have found myself distracted of late. I'm haunted by memories. They are relentless. I can think of nothing. No one else. The very same. Duke Stelmane. As she was known in Baldur's Gate. You thought you were my first ally. Far from it. I have long sought the allyship of others. It is the only way to succeed. Though my relationship with Berlin was different from my relationship with you. In a way, but not the way you're thinking of. In life, she was my business partner, back when we ran the Knights of the Shield. A difficult task for a Mind Flayer. Duke Stelmane trusted me, and the city trusted her. I conceded the plot, but Berlin took center stage. It was she who met with the merchants, politicians, and patriarchs. It was she who negotiated deals and signed off on agreements. Her rooms played host to the most important conversations in the city. Together, we brought order to chaos. At its height, everything that happened in that city went through the shield. Through us. I could not have done any of it without her. Just as I cannot do any of this without you. But now, she is gone. I appreciate the offer, but I don't think it will help. What I feel is deeper than superficial cures can reach, and not entirely unwelcome. Most people think that Mind Flayers are soulless husks who feel nothing. I am glad you are not most people. You have shown me great empathy. We are closer now. Close enough, I hope, that I can ask you to reconsider your position regarding your physical form. I know it is no easy choice for you, but we will have a far better time ridding the city of Gortash if you accept just a touch of illithidness. Not to mention the Elder Brain itself. Our chances against it greatly improve the more illithid we both are. Another quake. The brain is rebelling again. I need to focus. And so do you. Queen Vlakis. Skrah! You are a Sherlock. And still, you speak my name. I've seen the captive Orpheus with my own eyes. Spoken to Gestil Kithrak Vos. You lied to us. Enslaved us. The betrayer Vos lies! I have only a moment, and you, Hasharlak, will listen. We are Githyanki. We move mountains. We snuff out stars. We shake the plains! The traitor Voss has lied to you. 
The heretic prince would shatter us in an instant. The great Dominion shrunk to the head of a pin. Can this be true? Is the Gith Yankee prince really a threat to his own people? Or simply a challenge to Vlakith's rule? Return to the Astral Prism. Slay Orpheus the Pretender. Serve me, and I will ascend you. You will be no mere warrior, nor Kithrak. You will be Barter Vlakith, commander of dragons. My only, my chosen. A final chance. Kneel before me. Make your promise. I gave you my faith, and you called me traitor. I gave you my life, and you ordered your knights to hunt me. I have witnessed too much, and you have given me too little. Finally, I can see. Orpheus will live, and I will hear his creed. This is my word. Your word is nothing. You! are nothing! The Kithraki will bring you. I will tear your flesh from your bones and devour your skull's marrow while you beg for death. I will consume you. I will unmake you. It is done. There is no going back. As long as the Undying Queen reigns, I am never to soar unbound over the Astral Sea, never to cross the One in the Void. As it should be. Better a short life built on truth than immortality woven of lies. Better to unite the Githyanki under a prince who would free their minds and honor their bodies. So why do I feel so Bitter loss. It permeates every corner of Lazelle's mind. Everything she knew to be true, every plan and aspiration she ever held has been painfully ripped away. Lazelle's bitterness is born of sadness. She is mourning the loss of the person she once was and can never be again. How well you've come to know me. But in truth, she didn't take everything. I have what I have gathered for myself. I'm more to a new regent, a new land, and new allies. Vlaketh cannot unmake she who no longer exists. And so from the old battle cries is birthed another. Tmar Salar Orpheus must still now forge an Yeri. Orpheus's will above all. May the comet blaze my path forward. We find Voss at Charesse's caress and retrieve the key to releasing the prince. Orpheus tough King Narsin. Halt! By orders of Lord Gortash, refugees are no longer allowed in the city. Turn around. Or do you have the means to support yourself? Right. Article 30.1.5 of the Council's decree on extraordinary wartime measures. I am confiscating that. The city thanks you for your contribution. Your name? Well met, citizen. Your parasite stirs. From the construct, you feel connection, resonance. I am a steel watcher, citizen. Here to serve the people of Baldur's Gate in the name of Lord Enver Gortash. State your business. I'm a herbalist by trade, Surfist. 
My assistants and I were out collecting blooms for that rub rot going around. Oof, nasty business. Contagious. Uh huh. Eyes open, body still. Behind the watcher's gaze, a presence awakens. You are seen. You are known. Your party's prior transgressions are reflected in its stare. As witnessed by the cult's ever alert, scrying eyes, it has heard the howls of slaughtered goblins. It has seen the deep shadows of Grimforge and the stone floors left bloodied. It knows the cold walls of Moonrise Towers and the cultists who fell there. The Watcher speaks directly into your mind with a voice like poisoned honey. You are marked for special treatment. Not simply an enemy of the people, but an enemy of the Absolute. Come quietly, or die. Your peaceful surrender has been noted. You will be transferred to Worms Rock Prison where you will await further sentencing. Eat this, you pile of junk! Villains, take heed. God damn it all! Recovery is Save imminent. those little bastards or I'll have your head! So, good, so, uh, give me three days and... Oh, I... Uh, apologies. Thought you were someone else. Uh, greetings, so forth, so on. The landlord, Sir Frego Antuna. A uh, most generous soul, I assure you. That shapeshifter's key unlocked the door. Interesting. We should return for the ceremony. We have time. The runaway is still missing after all. Nothing happens until he's found. A list of names. Father Lorgan's on here, crossed off. A target list, perhaps. Blood near the bed. Notice some blood has pooled on the wooden floor. You notice the blood source. A body hidden under the bed. The corpse regards you lifelessly. Theon Gold Grind. Seeking answers. My boy had a secret. Evil secret. Killed folk slowly. Bell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. It is you, most definitely not anyone else. The salutations and hello and whatnot. Oh? Oh dear. A dwarf, you say? Fion. One of Mamzelle's girls from Charessa's caress. Been gone for a ten day. Smiled as wide as the wide, but twice as sunny. You don't suppose the murderer? Oh, goodness no. It's too horrible to imagine. 
Horrible hells. I better lay low. Lower than low. Under low. Blooming hell, you look famished. I've got some victuals that'll warm you right up. Murdered? Oh, dearie me. And to think, a remains were just a whisper away. M make sure Mamselle knows. Cross the way at the caress. Yeah, God, she'll be right unsettled. I'm staying put, mind. If a killer wanted me dead, I'd already be crammed under the boards. If you have gold, we have everything you have. A weary traveler, battered and bruised, you come for sustenance. No, decadence. A mien cool as ice, yet eyes burning hot. Oh, yes, I know your bliss. A sturdy dwarf, a leather whip, she gives, you receive. Or have I misjudged you? Am I? Your eyes tell a story, sweeting. You crave more than pleasure, you crave penance. It's Fion you seek, our stern librarian. She isn't here today, alas. Your penance must wait. Well, we've other ways to fill your void. A drink for one, a pair of drow for another. Choose your sin. Murdered! Ye gods, the poor thing! Oh, by the mother of cats, I pray she didn't suffer. They'll miss that face. Else, the regulars will miss her more. They swarmed her like honeybees at the hive. Oh. Losing Fion slashed a big hole in my coin purse. I should get to replacing her. Sweeting. This is Baldur's Gate. I've seen more murders than a butcher's right eye. There'll be time for tears. Cruel as it is, I must turn my mind to business, or, more precisely, the lack of it. Another case closed, another bottle open! A zart of Valeria! <laughs> Hang on a tick. I recognize that face. You were talking to Yanis after I left the temple. I bet she's put you up to something. Why must you busybodies insist on interrupting a perfectly good night? <sighs> oh, I know that look. You remind me of Devella. Fine! If you doubt my conclusions, out with it. What have you found? A Baal plot. You as well? Devella's been harping on about Baal for months. Fancies herself something of an expert. I assumed it was just a bunch of conspiracy codswallop and fear-mongering. But she's been unusually insistent about this one, even for her. Oh, fine. I'll bite. What's your theory? No need to wave documents at me. I'm already drowning in paperwork as it is. Constable Devella is going to be a real pain in the trunk about this. Since you seem to be on an obnoxiously similar wavelength, why don't you seek her out? She'll be at the Elf Song Tavern. Show her the list, and I'll stay and inform the Fist here. Oh, and you'll need this pass. It'll give you access to the lower city. Well? What are you waiting for? You have a bloody conspiracy to solve. Move! 
don't draw any trouble on old Enthar. He acts like he's up for it, but he's retired for a reason. Greetings, sir. Your noble bearing brings a little class to my humble... Oh, you can turn off the charm, Enthar. He's with me. Blueberries. Thought I had a sale. You look tired, Harper. I missed you, too. They're already here? Down below. Here's the key. Hi, Harper. May Saluna's tears shine on this meeting. A very formal greeting, Geraldus. You are well? Yes, hi, Harper. Uh, standing beneath Saluna's tears. The lad's a little nervous, Jahira. We heard of your great victory against Ketherick. Geraldus isn't nervous. He's terrified. And he's using Saluna's tears as some kind of code. I understand, Geraldus. Take a moment. And you, Harper. Mm. There is something familiar about you. Doesn't she remind you of our old friend Marcus? Jahira's meaning is clear. Marcus was a traitor laying a trap. The same, it seems, is happening here. Oh, clever cub. This is an ambush. Strike first, while they focus on me. Grave mistake. Doppelgangers. How many has she brought to Baal's side, I wonder? Did I... Uh, did I get it right? Saluna's tears. It is said no false face can stand beneath their light. An old code, Harper. But yes, you got it right. Now I need your report. We had eyes on suspected cultists in the city, like you asked. We thought we were tracking them, but... They were tracking you instead, evidently. Doppelgangers. And they're not just working with the cult, our High Harper. They're part of it. Baalists, I think. Sworn to Orin the Red, yes. We've already had the pleasure. Go on. Everything seemed fine until your latest orders. Until we started to search for the Rashimar. They struck the same night. I woke to one of them strangling Chelvin while smiling at me out of her face. She said, it said that I'd report back to you as normal. Lou, are you here? And I had no choice. I'm sure it felt that way, Geraldus. The others were likely dragged back to Orin, tortured, sacrificed. I do not expect you to die for me. But to risk Antharl, any citizen who might have wandered in, there is always a choice. And the Harper must be able to make the hard ones. Perhaps this isn't the life for you after all, Geraldus. No, Jahira! Hi, Harper! Please! I'm still a Harper. I want to help! You've scarcely signed up, boy. And there is a war coming. Why die a Harper when you could still live as anything else? This work isn't for everyone, boy, and there is no shame in that. Go home to your mother and leave the test to us. Yes, Hi Harper. Just Jahira to you now. Go on. I have all the help I need. Orin be damned. Her bloody fingerprints are all over this city. <laughs> Orin knows the hunt. In one stroke, she places the Harpers beyond our reach, separates us from our pack. Until we know who the False Facers are, we cannot trust anyone beyond ourselves. And I was so busy telling you not to take her bait, that I scarcely felt the hook in my own mouth. I have not been overly generous with the truth. I came here to learn of the Chosen, true enough. But I set my Harper searching for someone else, too. Tell me, what do you know of a man named Minsk of Rashomon? 
the name is as familiar as Jahira's own. A hero of the time of troubles, who saved the city more than once. I sense you mean no insult, calling scarce a century ago the old days, which is considerably more insulting. Minsk is an old friend, perhaps my oldest. We fought at one another's backs, times beyond counting. And the last time I saw him, I left him to die. There always is. But that is still the fundamental fact of it. Before we ever heard of this absolute, we received word of a gathering in the Undercity. What we found was the first dark seed of this plot. A circle of cultists with mind flares in their midst. We might have ended it there, cut off at the root, but before I could send for help, Mins charged in alone. It was chaos. He was overrun. Dragged down beneath a mass of tentacles. I had a choice. Stay and let word of this cult die with us, or leave him and live to fight another day. The world takes much from those who presume to defend it. But sometimes, you get to take it back. So don't be sorry, because I mean to use you, if you're willing. Infection, indoctrination. Eradication. That has been the fate of everyone the cult has captured so far. But it has not been yours. With your help, perhaps it need not be Minsk's either. As simply as that? For no other reason than that I asked? Hm. Perhaps you two will get along. Oh, the point is moot without the means to find him. Without the Harpers, we shall have to find another path. I'll have a better idea of what that is once we're through the gates. Seems I need to reacquaint myself with this damned city. You must hear me, devil. I will do whatever it takes. Give you anything you ask. There is only one thing in this world that I desire. You do not have it, and you never will. The Kithrak? What deal would he make with this devil? You must help me, Raphael, for the sake of my people. Hush now, Vos. These guests may not know it yet, but they want the same thing that you do. And unlike you, they have something of value to offer in return. Lazel, Talak Magir. The devil holds the key to freeing the Gith people. Right here, right now. You could seal our fate. Whatever you discuss with this devil, I must hear of it. Find me below in the tap room once you're loosed from his claws. I'm glad you came. Not to my door. Not yet, but to the final reckoning. One more thing before we begin, though. For the first time since the Nautiloid, your mind is clear. It's unsettling. I gave you back your privacy by shutting that illithid in your pocket out of your mind. It can't hear us. Huh. What's the catch? I brought you here because I'm true to my word, and I can make all of this tadpole business go away. 
which means you and your lovely friends can remain blessedly free of tentacles. Let us speak plain. I'll admit, you've impressed me. I wasn't sure you'd make it this far. But no matter how far you come, you're still on the road to ruin. A road that leads directly to a confrontation with the Elder Brain. At best, it will kill you and everyone else in this city. At worst, it will assimilate you and you won't have enough free will left to even wish you were dead. You have the key to destroying it in the palm of your hand, though. Very perceptive. Yes. I can give you the means to break him free. Speak, devil. We're listening. The Orphic Hammer. An artifact capable of shattering the chains that hold Prince Orpheus is held securely in my House of Hope even now. Isn't it just? And it's even more convenient that you can give me exactly what I want in return. There it is. Of course. I want the crown that dominates the Elder Brain. And you, Lazel of Kalir, want to free the Forgotten Prince, do you not? I want nothing more. Then it is settled, is it not? A crown for a hammer. A bargain of a lifetime, Lazel of Kilir. Better to have it in my hands and far from your precious world than in the hands of the gods and monsters that fight over this city's soul. Power, ancient and full of wonder. I have craved it ever since the Archwizard Cassus created it long centuries ago and brought doom to the Empire of Netheril. That was the great age of humanity and Netheril's flying sky cities were the apex of civilization. I was there the day it all fell apart. Entire cities plummeted from the sky like angels with broken wings. The screams, oh, the screams. Hundreds of thousands of people watching in horror as the ground came up to meet them. <laughs> it was not a happy meeting. And Cassus was responsible. Not driven by malice, but by ambition. He forged a crown imbued with all the powers of magic. A crown that would make any who wore it a god. Men cannot contain so much power. The crown destroyed its creator, and his empire fell with him. Cassus's folly, the bards and scholars call it. I call it hope. The hope of creating a better world and the perils of unchecked hubris. I knew then that the folly of mortals could be the triumph of devils, and that I could use that crown to unite the Nine under one Archdevil Supreme, me. <laughs> Zarya wouldn't like that much. But even I'm not so desperate to spite her, I'd put the Hells in this bastard's hands. I am no mortal! And I do not fail. The 
The archdevil Mephistopheles snatched up the crown and squirreled it away in one of his vaults. He is not more than a frigid archivist. So much power and potential kept inert. He made a miracle into a museum piece. I raged. But only for a decade or so. Then I waited, ever watching for more than a thousand years, for a mistake, a mishap, a misadventure. And these chosen, who have caused you so much trouble accidentally, did me a favor. They brought the crown back into play. It is inevitable. When you destroy the brain, and you will, because you must, the crown will be yours for the taking. And when that moment comes, you give the crown to me. In exchange, I give you the hammer now. A simple transaction, it seems, but it's more than that. He's offering you an alternative to the mind flare in your head. Take Raphael's deal and you could free Orpheus. With Orpheus free, you would have no need to rely on the Emperor. But there's no guarantee that Orpheus would be on your side. And if you take the deal, you'll have to fulfill it. You'll have to deliver the crown of Carsus to the devil himself. He claims his ambition is to unite the Hells, but can he be trusted to stop there? Do you trust him more than you trust the Emperor? Skvar! We should do as the Devil asks. The Prince of the Comet must rise again. How short-sighted. Much better to put it into the right hands. Hands that will ensure it is removed from this world. And it's the only way you can ensure that you remain part of this world. I won't stop you. But time is running out. So, don't stay away for long. If you see reason, I'll be here, waiting, right up to the moment the world ends. The means to loosing the Prince of the Comet was within our grasp, and you refused it. Why? I wanted to follow the open valley, the easy way out. You chose the bramble path. I'm annoyed by it. And I admire you for it. We must speak with Voss. Then we find our way to Raphael's House of Hope. We'll take the Orphic Hammer and use it to smash the true heir's bonds. Yisk Githgar Tafki crash it. The Githyanki will be free. There you are. I thought I'd lost you. Something was blocking me from hearing your thoughts. Raphael? Well, thank you for your honesty. Of course, I should have known the devil would come sniffing. The stench of impending chaos is irresistible to them. And what did he want with you? Giving a devil what he wants sounds like a brilliant idea. And what did he offer you in return for bringing it to him? Tell me, you turned him down. Good. I am glad. But be careful. The devil is like a cockroach. No matter what you do to it, it will always come back. I doubt this will be the last time you are approached. I trust 
that you will continue to remember who is really on your side. Without my protection, you cannot defeat the Elder Brain. You cannot even get close to it, no matter what the devil whispers in your ear. Voss, friend to the Comet. Lazel of Kalir, warrior of warriors. Tell me you took the devil's deal. Tell me you will free Gith's heir. I did not come this far for you to turn your back on the First Mother's son. Gith cards have Kim crashed. You put your trust in me, Voss. I plan to honor it. Yes, and it seems I have no choice but to trust. There is but one prism, and you are its key. Find a way to retrieve the hammer and free Orpheus from the prism. I will assemble his remaining honor guard and plan our next actions. Together, we will yet free the true heir of Gith's blessed empire. He will free us from Vlakith and lead our Kithraki against the Geik. Istik, I will wait in the underground. Seek me when you have the hammer in hand. The Prince of the Comet aches for Gith Yankee liberation more than he abhors Geich. He might seethe when you free him. He might gnash his teeth and slander your name. But he will see reason. I promise you. A devil of Raphael's stature does not simply make camp on the shores of the Styx. He will have made a sanctuary for himself, a lavish one too, one that caters to his many vices. The House of Hope. We must find a way in. The House of Hope, you say? I couldn't ask for a name more fitting. Every house has an entrance, Istik. Even those in the Hells. You must find it. You are wasting your time, and mine. Our true enemy is the Elder Brain. Focus your mind there. Sorry, chum. Can't let you through. Worms Rock's closed for the day. <laughs> Not closed to Duke Older Ravenguard's own son, surely. You having a laugh, devil boy? I oh, know Ravenguard, and last I knew, his spawn wasn't sporting those horns. The joke's on you. No entry. That's the end of it. You don't look the posh sort. Last door on the right. Go on. Make merry. Lower the gates. Special permission. The city fell off. Halt. We do not know how you gained entry. But your trespass shall not be punished. Lord Gortash has been expecting you. The Watcher's presence fades, but another takes its place. Confident, dominant, commanding. My most esteemed guest, we meet at last. I am Lord Enver Gortash. You are the prison bearer, slayer of the dread General Kethric Thorn. I welcome you to Baldur's Gate, my city. It already is. Granted, there are a few formalities to complete, but well, why don't you come and see? Allow me to formally invite you to my inauguration. Make your way to the ceremonial hall. Stand down, villain. In the name of the Steel Watch, aggressive action will not be tolerated in the presence of the Patriarchs of this proud city. Dearest Patriarchs, dearest Raven Guard, what a moment. The Blade of Frontiers graces our halls. And he's wearing his devilish best. My father. He's here. My friend, forgive the cold welcome. My Steel Watchers are eager watchdogs. For the good of the people, I'm sure you understand. 
Lord Enver Gortash at your service. I understand congratulations are in order. Thorm's defeat hasn't gone unnoticed. You're known for who you are and for that nether stone that you carry. You know, it takes all three to control the brain. Without Thorm's, it's become vexingly willful. The quakes are a clear warning. If nobody steps in soon, it'll free itself from the authority of the crown. I expect it'll start with turning the Sword Coast's infected. You among them. A prism of yours won't last indefinitely. Next, the grand design. The Mind Flayer Empire reborn. If we're lucky, we'll become slaves. If we're unlucky, well, not the most thrilling of prospects, but it's a fate that can be avoided. If you and I come to an understanding, together we can still restore authority over the brain. Of course. Gortash always did have an eye for opportunity. There's an old wisdom. A brittle alliance can never be mended. It can only break. With Ketherick gone, Orin proved treacherous. Baal's chosen wants the Netherstones for herself. She only cares for blood. And your blood and mine are of particular interest to her. You've met her assassins. Efficient killers, by all accounts. I know you survived previous encounters. But she won't relent. Orin changes shape faster than you and I change clothes. You know, she's tricked you before. She's targeted me as well. I'm well protected, but she's extremely good at what she does. If Orin obtains all three netherstones, she'll plunge the coast into chaos and paint the city in blood. I can't let that happen. I want to lead this city to glory, not scorch its earth. I'd like to propose a pact, a divine oath sworn upon spirit and flesh. I do no harm to you, nor you to me. Furthermore, you'll have nothing to fear from my steel watch while our pact stands. Thorm's stone is yours to keep. When you slay Orin and take her stone, you bring it here, so the three are united once again. Together we rule Faerun as kings. No, more than kings. Gods. We rule as the absolute. And my father? Your father will do whatever you command him to, like any other subject in our kingdom. What do you say? Shall we be allies? I can detect no deceit. This alliance could serve us well. And if it does not, well, we need not honor it. An ally could be useful, at least for now. And when he's no longer useful, well, we can dispose of him then. So Kethrick was ready to betray our alliance, too. I can't say it comes as a surprise. But you should know this. I initiated this plot. I brought Kethrick and Orin together to create the Absolute. They knew this would only work if we stood united and coordinated our powers. Their ambition blinded them to reason. I don't suffer the same affliction. In short, you can trust me. Perhaps a demonstration of why you need my help will motivate you to make the right decision. Your camp is compromised. One among you is an imposter, a faceless. Who, I can't say. I'd suggest a thorough investigation. You'll find I speak the truth. A shapeshifter? Well, it could be anyone. I mean, it's not me, but it could be anyone else. The faceless in your camp is like a knife at your throat. Remove it quickly. Or any alliance between us would be exceedingly short-lived. First, Orin the Red, bloody dagger of Baal, 
causes panic in the streets through killings in the Absolute's name. Next, the threat of the Absolute's monstrous armies formed by Merkel's general, Catherine Thorpe. In such circumstances, people crave strong leaders. Leaders that bring law, order, and protection. Leaders like me, Bane's unyielding hand, author of justice. You are soon to witness the people of Baldur's Gate granting me complete power over them, all out of fear of the absolute. Next, I, we, will declare curfew and begin infecting the masses. Our subjects will hear the voice of their absolute god. The faithful will do anything in the name of their god. Our tyranny, and we are saviors, defenders of the Sword Coast, our loyal subjects will love us, not hate us. What comes next will be entirely their fault. Distinguished dukes, patriarchs, dearest Raven Guard, I will heed your call. A new chapter begins. Enver Gortash, swearest thou by Baldurin's blade to defend the citizens of Baldur's Gate from enemies within and without? I swear. Swearest thou true faith and fealty to the same by word, deed, and decree so that none may suffer? I swear. Gathered guests, grant ye consent. Enver Gortash, the council appoints you Archduke of Baldur's Gate. My friends, the Steel Watch stands ready. Let its blade fall on any who would diminish our city. And you, honored guest, will find me in my office above when you return. Do not come empty-handed. So there you have it. Lord Enver Gortash in all his glory. What did you make of him? Yeah. Fucker always had expensive taste. I don't know how anyone in this hall could fall for this charade. Isn't it obvious what a chancer he is? And they expect these big metal monsters to tuck them in at night while the absolute knocks on the gates. If only they knew the truth. The Dead Three orchestrated all of this, and it's working. I wish this city, the people running it, were smarter than me. Gortash isn't their salvation. He's the monster at the gate. Dearest Karlak, I'd busy myself finding Orin if I were you. I'll still be here for any unfinished business once you've secured your camp. Well, that's it? That's all you have to say to me? Were you hoping for something else? A word of wisdom? A hug? Thanks to you, I don't hope for things anymore. I just take whatever it is I want. See you soon, motherfucker. You most certainly will. If it isn't little Will, straight to your handler. And I didn't even have to whistle. Mizora, I've had enough. You owe your life to me. Time to end the pact. Poor thing. You've had a tough go, and you don't know the half of it. You see, Gortash has had your father relocated. To the slaughter, the way I hear it. Shit. Your dad's good as dead, pup. And to think. There's no way to save him. Or is.
is there? You know something. I know enough. I'll be in your camp if you want to work something out. Of course she'd stick her infernal nose where it doesn't belong. Of course she's dreamt up some risible scheme. By all the hounds of the hells, what is she planning? Certainly not. But she's as inevitable as Toril's path around the sun. We'll have answers soon enough. Mazora's gone to camp. We should speak with her. Until then, may my father keep safe. Whatever coop he's been flown to. Adjudicators of diabolical contracts and bargains. Holy hells. You do not call upon the sisters. They come when the hells demand witness. Enough, Mizora. Where is my father? How do I save him? How else? We bargain, sisters. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Infernos contractos te vocamos. Your contract, Will, signed in blood, Forged in fire, bound in bone, but not unbreakable. A life for a life. No contract is ended without sacrifice. The cost must be paid. Will Raven Guard, a choice is before you. Option one, I show you the way to your father. I guarantee him no harm except that from you and your allies. And you pledge your soul to me and the Archdevil Zariel in a pact eternal. Option two, I break your pact and you are freed from your duty. Your father dies by his enemy's hand, and Baldur's Gate loses its greatest champion. Name your sacrifice. Bloody Zariel. I won't let her take Will. Silence, Karlak. Mizora, you asshole. Choose. You damned wretch. Do it then. Claim my soul for Zariel. Keep my father safe. Fiat Ita. Fiat Ita. Anima ad beator. a new mission, pup. Go save your father. He's locked in a very nasty place. Gortash's secret command center and prison. Lucky for you, 
I know the way in. I'll mark your map. After all, a deal's a deal. You know what? I think I'll stick around. Not for the greater good, you understand. Just for the entertainment. Twice Mazorus held my feet to the fire, and twice was I burnt. But my father will live. We will return the Grand Duke to his people. And forever a devil's leash will choke me. Sometimes, fate closes a door for good. The bolt is fastened, the key is destroyed, and the wish is forever locked away. The hells will take my soul. I'll make my peace with it. I have once already, after all. Besides, there's no time to wallow in self-pity. More than anything, I'm elated that there's hope yet for my father. We should hurry to this mystery prison and retrieve my father before Mazora tries pulling more tricks. This prison's in the lower city. Let's move. We will knock him out if we need to. Or restrain. Your skull vibrates in concord with the astral prism. Bring me to your duke. I will shield him as I shield you. Why would you do that? Better to bring him into the fold than to leave you distracted by regret. Well then, I'm not about to say no. Why the stunned face? You look like you've seen a devil. The pup dug his own hole, darling. I merely supplied the claws. I've always been the giving type, after all. To wit, go to Gortash's secret prison, and I'll help you spring Will's daddy free. Of course, you could always leave him to rot, but that would make Will's sacrifice worthless, and I know you wouldn't want that. Focus on the Elder Brain. I'd hate to clog that infected head of yours with needless details. <sighs> Will's a gifted hunter, and Zariel's made her share of enemies in and out of the Hells. Devils, demons, deserters. They're a great burden on the Lord of the First. Clause G, Section 9. Targets shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. The clause still holds. As long as Will doesn't tug on my leash, he'll be stalking only the wickedest prey. It's a win-win. Correct. I didn't. If you must know, I was scouting the cultists on behalf of Zariel, but those cursed shadows were thick enough to fell even a half-fiend. I woke from that damned pod. It kept my body sealed and my most powerful magic silenced. But a brave, kind, benevolent soul set me free. Gallantry isn't dead, after all. Oh, you are an inquisitive one. I'd have thought you'd figured by now. Zariel found a new use for an old battle axe. The dead three in that bulging brain of theirs are a threat to more than this trifling city, you know. Savor her company. Who's to say when Zariel might change her mind? My mistress can be so capricious. King Yank, your deception ends now. I shall cleave the truth from you like flesh from a doer. Help me! She's gone mad! This 
is not the whelp who's been following us. I saw her. She slipped into camp in the form of a woman and shifted into this abomination. She tried to silence me and hide her deception. I didn't do anything! Gortash warned you of this. Then there is nothing left to discuss. Say your farewells, Nevukrim. Perhaps if I remove your eyes, you'll see things as they are. Look at it, crawling and sniffing and rooting around in the filth. Is it my nether stone you seek, little piggy? <gasps> hush, hush. Orin will take care of you and your little pet. Nothing. No, not a thing. <laughs> Still gasping and gagging on the foul airs of Baal's temple. <gasps> I will not slice. Her kind die too easily. The murder lord demands a better offering. Something new. Sticky, sweet, and delicious. He wants you. Silly little worm. My God is always with me. He shudders to see how my blades plunge into soft, surrendered flesh. You are dull. A blunt blade unfit to flay. But you could be sharpened, thin and jagged. Yes, I will tell you what to do. You'd prefer my whispers in the tyrant's tongue, hmm? You've heard Gortash's whispers. I see how your skull swarms with his promises. He whinges and wails over the crown of Carsus, wanting to command it without me. Oh, how I long to slit his poxy smile from ear to ear. But I can't touch him. He bound my blade when we first conspired. Gortash didn't want me at first. Didn't trust me. Got me to wag my tongue, swear an oath never to hang him from the hooks. Drip drain him into father's open jaws. You must kill the tyrant. Take the Netherstone from his corpse and bring it to my temple. There we slice and shred each other. The survivor claims the stones. What's left of the other is balls. Agree, and I will bring my assassins to heal. They watch you always, longing to spray the crimson from your veins. Refuse me, and you'll learn what happens to those who defy Baal's doctrine. So will your friend. Orin demands a fight to the death. The prize for the victor, the Nether Stones, and the chance to control the crown alone. Accept. And you must kill Gortash. Refuse, and your companion's life may be forfeit, as might your own. Orin's assassins will hunt you like prey for slaughter. Oh, silly, silly little slaughter hound. My assassins will not let you. If you hunt me, then they hunt you. The murder lord will not be denied. Neither will I. What happened? No, 
I'm not. I'm not ever safe. Ever again. We can't just let Orin take one of our own. Even if it's Lazel. We have to rescue her. Or kill Gortash in order to win her freedom. Go on, then. You think you can do better? Push me. Oh, ho! You? I know you. How delightful to meet in person. Though, you're shorter than I expected. My name's Esther Sturr, journalist. I speak to the people of Baldur's Gate so our readers don't have to. You are quite correct. The best broadsheet around. I would certainly recommend picking up a copy in the near future. You are, after all, the star of the next Baldur's Mouth Gazette. I was not out yet. But any of the Gazetteers can sell you a copy when it's printed. It's our juiciest edition in an age. Bound to get everyone talking about you. Darling, we can't let the readers decide what the content is. We've editors for that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've really said rather too much and written rather too little. Good day. No, a bit too familiar. Mr. Needle. Well, well, if it isn't the city's next celebrity. You star in our next edition's top story. Well, you should have considered that before disgracing yourself in public. Trafficking refugees into our city is hardly a good look. Especially when so many are absolutists and murderers. The truth will be out with tomorrow's broadsheet. People will spit in your face. Your very presence will be bad for business. You'll be a pariah, an outcast, as you should be. And then we can only hope the fists do their duty and escort you to the gallows. Your days of scumming up this good city streets will be over. Oh, you'd like me to add bribery to your list of extra-legal pursuits? How bold! The headlines are loaded into the print works already. Tomorrow, you will feel the power of free speech. Vox Populi, Vox Dei. Now, guards! I believe our distinguished guest was just leaving. Would you care to escort them out? You approach the printer, noting its ink splots and intricate cogs. Before you can get closer, however, it begins to speak. Oi! Gormless! Over here! Thought I recognized you. Dolly 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 was right. You aren't much of a looker. We both love cheeky words. She does all the shouting, I do the writing. This is my paintbrush. I make sure everything that's in those big, ugly article blocks becomes fine printed artistry. I'm a master pensman, I am. Dolly can't stop talking about you. <laughs> Hero this, hero that, hero here, hero there. <laughs> Hello, hero! You know, there's some absolute filth about you in tomorrow's edition. Seeing as you were kind enough to free Dolly, how's about I do you a favor? Why don't we change the headline? We can load up something a bit less damaging for your reputation. First, 
I've got to release the old nasty tub store. Look there. <laughs> now, you've got to find a new article to replace it. How delightful. The editor will be in for a surprise tomorrow. They say that home is where a person can be their truest selves, without guile, without pretense. You did well to see off the Githyanki who had invaded mine. And now that you have seen where I come from, you know all there is to know about me. At least, all that matters. The very first reward I gifted myself on completion of my first adventure. The garments with which I concealed and later constructed my appearance as the Emperor. We spoke of my relationship with Duke Berlin Stelmay. A story I have told no one else. I have no more secrets for you. No need to resort to subterfuge. We are true allies now. Working towards a common goal. I have learned to adapt my methods to your needs. The only way we were ever going to get close enough to the brain to destroy it was by working together. But few would trust a mind flare. So I did what I had to to convince you. I studied you. Your motivations, your actions, your desires. I deduced the best way to align your goals with my own. That you are complex and full of contradictions. It was no easy task, but I had to persist. I needed your absolute dedication to the cause. I anticipated the challenge and I anticipated your resistance. What I didn't anticipate was how much I would enjoy your company, your mind. Sometimes I felt almost like we were dancing our way towards something deeper. like that. Good instinct. The Elder Brain's hive mind has grown to monstrous proportions. And through the Crown's magic, it has complete control over each and every member. It was intelligent before, but now, with its hive mind established across the city, it is well on its way to becoming indestructible. You should reconsider your attachment to your physical form. You have seen what an elithid can do. Imagine, some of that could be in your grasp. Not enough to warp your appearance beyond recognition, but just enough to enhance your potential. And believe me, it will radically increase our chances of success against the Elder Brain. Think on it. As you drift into sleep, you feel a certain disappointment. The Mind Flare was very quick to abandon its attentions on you. Ah! You look like someone who can probably read! Can I interest you in, um, uh, a copy of the Boulder's Mouth Gazette? Please buy one. Thank you. My first sale. I can't wait to tell Mole. I mean, can't believe everything you read, but if even half Edra's reporting is true... ...to its fullest degree, we must allow the mother of all plagues to burn the...
place to receive clients and informants. I wonder if it's as I remember it. Oh, bollocks! I told those idiots not to let anyone through. You! Name, rank, and reason for interrupting an active crime scene. For your sake, the last one better be bloody good. To fetch her another bottle of mead, no doubt. Yes, I'm Devella, the unfortunate colleague. Unless you've got useful information, leave me to my work. Duke Stalmain's dead. And I've got to find who killed her. God. That's it. Proof that I was right. I've been working on an assignment, see? A research project of sorts. I knew my conclusions were sound. But this... I never expected this. I'll tell you what I know. A century ago, there was a man, Saravok Anchev. He was a child of the god of murder, Baal. He ruled the Iron Throne, a dark tower hiding a darker secret. It was the front for a deadly arms dealing network. There, Saravok amassed an army and sought to become a god. Under his stewardship, the Baal Temple was revived, and with it, the Baal cult itself. Fortunately, the temple was destroyed. And to cleanse the city of Saravok's memory, the Iron Throne was torn from its foundations and cast into the Chionthar. For most, that was the end of it. But cults like that don't disappear overnight. That list you spoke of confirms I'm right. The Baal cult is back. And someone is out there, continuing Saravok's work. Good. Then your eyes are open to the truth. The brutality of the killings is on a par with Saravok's own. But there's something more here. Something new. There's a reference to these murders. A certain flair. It's as if they were done in worship. The precision of the cuts. The depth, the execution. The best butchers in Faerun couldn't make a cut like that. Trust me, I've asked them. I tried to explain all this to my superiors, but they wouldn't have any of it. They told me to drop it. Told me the city doesn't need another conspiracy theorist and to get back to doing my job before they find someone else to do it for me. But you... You're not bound by such constraints. Oh, help me out here. Help the city out. I bet if you follow the trail of these murders, you will be able to unearth the truth of this resurgence. You really are a godsend. But one more thing. There are patriarchs on the murder target list. I'm oath-bound to secure them first, so I'll be heading to the upper city next. While I'm there, the other potential victims will be at risk. Could you warn them? Thank you. That's all I can ask, and more than I hoped. Once I'm done with the Patriarchs, I'll head to Basilisk Gate to have another go at convincing my superiors to put some resources into this matter. Meet me there if you've anything more to report. And good luck. Damn the absolute. Damn rats. Oi, you! I thought I asked you to clean the rats out of this cellar yesterday already. Hop to it! Get in there! No. I need them rats taken care of. Here's the deal. I'll keep a lookout for murderers. You murder the rats! The cellars are just down the stairs. There, you'll find my old lodging. There's a hidden door that leads further in. 
the mechanism to open it is somewhere among the wine racks. On the other side, you'll find a passageway known only to those invited to do business. The psionic detector's been activated. There must be Gith hostiles nearby. Gith Yankee. Blackith has found us. Get rid of them, quickly! What a pleasant surprise. Here you are, as brazen as described. The gloomed soul who thieved from our queen. Of course you had help, didn't you? From the illithid you carry inside the astral prism. How quaint that we should meet here, in the very place that it once called home. We know all about the Emperor and its dealings with you. Though I must confess, its peculiar relationship with you threw us off course for a while. Tell me, what did it offer you in exchange for your servitude? You have fallen prey to its manipulation. Your story ends here. We will reclaim the Astral Prism, purge it of the Illithid Interloper, and restore it to our Queen. My dear child, I already know all there is to know. I will liberate you from your puppet master, Shamar Zala Blackith! Seals the way through. I'll reveal it to you. That's curious. That might be worth a look. My old home. Thank you for bringing me back. Look around. You'll find some of my things still intact. Perhaps even useful. First purchase as an adventurer. No use to me anymore. It's yours, if you want it. She's beautiful, isn't she? I always thought Berlin the most regal of all women. The chains I use to bind my meals. Villains and lawbreakers. You see, I tried to exercise morality where I could. You kill the rats, yes? I heard commotion in the cellar. Good. Perfect. Here, you take this. And do not worry. Chef Revere's eyes will be kept most peeled for murderous knaves. This corpse has been desecrated. Displayed. And there's nothing random about it. Circus clothes. What an end for Dribbles the Clown. Why, hello there. We were just about to try some of Master Metzley's delightful wines. Oh, would you care to join us? Oh, they do look ever so tasty. Ah, Mrs. Highbury, I prefer to conduct tastings individually, so I may assess your palate. Call me Cora, Master Metzley, and I'm afraid I must insist on their joining us. Wine's no good without company, after all. Wine scent is almost sickly sweet, with an acrid note just on the periphery. Poison. No, it was perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You have sullied it with knowledge, made it an unclean sacrifice. I will remember your face 
and I will peel it from your skull, should you interfere again. He goes loose, the killings won't stop. I still can't believe. Why would anyone want to kill me? Thank you for saving us. Faces, hands, and eyebrows. How do we protect them? Watch for wind direction. Put on your gloves. And... a light at arm's length. Very good. And what does Uncle Philogear always say? Once it's lit, you commit. Excellent! Now remember, Philogear's Fireworks accepts no liability for singed nails, toasted eyelashes, loss of limbs, scalded torsos, or blown off heads. Now, you there. What can I do for you? You feel an all-too-familiar squirm in the recesses of your mind. He has a tadpole. Aha! A fellow friend of Gortash. Praise the Absolute. I have a special sample, available just for you, if you wish. Aha! You must be Arthur's friend. Keep your voice down. Yes, yes, he's just upstairs, but only one flight. If you get to the top, you've gone too far. Browse as irresponsibly as you like. Just don't tell the other customers. Can I help you? Head on up! Your uncle is waiting for you upstairs. Steady. Any spillage under Jappy. Another Steady friend of Falagir? All right. Just remember the top floor's off limits. Password or not. Looking to buy a little something extra then? That could not be less of your business. Maintaining temperature. Steady at the mark. Steady at the mark. In. I'll bring Laroakin out here, you tin tube. You tell Laroakin I went for his goddamn night song, and now he has to pay up. What are you looking at? Shit, it's you. You went looking for the night song after me. Please tell me you found it. Anastema! Hells, if I'd known, I'd have asked for more gold. Kidnapping costs more than theft. Don't forget, I'm the one who gave you that contract. I want my cut. Immortal, eh? Interesting. Won't be easy getting her back to the wizard. But if you don't do it, someone else will. Hope you hit her well, mate. This armor is a construct animated by powerful magic. It has no soul or power of speech, but it follows the directives of its master. It feels no pain and knows no morality. It will act on behalf of its master and perish when the magic that binds it is severed.
These books are sensitive. They prefer an environment of quiet reverence. You might have heard that our library has a collection other shops would lack the skill to curate. Between us, even Master Leverokin was reluctant to house them in his tower. The pen is mightier than the magic wand, apparently. <laughs> They're locked away here for their and our customers' safety. Our finest reserve includes the Tharkia Codex, the Annals of Cassius and Netherese Folly, Sights of the Sealy, and the Curriculum of Strategy. Do any of those interest you? It is said to be written by Lord Cassius himself, the Netherese Arcanist who attempted to replace the goddess Mistra, failed, and was banished for the attempt. Great magical knowledge lies within those pages, but not many can withstand it. That's it. That's what I need. The Annals of Carsus would no doubt have much to say about the Crown's true nature. If only you could read them. Bye. Books as temperamental as these are not on sale. They are secured in our vault, where none can harm them, nor can they do any harm. Consider yourself lucky to have learned of such a book's existence, and then forget about it. The annals of Carsus are best left unread. Customers like you are why I prefer the company of books. To gain access to the vault is through my office. And before you ask, no, you are not allowed in there either. Welcome, dear patron, to Sorceress Sundries. I am an unperson in service of the revered wizard Lerokin, proprietor of this fine establishment. To browse our wares, say, trade. To provide information about the Night Song, say, Night Song. If you are a city official here to collect dues, say, taxes. For all other inquiries, say, other. The provision of information that leads to the retrieval of the Night Song is worth a great deal to Master Leroican. Do you have information regarding the Night Song? Please proceed upstairs for further instructions. Welcome, dear patron, to the floor at the top of the stairs. If you have information about the Night Song, great riches await. If you are here to waste the great wizard Laroakin's time, reconsider. Let your knowledge determine your path forward. The book radiates power, but the words you read in the Codex echo in your mind, guiding your eyes safely across the page. The once indecipherable glyphs now feel dangerously familiar, promising unholy power to those who can take it. As you pass the strange glyphs, you can feel the book resisting, 
ghostly voices whisper at you from the dark, probing and fighting your mind. But your will is iron, and you brush past these shades of the past, devouring every secret the book has to offer. You see now life and death are malleable as clay, to be bent and reshaped by your will, by your power. But as you close the book, a nagging doubt whispers in your mind. What consequences will there be for calling the dead from their rest? Each door named after a wizard of renown. The annals must be behind Cassus's door. The Annals of Carsus. The preamble to a civilization's downfall, committed to parchment by the very hand that wrought its destruction. If the crown atop the Elder Brain was truly forged by Carsus himself, this book will confirm it. All we have to do is turn the page. Devil Raphael was telling the truth. There's no doubt. The crown of Carsus is what's controlling the Elder Brain. And this, this is no mere journal. It contains Carsus's original plans for the crown's construction. His designs for godhood. Not exactly. It was what he did with it that sealed his fate, and, for a time, that of magic itself. The crown was merely the means. The book states that the crown and netherstones were originally one construct, seemingly sundered at the moment of Carsus's downfall. If we can collect the crown setting and the three netherstones, and, with the correct invocation of certain spells and gestures detailed in these notes, I think... I could reforge it. Do not mistake the crown itself for the actions of its wearer, or rather, those controlling its wearer at present. If we could restore its former glory, it would no longer be a mere leash and collar used to subjugate friend or foe. It would be something greater, something divine. Just think of it. The power of the gods in mortal hands at last would be free of doctrine and dogma, confined only by the limits of our imaginations. I promise you, the gods will never grant us such a blessing, no matter how much we worship and adore them. I don't know. Ao does not look kindly on gods meddling in mortal affairs. She may have no choice but to stand by and let events unfold. Even with the fate of the world at stake, she had little more to offer me than the means of blowing myself up at a more convenient time. She's done nothing to help us. Mistra wanted the brain obliterated because of this crown. She fears a world in which such power is beyond her control ready to be claimed by Carsus's successor. Do you think I had not considered that? I have no intention of repeating his folly. Powerful as he was, Carsus lacks some advantages I can lay claim to. I know Mistra, intimately, and I carry a fragment of the weave itself within my body. Carsus achieved many things, hmm, but he never managed that. A long road lies ahead before the crown comes into our possession. All I ask for now is that you do not dismiss this possibility out of hand. Please, at least think on it. I see. I suppose I am asking you to take a leap of faith. Even the most loyal of companions might struggle to land gracefully. I've spent so long feeling... inferior. 
shut out from my destiny over such a simple act of youthful enthusiasm. Perhaps I got carried away with the thought this crown could give me back what Mistra took. Cure me, even. You're right. There aren't many wizards who'd care to be mentioned in the same breath as him, or his folly. Whatever comes of this, we cannot allow the crown to be reforged in Raphael's image. A devil wielding the might of Cassus. It would be the end of everything. Gale of water deep as I live and breathe. <laughs> As do you, I'm glad to see. I hear you've been browsing in the most esteemed of Emporium's sorcerous sundries. <laughs> uh, indulge my curiosity. What wonders did you discover there? The truth, Elminster. How Carsus's crown could yet be reforged or destroyed, as the case may be. Perhaps now you understand what is at stake here, my boy. Though what Mr. asked of you was extreme, it was not without merit, nor demanded lightly. She bids you come to her holy shrine in the Stormshore Tabernacle. There, she will grant you an audience at last. If it was up to her, I'd be a pile of ash along with the rest of the shadow cursed lands by now can't imagine what she has to say to me sorry perhaps she does not make such a gesture lightly the hourglass measuring our time for such alternatives has but a few grains remaining if you will not hear it from me hear it from your goddess uh, what truths she has to offer are for your ears alone, Gale of Waterdeep. <laughs> Godspeed. Poor Gale. I hope he knows that a goddess abandoning him needn't be the end. I know from experience. Rings a bell? Why? Oh, hells. You didn't pick that by hand, did you? They're deadly poisonous. Joking. They're safe. And beautiful. Thank you. I don't have anything to give you in return, I'm afraid. Well, perhaps I can come up with something later, all the same. There she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic. It sets your teeth on edge. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Well, are you composing a poem in your head or some such? Time was, I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. You're right. I am a strong, capable wizard. And this is no more than a casual reunion with an ex-lover. My omnipotent, omniscient ex-lover. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. For a wizard to have the love of the goddess of magic herself it was intoxicating. 
An experience beyond expression. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. Hmm, you're right. A heartfelt apology is the surest way to a goddess's heart and her favor. I pray that she'll be in a forgiving mood. If she weren't the one I'd be praying to. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Gale of Waterdeep. You look well. Mistra. I never thought we'd speak again like this. Why am I here? There is much unsaid between us. But time runs ever short. You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? I didn't want to die. And when I saw the Crown, I thought I might not have to. If I only understood its power. And you believe you have the right to such an understanding. The past cannot be undone with self-pity. Nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic wrought in the brief moment Karsus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. That can't be. It wasn't. It couldn't have been. I only wish to prove myself worthy. I had no idea. You were already worthy. What you lacked was patience. And it cost you dearly. When the Carsite Weave entered your body, your gifts were the first thing it consumed. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure. But one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Karsis to me. I won't let you down again. When the Absolute is vanquished, I will surrender Karsus's powers to you. You have my word. Thank you. May the Weave's light guide your purpose, and its wisdom guide your hand. The future of magic rests on your shoulders, Gale of Waterdeep. I promise you, it is a burden you are strong enough to bear. Back on mortal soil once more. I can't believe I saw it. After all this time. Relieved, drained, proud of myself for summoning the courage to go to her in the first place, and, if I'm being totally honest, a bit lightheaded. As if it wasn't enough to have seen her again, 
She didn't exactly summon me there for small talk. The Carsite Weave. Within me this whole time. I knew the orb was no ordinary ball of magic before it to be Carsus's malignant creation. Gods! How did I not see that? But I should have known. What right had I to go about declaring myself an archmage when I was as foolish as a common apprentice in setting such an entity loose? At least now I'm armed with the truth. And Mistress' expectations. Once I bring the crown of Carsus to her, I can put everything right. The orb, too. I'll be myself again. For all that's worth. I'll have to disagree with you there. Having not one, but two parasitic entities within your body does very little for one's faith in one's personality. Still, I should take the compliment with the same generosity it was given, so... Thank you. If I can promise you one thing in return for your faith in me, it's this. I will use everything in my power to ensure we defeat this evil. I will not let you down. Now, I believe we have a date with an elder brain to get to. Shall we? Mother's milk, your visage speaks of ill tidings. Speak, ally mine. What troubles you? Is he indeed? Pray tell, what does he seek from Dame Aelin? Let them come, and let them find me! Dame Aelin will strike down any who seek to bring her to harm's home. Yet... It is better to cut off the head of the snake... ...than to let its slithering snakeling swarm us unabated. This wizard... This wizard must be held to account. I will wring his neck until he's dead. Oh, his end will be one more strand in the great braid of our friendship. I'm coming with you. I'd like to get a few licks in myself. My darling, we agreed you'd scout for the nearest Salunite Enclave this very night. Let us divide our efforts. All the sooner to be reunited. I won't let you go alone. Who knows what this wizard might have planned? Our closest ally will accompany me, won't you? It will be a swift and fruitful chore. Hie we to this Laroican right away. I am as eager to meet him as he is to ensnare me. What have we here? A magician in a tower, hiding away from the frightening world. What are you so scared of, Magus? Not the Night Song, surely? Why, she's nothing but a relic to be purchased and pursued. At last. There you are, my dear. You will address me with due deference. I am Dame Aelin, and you are a whelp without honor, without pride, with nothing but a tower full of trinkets. My apologies, Dame Aelin. I meant no disrespect. Perhaps we could start over. I am Laroican. I am most pleased to make your acquaintance, and that of your fine companion. Who perhaps heard I was looking for you? <sighs> Dame Aelin, I have discovered a device that would allow your immortality to be shared. It would cause you no harm, no pain of any kind. You serve your mother, Saluna, I believe. She who has blessed our realm with so many gifts. Honor her by sharing yours. 
You do not seek to share my gifts. You seek to poach them. You dare to threaten me with the same magic that held me in torment for a hundred years! <laughs> I had hoped to appeal to your better nature. Perhaps I overestimated you. Hmm. No bother. I have an arsenal of implements capable of convincing you to see reason. But his magic lives. I'd hoped you to keep an open mind, but it seems you're determined to make this as difficult as possible. I have great plans for you, Dame Aelin. And if you will not go quietly, then you'll go kicking and screaming. <laughs> Magicians and their plans for Dame Aelin. Predictable, sadistic, flaccid. Mamadons! Imperatum! You who would see me caged. You who would purchase my submission with profane gold. Let every wicked magus, every vile murtherer, each slaver and misery merchant see. Dame Aelin is watching. She is indomitable. And when her face lights the shadows of your wrongdoing, you are broken! by its beauty! The Firehead Fool is dead. Yet as I stare upon his corpse, I feel... sadness. Why? A gripping in the chest, as though I'd lost someone. Something. Uh, uh, Paladin's fatigue, no doubt. You were excellent in battle, as is your way. And I am proud to fight at your side. I will catch my breath, then to camp I will bring my bones. Moon Maiden be with you. Ah, ally mine. We are reunited once more. I was just regaling sweet Isabel with tales of our prowess. Very impressive. Thank you for helping Aelin. That wizard sounded absolutely dastardly. He did, and it came. Now, my friend, bask in your victory. I will do the same. My darling, we must inform our friend of our news. Indeed. I've scouted a Salunite enclave outside the city. They faced the Absolute's armies and come out battered and bruised. Aelin and I will go to them, provide what help we can. But fear not. When the time comes for you to face the foe of foes, Isabel and I will stand by your side. We wouldn't miss it. Not for anything. Go well, friend. We will see you soon. And with our great powers combined, this city will be saved. Since we arrived in the city, I can't help but feel a little... anxious. But I'm not sure I know why. I don't think it's what happens if we fail that concerns me. 
will be beyond our worries at that point. I think what bothers me is what happens if we succeed. I've never been able to write my own future. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Well, I want to save my parents, of course. Take them away. Far from Shah's influence. Someplace peaceful. Away from the city, perhaps. I like room for animals. Lots of them. All shapes and sizes. So long as they appreciate a warm fire and more affection than they know what to do with. I want to grow flowers. I want to be surrounded by colors every day. I'm tired of darkness. Yes. I want to share it all with you, if you're willing. And it sounds like I have everything I need. More of life than I'd ever imagined possible without Shah. You sleep, but the wicked don't. Someone is here to disturb your rest. Get the hells away from me! Peace, brother. We're here to take you home. The Master needs all seven of us for the ceremony. Come with us and be reborn. We'll live again. The right. The master needs him. He must attend. <laughs> Why should we let Cazador have all the fun? After all he's done to us. Vengeance will taste sweet paired with ascension. <laughs> you think he's ever kept a promise? He will never let us be free. You all know that. After all these centuries of torment, I know what you all want. More than power. More than to walk in the sun. You want to see him dead. He is different. Stronger. Fire in his eyes. Maybe he could take Cazador's place. Maybe he could free us. Perhaps we can get back at Cazador and finish the ritual. The Seven can unite and... Oh! No! No! The bonds hold. He owns us. We have no choice. We must... Obey. Get out of here, Astorian. Before. At least you've met my family now. I can sneak in here. The security shouldn't be too tight. A few charm innocents, maybe. This is the palace of Kazador Zar. Entry is forbidden. Leave now, citizen. The guard's words are clear, but spoken without thought or intent. Behind her eyes, you see nothing. She must be one of the charmed thralls Astarian mentioned. Of course. Whatever the Master desires. Enter freely. And of your own will. Astarian. Vampire dens. What should I expect? The vampires would be a safe bet. Hilarious. 
You belong to the stage. Perhaps the blood-stained sort, with a hooded man standing by, axe in hand. Wow. That's suspiciously welcoming. Another guest for the Master's celebration. I'm afraid you're too late. You'll have to... Master Astarian. What are you doing here? Why aren't you downstairs? Well, obviously I'm on my way down now. So if you could just point us in the right direction. But you're too late. The, the, the doors have been sealed. The ritual is about to begin. Perhaps we should not discuss this around strangers. Speak, damn it! What's going on? It's the Master's ascension. Once the ritual is complete, he is to be reborn. Even more perfect and powerful than before. You should be there. All his children were to attend. He'll be furious you're not. It's too late. Godi has sealed the doors and will not open them until the ritual is complete. Casador gave the key to Godi. And where is this sadistic old sack of bones? It does not matter. You're too late. The Master will be so angry that you miss the ritual. He will do such terrible, terrible things to you. I do not have any more time to waste. There is too much to do. Too much to prepare. door is covered in intricate text, but you can't see anywhere a key might fit. Only a small round hollow engraved with a family crest. It's written in archaic Kozakuran, a rare version of an already obscure language. There are inscriptions like this all over the palace. Casador strictly forbade us from learning the language. You can make out enough to recognize an incantation, but the specifics elude you. You can tell you're missing something, though. You spot a reference to the family signet. Behold! One of Cazador's cheapest tricks. An illusionary wall. Behind it is the kennel. A fetid little cell he throws into when displeased. Looks like an ambush. I know you're there, Golly. You always were sharp, little one. Sharp enough to cut yourself. It's taking everything I have not to grind your rotten carcass to dust. Don't be mad at Cody, child. I only did my job. Only kept you in line. You tortured us. For days at a time. Oh, yes. And you sang so sweetly for me. None of the others screamed like you did. But you're home now, and you brought me a treat, eh? <laughs> a new friend for Godi. Not very nice. Not very friendly. Why are you here then, little one, if not to see Godi? We're here to see the Master, but the ballroom door's locked. Uh, give us the key. <laughs> no, no, it is too late. The doors are sealed on Master's orders. Godi will not open them for anyone, much less for you. Wait! Godi has the key. Godi can give it to you. Here. Here it is. Take it and trouble Godi no more. Let the master know I found Astarian. So this is it. I'm home. Two centuries walking these halls. And I've never once seen the ballroom door locked. Cazador doesn't want anything going wrong tonight.
It does feel strange. Breaking into your own home. Especially if murder's on your mind. Then again, this is hardly the strangest thing we've done together. Although it could be the most satisfying. The signet ring should unlock the ballroom door, but only if we can read the inscription. And I don't know about you, but it's pure gibberish to me. I've seen this language before. Inscribed on the Tsar's signet ring, I think. The ring slots perfectly into place, and the door swings open. You can't be here. No one in, no one out. You're new. Cazador never kept guard dogs before. The runaway spawn. <laughs> You reek of the Master's scent. Come with us. Come to Master. Uh, excuse me. I will not be ordered around my own house by some blowing mutt. <sighs> we bring you to him. We get his favor. <laughs> Strike you down. You stand on a clean metal platform, a beautiful but antiquated elevator. There are some scuffs to show its age, signs of things dragged onto it over the years, but it seems to be in good working order. What in the hells? I never knew this was here. This was always Cazador's private quarters. Only he ever came in here. Well, him and the unfortunate souls we brought to feed him. Approaching the cells, you're met with hollow-eyed faces. There's an almost physical stink of decay and neglect. Ugh, disgusting. Casador never fed on wretches like this. How did they get here? What is Casador doing with them? My brethren spoke nothing of this. You... I know you. You're the one from the tavern. You smiled and joked and got me drunk. No. You're dead. You called me so many sweet things. My name sounded like a lyric on your tongue. Sebastian. You remember me. You were handsome. Shy. You'd never been kissed. You taught me how. And then you destroyed me. It can't be. Beneath the dirt and blood, you notice that every prisoner has a rune carved into their flesh. So Casador marked them too. Bound us all to his ritual. Gods. I know so many of these faces. They're my... conquests. I pursued them, seduced them, and brought them to Cazador. He told us he was feeding on them, but he turned them to spawn. 
He turned every last one. So we'd have souls for this cursed ritual. How long? What? Down here. One hundred and seventy years. You were one of my first. My father. My friends. They're gone. You took them from me. You took everything from me. That's why we're here. To destroy Casador. <laughs> you can't. It's not possible. The Grand Chamber. Just ahead. But even if you can kill him, what then? <sighs> what happens to us? Trust me when I say I know the feeling, but you can resist the urge. Whatever you do, just do it quickly. I can't go and wait. We'll be back. You have my word. Hey! Hey, you! Come closer. Oh, God. It can't be. It is you. I knew it. I'll kill you. Once I get out of here, I'll kill you! Camp! camp. Monster hunters! Uh, the girl camp! Oh, God! My parents' camp! Uh, Chessa, focus! Resist the beast inside you. Uh, you promised. Uh, it's your fault. You did this to us. Didn't he tell you? He's the one that kidnapped us. He's the reason we're spawns. Uh, I'll kill you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Now that you um, <laughs> mention it, I may have done. That. Oh, don't look at me like that. Casador's orders. <laughs> Quite the deviation from my usual routine, of course. Uh, capture, not lure. Uh, I didn't bring them in with sweet rolls or anything. I really forgot about them. Felt nothing the moment I handed them over to him. Oh. My parents. I don't think I'll ever be able to go home. Not like this. You should go. But leave us here. We shouldn't be out there. We'd hurt our families. Behind the exhaustion, starvation, and fear, recognition stirs in her eyes, and with it, hope. You... you really mean it. Casador's uh, uh, got this stuff. It controls the doors. If you get it, you can set everyone free. If you get it, somehow. Good luck. If you fail, well, I suppose we'll be seeing you again in here. God's above. He kept Sebastian. The children, I can understand, leverage against their parents, but Sebastian, I feel ill. 
All the fools and villains who ever fell for my ploys, they're, they're here. There's only one reason they'd all still be here. He must need them for the ritual. Each of the seven, we must have brought in a thousand over the decades. They're all lambs for his slaughter. And if I was to take his place, they'd all die by my hand. Whoever trusted me enough to let down their guard, innocents, idiots, <laughs> and the unlucky. It doesn't matter. I will need to sacrifice them all if I want to perform the ritual. What's the point? They're as good as dead. I thought they were dead. If they are unleashed, they will cause incredible carnage. They will be ravenous. They must die. Better they serve a purpose. They're in a state far beyond anything that ever happened to me. Decades of hatred will have piled up inside of them. I, I can't even begin to imagine. We must find Casador. the pillow rests a skull with a scroll clamped in its bony jaws. The skull's empty eye sockets flare with an eldritch gleam. You feel invited somehow to witness the skull's memories. It seems urgent. This skull is all that remains of the vampire Velios. He turned Casador, gave him the gift, and then taught him the rules of vampiric existence. Valioth's first lesson is always to dominate. Allow none to be your equal. Valioth recalls when Casador reached out to a former friend. His punishment was to watch as Valioth drained his friend dry. Valioth's second lesson is that power comes from solitude. To share with others is to be weak, and to be weak is to fail and die. Velioth recalls when Casador rebelled against him. Casador suffered eleven years of impalement because he failed. Velioth's third lesson is to act not in haste. A near immortal has time to plan. Time to act only when others will pay the price of action. Velioth recalls Casador, his lessons learned, killing him in the rite of perfect slaughter. How they both laughed. Velioth recalls Casador boiling the flesh from his skull, and then to mock him, clamping his schooling scroll in Velioth's jaws. The skull's eyes flash a final time, and its jaws sag open. The scroll with all of Casador's rituals is yours. Velioth is no more. Even his precious rules. Who stands before us? Is this truly our prodigal son? Hm? Do not slouch before me, boy! Have you no respect for yourself? Look at you. Crawling back after abandoning your family. You should be begging our forgiveness. Forgiveness? You've never forgiven anything. Every mistake, every slip was punished. I strove for perfection in all things, even those as imperfect as you. A pity you amounted to so little, despite my efforts. No! No. Fuck you. 
and fuck everything you've ever done to me! I will not speak to cattle. This is between me and the boy. You son of a bitch. You truly forgot my power. You truly thought our bond as creator and creation was all that stopped you from killing me? Hmm? Oh, you are weak, my child. You are a small, pathetic little boy who never amounted to anything. But today, you will finally do something worthwhile. You will burn, and I will ascend. the birth of the Vampire Ascendant! Ecce Dominus! Let me strike you. I will not save. never have to fear you again. But if I finish the ritual you started, I'll never have to fear anyone. Ever. You think me a fool? That I would allow anyone to usurp me, speak the words, and ascend in my place? Hm? The runes I carved into your flesh bind you and all 7,000 souls to the ritual. Complete it, and those bearing the scars will be sacrificed, you included. You are simply a means to an end. I made you to be consumed. I am so much more than what you made me. I can do this, but I need your help. These people died years ago. Trust me on that. All that's left are feral spawn, desperate for blood. If we release them, how many people will they kill? Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. But... If I complete the ritual, think of the power I'll have. With me by your side, we can... we can save the city! We can save ourselves. You... you're right. I can be better than them. But I'm not above enjoying this.
Is... Is it over? <sighs> yes. He's gone. Your choice is a simple one. You can hide here, living in the shadows like parasites. Or you could be more than what he made us to be. You can choose differently, of course. But the consequences are on your head. Casador's staff controlled everything during the ritual. If it controls the cells too, you could decide their fate. The poor wretches in the cells are innocent. They shouldn't have to suffer just because I... lured them here. someone to lead them. Take the tunnels into the Underdark. Find somewhere, well, not safe, but less perilous. What? No, we can't. Just try to keep them out of trouble. I... I think we're done here. Let's go. You killed one vampire, but released 7,000 of his spawn. Have you lost all sense? They were innocents. To kill them would have been an even greater crime. Uh, but if you do decide to go hunting them, know they include your children. They... Oh, they survived? Well, that depends on how you define survived, really. But they are free. They're making their way into the Underdark as we speak. This is... difficult news. We will need to decide what it means. Thank you for what you have done. Slaying Cazador was a great justice. As for the rest, well, time will tell. I will find my little ones. Wherever they are hiding, we will see what can be done. That's strange. Knowing I'll never hear Cazador's voice again. Knowing it'll never command me to bow against my will. I'm free from him. Forever. Invigorating. Terrifying. All of the above. <laughs> I'm still trying to understand it, really. I came so close to losing... everything back there. To losing myself. Back at the ritual, all I could see was the power on offer and the safety it promised. I was so... Blinded by it. <laughs> Just as Cazador was. But you saw something in me. Someone else I could be. Someone who could break the cycle of power and terror that started... <laughs> centuries ago. You saved me back there. I may not have appreciated it at the time, but... I do now. Thank you. <laughs> you did more than that. You... believed in me. Believed I was enough. Just the way I am. <laughs> when I look at my future, anything and everything feels possible now. You saved me from myself and let me walk a new path where I can be free. 
truly, honestly free. This is a gift, you know. Thank you. I won't forget it. This will do. Get in the water. Come on. You're not afraid of getting a little wet, are you? the bottom anymore. It's terrifying. Do people really enjoy this? You know, you didn't need to wait until I was in the water to hold me. things without Shah. I don't want to go back. Not just yet. Now don't you dare stop. Something the matter? I should hope not, after the time we spent together. My spirits are... Thoroughly lifted. Oh? Not feeling any regrets, I hope. I'm glad. I feel the same way. Though, I'm still finding sand in my hair. I wonder what the others will think of that. I suppose it doesn't. I'm glad we have each other. And I hope we'll have more opportunities to slip away. I welcome thee to the Devil's Fee, where every hellish curio's a rarity. So merry be, and shop with glee. You must be awfully familiar with our esteemed Archduke to know about a thing like that. Truly? That's remarkable. I like to deal with remarkable people. Very well. You seek answers. Lord Mammon seeks coin. I will happily mediate. Make me an offer. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Quite the fitting token. Let it not be said that Lord Mammon's servant does not deal with paupers. But I'm afraid you'll need to offer an awful lot more than that. I'll be keeping the coin, though, of course. The first hit's free, eh? Fine. I'll humor you, mortal. Just this once. You stand before Mammon's picklock. Latchkeeper of the Nine Hells. My business is not information, nor hellish curios. Not really. I break people into the Hells. That's my thing. I can reveal to you that I opened a portal for Lord Gortash. My word, this is embarrassing. Perhaps I should have explained our terms better. You asked what I did for Lord Gortash. You paid the fee, and I answered you. Our pact is complete. Would you like to make another transaction? Oh, yes. I should think that'll do deliciously. Lord Gortash wanted to steal something from Mephistopheles, so I punched a portal into the Archdevil's dusty vaults. 
That something was the inimitable crown of Carsus. Gortash absconded with it, catching the interest of a devil named Raphael. His House of Hope is furnished with a great deal of treasures, many related to Carsus. But alas, he lacks the crown itself. He's rather ambitious. One can only wonder what he has planned for the crown. The answers to that can probably be found within his house. What a fascinating proposition. Ludicrous, of course, but fascinating nevertheless. Very well. If you wish to die in Avernus, that's your business. Mine is charging you for it. Of course, such a task will require quite the substantial donation to Lord Mammon's coffers. Such a task would be tantamount to suicide. Do not even entertain it. Then get out of my sight, and don't come back until your pockets drag with gold. Keep out of this, Captain. Do not forget who you serve. Of course, I just thought you might need assistance. I... You feel an all too familiar squirm in the recesses of your mind. The fist has a tadpole, but something's off. Not I. We and we do not serve. Defective. Very well. Another offering to Baal. Quick! Must be quick! This mind is small, fragile. Listen now! Entering her mind is like stepping aboard a sinking ship. The architecture of her consciousness buckles and collapses. Thoughts yield to a flood of overwhelming power. The Elder Brain. Do not waste time. This mind cannot bear us. It turns to liquid. Listen, just listen. We learn. We grow. Loosen our clumsy bindings. Aid us, necromancer, dead. Changeling and tyrant remain at odds. Kill them. You have a place in my grand design. The elder brain turned her into a meat puppet. What the hell else can it do? What? What happened? I do I taste? Fine. Come in, then. You might as well meet the family. Everyone, keep back! Oh, Mallor's Mark, here we go. Are we quite sure she hasn't actually died this time, brother? She looks dead. Smells it, too. Ooh. It has been a hard road. But I can clip you both around the ear to prove I am no ghost. If it would help. Forgive us, Mother. We're just surprised you still know how to find your way home. She always brings the smartest people home, too. Enough, Ryan. I taught you better manners than that. No, you didn't. A sending spell can carry 25 words. Do you know how many Jahira's only message contained in all this time she's been away? Seven. If you are trying to help me, please stop. The message went, I'm sorry, you know what to do. 
So why haven't you done it? You were supposed to get the young ones out of the city. And you were supposed to be dead. That's what your oh-so-stoic message meant, yes? Yet here you are. So, what happened out there? I got my skin saved by this one. We've come to take the fight to the cult. Which is exactly why you all cannot be here. Why? You plan on winning, don't you? You're the one who saved us, so tell me. Are we all doomed? You are a very irritating girl. Uh-uh. This isn't your house, remember? You'll keep a civil tongue under our roof if we let you stay at all. Have mercy, sister. She's old, after all. So old! Seems I'm outvoted. See, mother? That is how you go about talking things through with your family. Now, if there's more to discuss, then bloody well come in and wipe your boots. Hmm. Don't tell mother. I hope you were hibernating, little cub. I can't think of another reason you wouldn't come down to say hello. Jahira! I d d d didn't w want to see if you were really dead. They said... Who said? Jord and Ryan. They didn't think I c c could hear. You little sneak thief. Well, they were wrong. Look! Not dead. I just... had a few adventures. Like, uh... Um... No, Cub. He does not mean me. Now, Cub. Solitude is a wonderful thing, but not too much. Come downstairs and fight with your sisters. Wait... here. I was... K keeping this safe. My Harper pin. Oh, was a certain little sneak thief playing down in my sanctuary? No, no, no. This Harper pin opens more doors than most. Come down to my study and see if you can figure it out. A fine day to you, sir. Are you known to this court? Ugh! A ruffian has breached the manor. I shall have the girl at the door beaten, her hair pulled. Jessam discovered an old family tree in my study. We haven't had a moment's peace since. Tetherian nobility. You might be royalty, Jahira. You don't want to be queen, of course, and Ryan curses too much, so it would have to be me. <laughs> Careful, girl. They have a habit of taking against tyrants there. Huh. I'm not a tyrant. If anyone calls me one, I'll have Fig chop their head off. Save some for the others, all right? I take no responsibility for your plants. You know I'm more of a mushroom man. You've let my study turn into a thicket. Is this what I am hearing? I tended to it. I just let it thrive in its own independence. You know, same way you raised us. I raised you to be a sweet and kind boy. What happened? I watched what you did instead of listening to what you said. This house has taken in a lot of children over the years. Mother dear was sometimes more commander than, well, mother dear. Ha! You see? This one is well trained. I have no need for you anymore, faithless boy. Oh, save your fangs for someone who thinks you might actually use them. I've only ever seen her truly angry once. We were down the market when I was about nine years old. Some merchant started in with the usual. Yes, but where's your family? Whose son are you, really? When Mother was done with him, well, let's say he won't have any sons of his own to worry about. Hmm. Nature's law in action. I 
wondered if it would take you long to spot. Oh, come on. There ought to be supplies here to aid us. The arch druid's eyes and ears have fallen away in her absence. I'm training new ones. Keen eye. But if it's supplies you seek, weapons to aid in our fight, you won't find them behind that door. There is nothing back there of worth to anyone but me. Oh, you need not apologize. I only seek to spare you some disappointment. On my word, all you will find inside is dust. And the moldering keepsakes of a much younger woman. But then... Perhaps I make too much of this. How can I beg privacy when I was not half so trusting on our first meeting? Pass then. Go on. See what it is a foolish old harper thinks worth hiding away. This place is trapped. Right of the timeless body. What's that about? I'd best ask Jahira. A gift from my husband. I've had to renew parts over the years, but the heart remains the same as the day he gave it to me. The threat of spanking never kept the children from poking through my things. Why should it deter you? It is... a ritual. Or it describes one, at least. Practiced by druids of certain esoteric circles. If they be learned and powerful enough, the practitioner of this ritual might slow their aging, extend their life well beyond its natural reach. In greener days, I might have been strong enough to do it. I might be yet, with the right preparations. I make no plans. Only... contingencies. Do not look at me like that. I have been content to see the span of my natural years. A privilege far too few in this world can claim. I do not speak of clinging to life for its own sake, I just... Look back on that life's work, and I wonder... Is it done? The dead three plague the world still. The city still falls prey to small minds like Gortash or lost souls like Orin. It is every Harper's hope to be a light that drives out darkness. But I've lived long enough to see so many of those lights burn out, while the shadows cling stubbornly on. <sighs> Knowing that... Isn't it our duty to burn on if we can? To fight for as long as we are able? Of course. It is our way. Just as it is death's way to meet us along the path. Gently oblivious to whatever it is we want. I spend most of my life fighting those who try to escape their end. Gatherick. Irenicus, Saravok. <laughs> that is not company I would like to keep. In truth, I had put this ritual from my mind. Until last light. Trapped in that darkness. I turned to my research again. What if I was a little stronger? As fast as I once had been. Then you came. And made the question moot. But I kept this, just in case I told myself. A final resort. Perhaps you were not the savior you seemed. <laughs> I had learned better than to think of life as some simple tale after all. There is no guarantee of happy endings, or true heroes. I believe that still. But when I look on all that we have achieved since, I wonder perhaps it is not heroes we need. Only people who are willing to try. 
I do not know what manner of story that makes. But I do know that without an ending, it would be no story at all. So I will accept mine. When and however it comes. As for this city story, well... Well, that is entirely your problem now, Cub. I have no plans to lie down and die. Well, perhaps a little lying down when all of this is done. But I do not plan on going anywhere just yet. And besides, you still have a tadpole in your skull. You're almost certainly going to die first. Thank you for looking out for her. Now bring her back alive. She's too old for any heroic death nonsense. Quite colorful, quite unnecessary. I mean, no. How many times do I need to say it? You sent word about a lead, said that I should come see you about it. Of course, madam. Let me just... <sighs> Forgive me, why are you here? Is this some kind of sick joke? Do you have any idea what I've been through these past few days? My daughter, Vanra, my little girl, she's missing. This stupid, useless fist said she had a lead, but she must have been stuck in dream mist or something. Madam, tell me. You said she was taken from a tavern? You catch the barest tendrils of magic coiled around the flaming fist. Yes, the blushing mermaid down by the docks I told you a hundred times. Why aren't you listening? Someone or something has tampered with her memory. What, um, what were we discussing? What is happening? I feel like I'm going mad. Nonsense, I'm fine. Madam, tell me why you're <laughs> here, and I will assist. God, you're right. Something's wrong with her. Can you help me? I've no family, and Vanra's father isn't around. The flame fist, my last resort. I'm so afraid. I'm so tired. I've been looking night and day everywhere I could. You will? Thank you. I haven't slept or eaten since she disappeared. I'm terrified something has happened to her. Her name is Vanra. She's seven years old and has red hair, like me. We were in the Blushing Mermaid when she was taken. Just stop by the docks. Thank you. I'll head home. Can't stump being around these idiots any longer. Come find me the moment you hear anything. Warning. The property of the individual known as Old Garlo has been deemed unsafe for habitation under City Bylaw 42A. Do not enter. An intruder! These people are under my protection. I'll not let you harm them. Hearken to my words, wicked creature. Return to the pit of evil from whence you came. Don't listen. Who knows what spells it weaves around us? Quickly, Cleric. Helm, 
protector of all, grant me the power to ignite this creature's flesh and burn its bones to ash. Be gone, monster. Your hag mother holds no power here. Wait! Clyde smells no lie. Then you speak truth. You fought a hag before. At ease, everyone. We may have found ourselves an ally. Forgive the paranoia. We're being hunted by a vile and wicked hag. We feared you, her minion. She's already hexed one of us, and any of us could be next. Because we dared to do the impossible. We dared to fight back. You see, all of us here have fallen victim to a hag's vicious ways. But instead of succumbing to despair, we rose above it. Thanks to Mayrina, our leader. Together, we've been helping others who've suffered at the claws of a hag. Only... Mayrina's been hexed by the very hag who now hunts us. You're the one that saved her. The one that ventured to the depths of Ethel's lair. I can hardly believe it. You look so... normal. By Helm, perhaps there is hope. If anyone can help Mayrina, it's you. She's upstairs. But be warned. She's not as you remember her. my hex. Ah, uh, that's annoying. I wanted to play a little longer. Auntie likes her toys broken. She's not going to be happy I had to get my hands dirty. They want to hurt Auntie. They have the book. I will die before I let anyone touch a hair on her head. Treacherous prick! That lying, thieving, scaly little shit! Thanks for knifing the bastard. That makes twice you've saved me. I'm starting to think you're my guardian angel. You too. I've come a long way since we last met. Decided I was sick and tired of feeling stupid, helpless. So I decided I wasn't going to be a victim anymore. This group is made of survivors. People like me who've been hurt by hags. I brought them together to fight back. We tracked a hag to the city, but lost her trail. Right after she snatched a little girl. Oh, I bloody hope not. I see her enough in my dreams. No, Ethel is dead, thanks to you. But this one is no less of a nightmare. The moment I started investigating the missing girl, I felt the hag's eye on me. 
Next thing I was sprouting wool and bleating up a storm. That's her! And she vanished in the maid! That sounds like a lead. We'll do what we can to find the girl, but our chances are a lot higher with you on our side. Check the safe in the back. I've done my homework on Hag since we last tangled with Ethel. Take whatever you need. I know it by heart anyway. This is not true. No pissing or shitting. If you break it, you pay for it. Any fighting and Captain Grizzly has sank you. Got it? Guards above. Not again. You pull a knife on me like the last one and you're getting a boot, you hear? That woman, Lara, Laura, whatever her bloody name is. She was screaming her head off about some kid. Tore the place apart. Ooh, bloody disturbing. Captain Grizzly had a clocker in the end. Threw her out on her arse. Good riddance. Actually, just leave me to burn. <sighs> Can't a captain be bloody hungover in peace? Oh. Why, hello there. Captain Grizzly at your service. What could I do for a long drink of water like yourself? Oh, not this claptrap again. Listen, Laura was here, all right? Knocking back pints like there's no tomorrow. But she was alone. I saw head nor ass of this so-called kid. And when we tried to kick her out, she pulled a knife on my front man. Bet she didn't tell you that bit, huh? Mate, I've boarded ships with less. And so has Laura. She ran with Bart Blackdagger's crew. Heard they tossed her overboard when she gutted the bosun over a game of cards. Now, I'd no beef with her before this. All are welcoming the maid. But threatening my staff, claiming we took her kid, She's bonkers! <laughs> Dangerous. Next time she pulls a knife on me and mine, someone might die. Something has to be done. There's one way and one way only to shut someone up. She's dangerous. And I couldn't call myself a captain if I stood by and did nothing. I hate that it's come to this. But I'll pay a hoard of gold to whoever scuppers her. Permanently. Oh, you're no fun. <laughs> I wanted you to stain your soul with the blood of an innocent mother. Oh, well. Guess I'll just decorate the room with your insides. They'll match my new carpet beautifully. Hello, Petal. Miss me? Did you think you were the first? That I didn't plan for it, Petal? Marina ran off with the child I was promised. Because of you. So I had to find myself a new one. And little Vanra was so very tasty. I'm already showing. 
Doesn't it suit me so well? Venra sits in my belly, growing fat with power. In time, I'll vomit her up and have myself a fresh young hag to train. Unfortunately, that leaves me in a pickle. For a while, I'd love to rip your guts out. I shouldn't. Exertion is bad for the baby, you know. So, walk away. Walk away and let me a fine hag make. You'll kill me, touch me, and the girl dies. And I'll simply return, stronger than ever. <laughs> A woman in my condition should be relaxing in the bath, not dealing with this nonsense. I'll leave you to my crew, matey. And should you somehow survive, stay away. Our van will suffer. <laughs> Ethel again. I was hoping she'd found some remote bomb to rot in. Are you alright? It's a good thing you're doing. find out. You saw her change too? I tried to gut her, but she. She dug her claws in me and... Uh. <sighs> Magic tickles your senses, the same you felt around the flaming fist in Basilisk Gate. Someone, or something, has tampered with his memory. Ah, uh, hear me. I know the captain's a bit of a battle axe, but a hag. You're out of line. about it. This is where the hag must be. Oh, the big tough hero finally showed up. I told you, Petal, you can't hurt me without killing little Zanra. I have your feet, so do the heroic thing. Die! What did you... Stay down, Zanra! No! Sweet, sweet girl. It was everything. I'll never forget it. Here, a token from the pirate life I left behind. Thank you for being braver than half this city put together. Why? Is She's dead, isn't she? Ethel is dead. Oh, thank 
The gods! You hear that, Connor? Ethel is dead! Oh, you didn't change back. You're still a... a zombie. I thought with Ethel gone... Never mind. I'll... I'll find another way to turn you back. Somehow. I know. Damn it. I know. Connor. I love you. I've loved you since we were kids. And you picked me bluebells and asked me to the summer fair. But you're gone. And this thing isn't you. Not anymore. Then why does it feel so terrible? Oh. Here. Thank you for killing Ethel. But I'd like you to go now. I'll be fine. I know I'm stronger than this. I just need some time. Shouldn't go wandering in dark alleys. Very dangerous of me. Gets people killed. Oh, but surely we're safe with one of Nine Finger's big strapping boys to protect us. That's her sigil on your ring, is it not? Eyes to yourself, elf. You're here to see Nine Fingers? She didn't tell me. Always don't let anyone through, Tuscon. Never hears a list of special guests. Confusing. Come, I'll take you to the guild hall. Nine Fingers is inside. It's an orphanage, Ukta. What would you have me do? Seize their toys as payment? Well, they fail to pay tribute. We should withdraw our protection. At the very least. And cede more ground to the Stone Lord. <laughs> You're not suggesting I yield a single inch of the city, my city, to this cult. I... <clears throat> we already look weak. If you're seen to be forgiving debts... I didn't say forgive. Seize the building. Are many children old enough? If they protect what's mine, we'll consider that a start on what's old. Yes, Guildmaster. I... Excuse me! This is a private council! Keep your underpants clean, Ukta. We're playing host to a hero. You owe me a gold piece, Grandmother. When I heard you died out in the wilderness, I made an offering at Kelimvor's well. Of gold? Oh, I did not know I meant so much to you, Guildmaster. No, I'm terribly sentimental. Case in point, I've just let a harper walk through my guild hall, noticeably unholed. Because I'm curious about why you're here and who it is you've brought with you. This is the one who saved my life. So really, he owes you your gold piece. But we can settle debts later, Nine Fingers. For now, we need help. We're searching for Mints of Rashomon. A big name, that. Such information does not come cheap, High Harper. Not in normal times. Of course. Seeing as these are not normal times and we're all such good friends, I'll do better than tell you where he is. I'm bringing him here as we speak. Or... part of him, at least. I gave no orders about the condition of his corpse. What treachery is this, Nine Fingers? Have you thrown in with the Absolute too? Against my own city. Careful. You're in very real danger of hurting my feelings. 
It's Minsk who's found his faith with Faerun's newest god. And a new name with it. Stone Lord. Lies. Exactly the one. Guild crews may be prone to exaggeration, but not in this case. In his short reign, the Stone Lord and his crew have earned a reputation. Pure brutality. No survivors. And where he mows my people down, this ripe little cult takes root. But not for much longer. We have word on where he plans to hit next. And he'll find us ready to hit back this time. Nine fingers. Estelle. Call off your ambush. Tell us where he is, and we'll handle this. We? I heard what happened to your harpers, Jahira. I'm sorry, but this fight's too big for you alone. If you're half the friend you're posing as, you'll tell her that her part in this is done. The Stone Lord's fate is sealed. We have a bigger war to fight. I'd rather turn our talk to that, but if you need a moment, Jahira, well, you've earned that much. My guild hall is open to you. Have a drink, Jahira. Have a rest. Just leave well enough alone. It would be a shame for the city to lose two of its heroes in one day. There's little point in pressing Nine Fingers further. She means what she says. But we swore no vows. She won't tell us where to find Minsk? Someone else in her guild hall will. We need to be swift. You are not known to me. For supplies, seek the bugbear. To trade trinkets, the fetcher's brats. I am Ukta, duly elected guild bursar. And I will not have my time wasted. Oh, is that what Nine Fingers was doing earlier? Wasting guild time with this Stone Lord business. Hmm. You might say so. I could not possibly comment. <laughs> I sense there is no love lost between the two of you. I need not love to serve. You have a point you wish to make? I have not come so far by indulging in petty disputes. But I am open to transactions of mutual benefit. I am interested in gaining access to vaults beneath the counting house. I'd pay well for keys to those vaults. Provided said vaults are uh, not emptied prematurely, of course. <laughs> I suspect that what you seek might also be found beneath the counting house. I tell you this only as a matter of mutual interest. She plans to ambush Minsk at the counting house. But what the hells would he want there? What you do with that information is a matter for yourself. Now, back to the vault keys. Do we have business to conduct? The counting house. More bastion than bank, I'm afraid. Minsk must have a way in. But he's never had much use for coin beyond whatever sharp steel it could buy. There must be something in the vaults the Great Chosen are after. All the more reason to get there. Swiftly. I have no reason to doubt the Guildmaster's information. Only her conclusions. The Stone Lord she describes sounds nothing like Minsk. As for the name, well, a bad joke, perhaps. The time of troubles ended almost a century and a half ago. I weathered the years between with all the elven grace you have no doubt come to expect. But do you know how Minsk, a human, passed those years? I'll give you a hint. They named him the Beloved Ranger. You recall the urban myth that trickled through the lower city fest halls some years back? A hero who had been turned into a statue, returning to life in the city's hour of need. Should have at least locked the place yes. up. 30 in that pouch. 40 in that one. 80 down to 17. Wait. Hello. 
Count. I was barely eight years Welcome to the Counting House. I'm Head Clerk Mead, honey. How may the Fellowship of Financiers serve you? You seem a little nervous, sir, Meat Honey. Had some difficult customers today? One in particular calling himself the Stone Lord, perhaps. The who? The what? All right, fine. The head banker may have just taken a customer by that name down to the vaults. Rather large, rather heavily armed, which is against regulations. But I'm sure the head banker knows what he is doing. <laughs> I assure you, he does not. You are right to be nervous. But let us pass, and all will be well. Uh, well, who is this Stone Lord to you? That would be most unusual. But then so is our visitor. <laughs> that he is. But don't worry. We can handle him. Very well. Show the guards this temporary vault pass. And should my superior ask, keep my name out of it. Account holders only from here. Vault pass? Right. <coughs> Descend and know. Upon entering the vaults, you forego the protection of city and church law alike. Which is to say, keep to your own vault and you'll be fine. It's still moving. Hush your fussing. Nine Fingers had this one made especially. That little mouthful will barely slow it down. But the stories. Stories. Two tales and big names, lad. Don't let them fool you. Elminster the Archmage, Drist the Drow Exile. Heroes have power, I, but not half so much as we do. A little coin into the right purse, a soft word in the right ear. It's not glory that spins these planes, lad. It's gold. See? No. Muradin's cracked clay. There is one thing Minsk hates more than beasts with bad breath. It is those who are tricksome with the truth. And turnips. But you are no turnip. Let that be of comfort. In your final moments! <laughs> Meet Minsk! He still seems very much himself to me. You... Stone Lord? Huh. Better to call yourself Stonehead! Your false face does not fool my eyes. I will cut until you look like the monster you truly are! Somehow, you are making even less sense than usual. Perhaps I can explain. The Stone Lord sees through your lies, shapeshifter! Count yourself lucky he cannot stay. Nine Fingers set a poor trap, little banker. Let the Absolute's Faithful show you how it is done. Now come, Stone Lord. 
We have the gold. And the Absolute has need of it elsewhere. As you say, Jaira. Slarning shape changers! Enough! Let us deal with these cultists. Then find out where they are nesting. Can't obey. You can tell Nine Fingers this was not my fault. She swore that Mimic could swallow a bloody owl bear. Wait. You're no guild sworn. Who are you? Gratitude of the gold variety, I suppose you mean. Good luck with that. The Stone Lord just cleared our vaults. And now he has enough gold to make himself a lord in truth. Funny that. I don't give a damn about him, but I care very much where the coin went. As chairman of the Fellowship of Financiers, I can assure you we'd reward you well for the return of the coin he took. Not for us, you understand. For the common Baldurian. Who knows what he's planning to do with it? Try all of it. Every penny of civilian lodgings, anyway. I mean, not like we'd lead him into the private vaults, but still. A lot of Baldurians waking up poor tomorrow. What he can do with that kind of coin... Oh, ...doesn't bear thinking about. Good for you. I happen to care a very great deal. Retrieve the coin, and I'll make sure you are well rewarded. There's treasures greater than gold. Feel free to poke around this place and it'll help you pick up the Stone Lord's scent. Me? I've got ledgers to amend. These footprints started in the sewers. children my sweet ones what have they done to you i'm hungry father i'm so hungry it hurts father the hunger it never stops please do you know of anything that can be done i've been fighting it but i think you're right Better that than they start feeding off humans. Arabella seems not to notice you as you approach. She's as intent on examining a peculiar stone as she is unbothered by the corpses littered on the ground. Hey! I had a feeling you'd show up. It's sort of our thing. Like it's fate or something. Check out the stone. It's magic. Incredible, right? You are flooded with memories of the distant past. Creatures slain, lovers reunited, spells crackling through the air. The stone holds records of all who have passed by it. Arabella is collecting them. It's as natural as breathing for her. Bandits came at me with daggers. They didn't know who they were messing with. And I've only scratched the surface. I want to know everything. 
Bone Man was right. The Weave will take care of me. I just need to listen. Yep, and I like it that way. Bone Man told me to follow the Weave, to let it guide me. I've learned a lot thanks to him, and I'm still learning. Don't worry about me, I'll be just fine. I'll see you soon enough. Bone Man said so. All the coin seems to be there, if a little blood stained. You lot are enthusiastic about your lord's work. Our lady. We serve only the absolute. Oh, silly me. We Zen to him are so long past our own godly roots, I'm afraid I forget the half of them. But you, I know. When did you start worshipping gods? Did they give your wee rodent a worm friend, too? <laughs> rodent? Enough! You will show the Stone Lord proper respect, and you will return to the Guild Hall and do as we have paid you to. Of course. I only thought... Wait. Flop all you wish, little fish. But Minsk has caught you. On that note, good luck. The job will be done by the time you get to the Guild Hall. <laughs> Sister, Minsk does not like this. Today, you fool. Against the darkness swarming, his senses a single light glows. Rage, flaring brighter every moment. He won't stay down for long. Tell your Elithi to protect him from the Elder Brain's influence. Quickly! No. This one will not aid our cause. Get rid of him. <laughs> Don't be foolish. He is too unpredictable. He will only be a hindrance to us. No. I will not be coerced into protecting him. You do not see what I do. His thoughts, his mind, pure chaos. The Mind Flare pours poison in your ear, I think. Tell it I will tear the prism from your grasp and throw it into the deepest lava pit I can find. Long after our bones are dust and ash, the walls of its prison will still be burning. Now help my friend! She bluffs. Surely she would not risk the fate of all for one simple. Fine. Have it your way. His mind unfolds beneath yours. A still lake pulls you down into its depths. Images flash by. Battles fought and friends fallen. His rage grows colder, burrows deeper, as a familiar face crystallizes before you. Jahira. You killed her! You are being dramatic. The instant's hesitation is enough. With a sensation of terrible rending, something vast and nameless falls away from his mind. There. It is done. <coughs> Jahira? I do not understand. Good. That means you're back to your old ways. We have a lot to discuss. But first, you have someone to thank. In the sudden silence, your minds merge once more. More memories, sensations, but passing too quickly for you to track. In the same breath, you share everything that happened to you. The Nautiloid, the Absolute, the Chosen of the Dead Three. You... 
You saved Minsk. While he danced like a Mind Flayer's meat puppet. Why? A level head and a kind heart. It is well that Boo kept me from crushing either. I would be rid of this parasite. Minsk takes orders from only one tiny beast. And he is much cuter than any mind maggot. He is... Uh, he is... Where is he? He's on his way! My friend, from our brief sharing of skulls, I know you have faced many strange beings, but none like this. Whatever happens, show no fear and stay your hand. Trust in Minsk. Minsk finds that the less thinking he does, the easier the trusting comes. Wait! You gaze into Minsk's soul and see his foul crimes. You smell the stench of evil upon him, pointy claws primed, ready to scratch out his eyes. I am sorry, my friend. I am at the mercy of your faultless justice. Now, if you must burrow through my blackened heart, I am ready. No? You are certain? Oh, <laughs> such boundless compassion. You are all heart. And whiskers. And cute little nose. Uh, you are right, of course. There is still much evil for Boo and Minz to stamp out. But we need not fight it alone. I have a new face to show you. But it is not a villainous one for the clawing, understand? <laughs> you, this is Boo. And Boo, meet... you? No, it is a hamster. A miniature giant space hamster. Fear not, you will learn the difference in time. Those villains locked Boo away, lest his righteous gaze cause their tadpole to flee in terror. Now we are together again. All will be exactly as... Boo! Why do you use such language? Uh, once more, my hamster proves himself my greater half, and makes the path clear when my mind is fuzzier than his tiny bottom. He says we will join with you, and cleanse Baldur's Gate of Evil! Together! To camp, then! For his heroics here today, Boo has earned the most vigorous of back scratchings. I think you might have made a terrible, terrible mistake. Huh? Chasing rumor halfway around the city and back. Crossing the guild. Wading through filth. Defying the one creature upon whom your very life depends. All for a madman and his rodent. 
The Absolute threatens thousands, the entire coast. And still you risked much to help one man. I should berate you, but I can only say thank you. Your reasons were your own, but whether you meant for it or not, your fight is our fight, huh? Both of us, to the very end. Ah, those misty eyes are just age. Yes, I feel myself growing older as we stand here. <laughs> so, lead the way. We're yours to command. Christ. See anything of yours? No, you didn't. Easy. Okay. Ah, you survived. Which means my employers are dead, I take it. No matter. Gives us a chance to talk. Nine Fingers is done. My Xenterim stand ready to purge this place of everyone loyal to her. So all I need to know is, does that include you? Or not? You fail to see the bigger picture. Yes, they offered us money, but more than that, they offered an opportunity. The money is a bonus. The Zenterim have been trying to crack Baldur's Gate for years, but Nine Fingers' grip has been too strong. And look what it's come to. Her guild is disorganized, undisciplined. The cult broke them in a matter of days, while my Zenterim still stands strong. A guild under our control can do what Nine Fingers failed to. Drive the Absolute out of the city once and for all. We're all on the same side. If there are spoils to be split afterwards, well, I'm sure there's enough to share. <laughs> a hero. There's a time for heroics, my friend, and a time for common sense. This was the latter. To arms, Centurim! The guild is ours! Once we clear out the vermin. May the gods take you first. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. Zenterim aren't known for their loyalty, but I thought the bastards would keep to their contract at least. I'm too nice for my own good, I suppose. But I was in a pit, and you helped pull me out. For that, I'm grateful. You'll have what guild blades I can give when the time to take the Absolute comes. So, just tell me what you need to get us there. No! Will we be brave? For a deceiver? It's not a lie. If you would just listen, I could explain. You have done quite enough explaining, Bulafam Gadam. You have poisoned the very hearts and minds of these good, kind, gentle citizens with your lies. Your delusions. Your conspiracies! Though you hide behind a mask of stories, we have seen beyond the veil. We see what you really are. Fearmonger. Hear, hear! Attention seeker. Hear, hear! Agent of chaos. Your parasite stirs in recognition. This man is infected. Wreck the hells follow! Today, citizens, we rid ourselves of this cankerous sore. Today, we burn away all falsehoods. Today, we will be divided no longer, for today, we rise in truth. Don't you stand there? Help me, gods damn it! Help me! Of course we'll save you, Volo. 
I think this mob has made the rather silly mistake of taking you seriously. The newcomer speaks, and speaks of evidence, and trials, and justice. And in so doing, they delay their very own salvation. Dear citizen, dear friend, rest assured you will have your justice. But I'm afraid the time for trials has passed. Now is the time for judgment! thought I was done for. I suppose thanks are in order. Again, what's an heroic story without a little risking of his neck, eh? And you know what they say, the bigger the story, the more people want to kill you for it. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. But not here. Too many eyes, ears, and where Pom was about. Meet me at your camp. It is splendid to see you again, my friend. If you hadn't saved me from that mob, I'd be penning a guide to the afterlife based on first-hand experience. Perhaps you would hazard a guess as to why the mob turned on me? Quite right. But it is not Orin herself who has marked me for death. It is her dread master. The Lord of Murder has returned. As he did a hundred years ago, Baal has set his accursed sights on Baldur's Gate. And his temple runs red with the blood of the innocent. Orin is his chosen. And like Saravok before her, she is able to take on the savage form of the Slayer. If the Slayer is not stopped, it will slaughter every living thing in this city. As one of those things, I'm particularly eager to stop it. And there is a way. I have a study of the beast, penned by the wizard Irenicus himself. It contains all the knowledge needed to slay the Slayer. Now I just need a brave adventurer. Willing to face Baal's Chosen, and to put the knowledge into practice. Wonderful! I can scarcely think of anyone more suitable. It will serve you well. A study of the Slayer penned by John Irenicus. It's one of a kind, so do try to keep it away from the inevitable bloodbath, hmm? I am a living witness to Baal's defeat those hundred years ago. So I know your battle against him is not futile. He can be stopped. But not all of those who stood against him survived. And those who did were never the same again. I wish you luck, my friend. And I hope that when I see you again, you'll be in one piece. Uh, two or three at most. My friend, now we have settled the matter of the guild, I fear there is something I must tell you. You and Boo both. It may shock you both to know, but Minsk and this Stone Lord, they are one man. The same one man. And that same one man is Minsk.
Minsk does not blame Minsk. Minsk blames the Stone Lord. But if the Stone Lord is Minsk, then, well, uh, Minsk grows dizzy. I wish to believe the Stone Lord's evil was the worm Malone, attainting my thoughts with foul dung. But I see now the dung was within Minsk all along. So I wonder if Minsk can be a villain and Nine Fingers a hero. Must it be so with all creatures? Is there good and evil within us all? <laughs> Boo calls this nonsense. Less thinking of bad thoughts, says he, and more breaking of bad bones. But still, I would hear what you have to say on the matter, my friend. <laughs> it is strange. A worm sits within my skull, twisting my thoughts. But it is you that have made Minsk see the world anew. You, my friend, are the true parasite. There is good and evil in all. Let us go crack villainy skulls so that the virtue might leak free. Yes, Boo. I am becoming something of a philosophizer. Oh, the mind of Minsk is a simple place. Of what strangeness do you speak? The memories resurface. A lifetime of battles blurring into one. A single constant is Minsk, launching into the fray no matter the foe, be they god, monster, or man. It seems just the barest glimpse of what the man before you has seen and done. But enough to know that he has no right to still be alive. Ah, wait! That look in your eye. I know exactly what visions of Minsk you have seen to cause you such wonder. My pants. Thrice laced in the Rashomar style, so that a berserker might split skulls without fear of splitting bridges, too. They are fiendishly complex, but fear not for Minsk. With training, he has learned to master the many little knots. Well, as have you, no? Do not forget that when you gaze into Minsk, Minsk also gazes into you. We both fight evil, wherever it is found. The who and where are less important than the hamsters you meet along the way. On this matter of sharing memories, I see no reason for us to worry at one another's worms. If there is more we wish to know, we can simply ask, no? Is it power? True, it has made Minsk strong. Boo can scarcely get comfortable, so firm has my physique grown. But... What does the parasite take in return? It is a horror wrapped in honey. Stay your sweet tooth, says Boo. Ah, you come in search of stories. It is not yet time to tuck Boo in for the night, but very well. After our adventurings with the Ballspawn, Boo had had his fill of godly flesh. So, we returned to Baldur's Gate for a time. After all, in every city there is a sweaty underbelly, crying out for a virtuous scrubbing. None better to wield a brush than Minsk and Boo. <laughs> Perhaps we rubbed some villain's rump a little too raw. This Minsk does not know. One moment we stood in the city slums, the next, ambush! Then Minsk and Boo walk on the wide with stone dust in sensitive places.
Aha! Perhaps this is the reason, Boo. It is not because of the legendary thickness of my skull. The mind of Minsk was occupied with important matters. I was browsing a slum vendor stall, looking for Boo's favorite nuts. And then, I was stolen. For Minsk, those years passed as quick as a hiccup. It was long ago, then... Hic it is now. I do not like these metal men on the streets. Or the villains who hide behind them. But the new world is not so different to the old one. The city still clings to the hill. The sea still stretches on forever. And the stench of evil still makes Boo wish for a tiny peg on his nose. As long as that stench remains, no matter how old or young the world is, Minsk and Boo will not rest. Countless tales are told of Boo and Minsk. Many of them are so outlandish that even I do not know if they are true. Did Minsk bravely fend off the seductive vials of a succubus in the cloisters of Candlekeep? Maybe. Did he take a bath in the river Styx and temporarily forget himself? I do not remember. Did he travel with a spawn of the god of murder, who warred against his evil brethren and battled triumphantly at the throne of Baal itself? Of course! It was a splendid adventure! The bards sing of fallen gods and mighty battles, but that is a small part of any saga. They do not sing of the times in between, when Saravak's butt had been kicked so hard that we thought he would never return. We settled in Baldur's Gate for a while. Ryan's Ward, Imoen, Jahira, Minsk, Boo, and Dainair, my witch. She hated the city at first. Too busy, she said, too noisy, too many people. She complained of the smell, although she complained of Boo's smell too, and he smells of fresh honey cakes, so Minsk believes her nose was confused. Then, one day, we walked past a shop full of wonders. Tiny magics fizzed in the air, and wizards from every corner of the world bakered and bartered. Sorcery sundries. <laughs> Dinah here fell in love. Dragged poor Minsk there every day, and made them stand watch while she browsed the shelves. Minsk frowned and complained, he felt more like a babysitter than a berserker. But how Dinah here smiled. Not long after, Minsk and Boo were captured, and Dinah here was dead. Oh, I would gladly be a babysitter again to see her smile. That is what I remember more than any battle is against Baal and his spawn. Yes, Boo. I know you miss her, too. Boo says the tadpole thrives on her misery. To think dark thoughts is only to feed the darkness. It pleases Minsk more to sour its stomach with good thoughts. Or better yet, not to think at all. With this in mind, Minsk thinks he has gathered enough fluff from gazing at his navel for the moment, no? Zahira! Boo is trying his best to explain, but I still do not understand your anger. Do not hide behind your hamster, Ranger! You do not understand because you do not listen! We were the first to discover the cult. And if you had only waited, we might have marshaled our numbers and... Good does not wait for evil to button up its breeches. When it offers buttocks for the smacking, Minsk and Boo greet cheek with hand. This mess falls on our heads, Minsk. The city under siege, its people poisoned by the cult. 
It all might have been avoided if you had just put your feelings aside and listened. You mean the doppelgangers? It is no comfort to me that my faith made this fool all the easier to lead. The point remains. You meant well, Minsk. But you exposed the city to harm. You helped the cult spread. And worse, perhaps than any of this. You forced me to leave you behind. But... This is where Minsk falls short of the understanding, Jahira. What else is a Berserker for, if not to charge into danger ahead of his Weklaren? The Weklaren, wise women of Rashomon, each bonded to a Berserker bodyguard for life. There is no higher title, nor deeper bond, in all of Rashomar custom. Weklaren? Means, I am not your witch. You are not my bodyguard. This is not some high lodge of your homeland. Who agrees? You're a queer kind of witch. But this city is a queer place. And Minsk, you may have noticed, is sometimes strange himself. The titles matter not. Only this. When Minsk does as Minsk does, and charges in to make a mess, Jahira does as Jahira does, and finds a way to save us all anyway. Oh. I fight alongside fools. You hear that, Boo? We fight alongside the Weklaren again. I am your friend, Ranger. I am not your witch. There will be no ointments or healing bombs. Not even for Boo? You do not have an appointment. Yet you seek an audience with Mr. Carrion. Ah, yes. You were drawn to me. A wanderer, bearing the scent of death. You are familiar with the necromancy of Fae. I have heard the spirits whisper its name. Few books have the power to send a shiver through the living and the dead. Tell me, what did you make of its contents? Such a book is for those who make only the shallowest ripples in death dark pools. I inhabit the depths. Clearly these are not waters you know how to swim in. I would hate to be the one who helps you drown. Perhaps one day the book will reveal its secrets to you. Until then, they're best left between its covers. Unless you have any other business with me, I suggest you return to the Domain of the Living. You might be capable. Very well. You may help me with a small matter. I have an assistant, Thrombo. A conduit I used to maintain my connections with the ethereal plane. Unfortunately, he has deserted his duties. He has not gone far. But given the sensitivity of his nature, I would prefer that he is not free to roam the city. Return Thrombo's body to me, and I will see that you are suitably compensated. My child, that would be asking the impossible. He is already dead. He is... Uh, what do they call them here? Ah... A zombie. A waif I rescued from the jaws of death and gave a second chance at earthly purpose. 
If he does not value the gift I gave in reanimating that wretched flesh of his, then I will take it back. It is my property, not his. Had I thought you were the type to shout his name from the rooftops, I would never have offered you the job. Thrumbo is not alone in his ingratitude. He has led others in my service astray. Three of them, beggars and zombies alike. The others lack even Thrombo's modicum of intelligence. It should be no great task to wring his location from one of them. Then, with the spirits herein our witnesses, the arrangement is made. They will follow your progress with great interest, as will I. Change your mind. Offer's still there. Go on. Have a swing. Carrion sent you. Shit. Don't think about trying anything. I'll fight back. That's all right. Thrombo's more of a talker than I am. Thrombo was going to get us a boat, but I haven't heard from him since. He must be somewhere near the water. I just hope he didn't drown. to be good. Defender of the people. Can't give up now. The activate activated. Uh, I'll the activated that one later. I was always good at hiding, but I'll find her this time. You recall where you've smelled this beggar's rotten musk before, in Mystic Carrion's chambers. This is one of the runaways he seeks. No, not him. He isn't allowed to play. Swumbo said he can't find us. Swumbo said not... not to tell anyone where we went. I can. That's good, because I like you. You're nice, like Swumbo. 
he told me what to do, but he said it very quickly. I didn't understand. All I remember is down the stairs, across the sand, down the stairs, across the sand. Just yes. Um, arms for the poor. An air of decay hangs over the stooped beggar's form. The same that tainted mystic Carrion's chambers. This is one of his runaway servants. Anything you can spare for a humble beggar? Rumble? Is he in trouble? Yes, what an excellent idea. Rumbo had a plan. He was going to find us an abandoned house. Somewhere to hide away from Carrion. stench is unmistakable. Death, decay, despair. This must be Thrumbo, the runaway mystic carrion was so eager for you to retrieve. This is my spot. Go on, find your own. Mystic carrion? You're working for him? Oh no. No, no. I knew he wouldn't let us leave in peace. You don't have to help him. He's the one you should be after, not me. You've met him. How can you need more justification than that? He, he murdered me. Murdered my friends. Snatched us right up from the dark side and and made us these, these things. Monsters, fit for cutting and, and grinding and, and desecrating the dead. He constantly abuses us, makes us do the, the worst things you can imagine. There used to be five of us. My friend Dallas, he couldn't take it anymore. One day, I saw him drive a coffin nail right through Carrion's skull. Then another, and another. We thought he had done it. Freed us all. Then when dawn came, Talus seized up suddenly like something had got a grip of him. We ran to help, but he just exploded. I got so much blood and, and pulp in my eyes. When I look back, Carrion was just stood there, completely unharmed. We'd have to stop him resurrecting somehow. But I don't know how. Since Talus died, I've been watching Carrion. Trying to figure out his secret, and I think, I think he's a mummy lord. After Talus died, Carrion blindfolded me and took me into a strange place. A foul and ancient place. Somewhere the living wouldn't dare to tread. Down there, he showed me a jar said it contained the secret to eternal life. And if I behaved, he would share it with me. I, I think it was his heart. I'm not stupid. I know what he did to my friend. Gods, how I'd love to smash that bastard jar. That's how you kill mummy lords, you know. I'm not sure, but in the house, beneath Carrion's salon, there's a chamber. He never lets anyone down there, so it must be hiding something important. 
Perhaps it's there. But be careful if you return to Carrion. He'll know you spoke to me. Make sure he doesn't see or smell you. He'll turn you into one of us, and he'll know I sent you. I don't want to die like Talis did. I want to live. Well, you know what I mean. Some sight. A necromantic ritual, perhaps? This jar, it feels like death itself. A sure sign of necromancy at work. A jar that grants immortality, hidden inside a zombie. It's almost poetic. You came back. Please, tell me you found a way to destroy Mystic Carrion. What? His right heart was inside of me this whole time. Get it out. I have to get it out. That slimy bastard. He hid it in me the whole time. Please, take that foul thing and grind it to dust. And I will need it. Not now, Carrion's gone. You had best not linger or he'll attract attention. Welcome, friend. Your burdens are soon to be made as light as a feather. Trust me. Welcome to the House of Grief. Or perhaps welcome is the wrong word, Shadowheart. There's been some debate whether you'd even show up and face the consequences of your actions. I assumed you tried to flee, like a craven. Spare me your venom. I'm sure the Mother Superior will have plenty of her own. All in due time. As I said, in due time. First, you submit to the mapping of the heart. Only then can we know what is to be done with you. Follow me. A whole stolen childhood spent in these halls. The Mother Superior must be close. Soon this will all be over. They already heard how you disgraced yourself before Lady Shah. How she marked you as the enemy. 
But it is quite another thing for them to see it for themselves. I am very glad you decided to return. A cautionary tale such as yours will be studied by Lady Shah's initiates for years to come. Ah, uh, you finally found yourself a following, Mother Superior. And you only had to hollow out their heads to do it. Always a pleasure to see old acquaintances. But you would be wise to not interfere in this matter. But perhaps I can make a case for some small measure of mercy. Give me the artifact, and I can at least make this quick. Enough. I don't answer to you. Not anymore. I'm here for my family. That's right. I know what you did. And it's not going to be quick. This is your family. And now you have turned your back on it. The artifact was your last chance to prove yourself. And you squandered it. Such misplaced camaraderie. <laughs> How about this? Surrender this one to me, now, and you can leave freely. And consider Lady Shah's forces your allies in the battles to come. As you like. Lilala! For Shah! Shah's instrument. <laughs> you cannot win. It. Send me to Lady Shah's embrace. She still has answers I need. My parents. Where are they? So blunt. Have you forgotten all the interrogation techniques I taught you? Where is the finesse? Answer me! They are right through that door in the Chamber of Loss. Where they have been all along. You saw them many times, only we made you forget. But they didn't forget. They watched as we molded you. They watched, they wept, they bled, often at your hand. It may not be a happy reunion, but it will be a memorable one. Why? Why me? Why all this effort? Lady Shah commanded me, and I obeyed. I do not question. I merely act as she wills me to. I had an enclave in Waterdeep, you know. Much grander than this. Shah ordered me to raise it. Kill all who followed me. Claim they betrayed me. When in fact, I slew those who showed nothing but loyalty. Shah had me do that, and I did, to cover my tracks, to usher in you. What are you talking about? You became my mission, to take a child of Salunas and turn her over to Lady Shah, to show that all light fades and darkness will prevail in the end. All this was to make you into what the Dark Lady needed you to be. The planning, the training, those deaths in Waterdeep. It was all to groom you to replace me at her right-hand side. And still you threw it away.
want to see my parents. And I don't care what happens to this one. She's been in my head long enough already. Do what you like. I know you'll choose well. What are you doing? Come back and finish this yourself. You owe me that. Let go, mother. Embrace loss. I draw near, my lady. I see them. I see my parents. Gods. What's been done to them? It can't be. Another vile trick. <laughs> No, there is no trick. It's her, Jennifer, Jan, our little girl. Moon Maiden's Grace, it is you. I'm here to get you out of here. They're all gone. It's over. to reach for Saluna, my hold on you bites deeper. If you had learned, if you had obeyed, there would be no pain. But you struggle on. You will make things worse for yourself and for them. Victory. Your victory is but a guttering candle in the dark. Temporary. Inconsequential. Enough! I'm taking my parents away from here. I'm taking them away from you! You cannot. We are still bound to you. You cannot both free us and free yourself from her curse. The Moon Maiden needs you more than she needs us. You are the future. You must return to the fold. We are the past. And our duty is almost done. Eloquently put. His mind stood up well to his time here. The same cannot be said for your mother. Such brief, fragile lives humans lead. This is my final lesson. I leave you now to dwell on your mistakes and make your choice. Shah's parting words make your flesh crawl. There is no lesson to be learned here, only a family's torment, a spiteful goddess's whims, and an unspeakable choice to be made. She's gone. I, d I don't understand. Shah will never admit defeat. Not until she has stolen one last thing from you. We cannot allow your future to be her last prize. Not after all your mother and I have endured to see you again. Your companion understands, I think. Help her, please. Help her see what must be done. I didn't know any of this was happening until it was much too late. I came to try to put things right. And you did. You found us. All these years, that dream kept us going. That you would break free. No matter what they made you do to us, we knew you were still in there. I knew the Dark Woods wouldn't frighten you. You were always such a brave girl. 
She was, and still is. You've saved us. Now save yourself. You'll be out of Shah's reach, and we'll be at peace. But I only just found you again after all this time. I can't lose you again. We'll still be with you. By the Moon Maiden's grace, we'll never be far. Please, Jennifer. Is this truly what you want? It is what we need. All of us. You were meant to be a guiding light for Saluna's faithful, but they robbed you from us. Now that can be righted, and we can rest. Help us, Jen. I can let go. Now I've seen your face again. Goodbye. Not goodbye. Not even close. bring Saluna's light to dark places and offer guidance to those in need. My parents are watching over me. Let's leave this place. There's nothing more for me here. A little hideaway. They seem so familiar. That little hideaway that we found in the cloister... It almost felt like I'd found a piece of my childhood. A childhood I don't truly remember. But, remember it or not, I felt right at home there. Surrounded by books and night orchids. Maybe. Or maybe I already liked night orchids and I chose that place because of them. The particulars of childhood can grow hazy even if your memories haven't been tampered with. But I felt safe there. I know that much. Well, can you imagine what it would have been like growing up in that place? Endless training, no privacy, facing scorn wherever I looked. I can very easily imagine I needed somewhere to escape to, if I was to survive. Nocturne and I must have come here a lot. We probably had plenty we wanted to hide from. Anyway, I think that little hideaway helped shape who I am. As much as any sermon or training did. Funny the things that influence you. Most are lost forever. Some may creep back into my mind if I encounter anything that helps clear the fog. Then there's what Shah did restore to me. Memories of pain, suffering, both my own and what I inflicted. It's overwhelming. Like a lifetime's worth of nightmares unleashed all at once upon waking, I can barely untangle one moment from another, not that I even want to. I just know that my heart sinks if I let my thoughts wander to them. Perhaps. But in the meanwhile, I'll just have to find a way to live with them. Of course. From the first time I laid eyes on you right until now. That's all safe. I wouldn't surrender even a moment of it. 
What we did might feel an evil thing, I know. But if Minsk was not saved from the cult, was used to hurt those who only meant to help him, I think that ending Minsk might have been a way of saving Minsk too. Doesn't look like anyone's been here in a while. Perhaps people lost faith. Or... forgot about it. I wanted to come here. To see if I felt anything that I hadn't done before. Now that I know what I know. Now that I know who I am. True, but too much freedom can be frightening, lonely, and there's a reason why so many are eager to bow. I had my family for too short a moment. Now they're gone by my hand. I remember, but they can't comfort me. They can't give me advice. They can't tell me what I was like as a little girl. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've shed a tear. I don't even know how long. We carry on. It's all we can do. I'll follow in a while. I think I want to stay here a little longer, firstly. This place isn't familiar, but... It's peaceful. Shadowheart. She's as much a part of who I am as Genevelle. I can't just forget her. It's not what I do anymore. Besides, Shadowheart still suits me. Even better than before, perhaps. You can't cast a shadow without some light. My surface-dwelling friend, how long has it been? I am glad to see you well. I see your tadpole remains in its state of suspension. Your case has set us on quite the detour from our planned expedition work. We've thought about very little else. In the field seeking further subjects for study, though it has been gone for longer than I anticipated. After observing the nature of your tadpole stasis, we felt it wise to report back to the society. Omeloam went out into the city to seek out further undeveloped infections like yours, but I have heard nothing since. I admit, I'm somewhat concerned. We are usually sticklers for updating one another on our progress. Omeloam believed the answer to this riddle lay within the city walls and held some connection to the cult of the Absolute. I had the distinct impression it was intentionally keeping its hypothesis from me, as though even the theory would be enough to put me in danger. Why that would be, I can only theorize myself. It is rather outside my area of expertise. Omeloam is most likely safe and well, and simply absorbed in its work. However, it would put my mind at rest to confirm it if you happen across its path. Of course, I should get back to my research. Oh, Wave Mother. Queen of the Depths, hear me. 
Please carry Holly to her final rest in the deep wilds. Please. Sorry. Are you here for Wave Servant Holly's funeral? Oh, it's already started. Oh, they're just inside. Rejoice, sisters, for Umberly has blessed her humble daughter with a pure death. Her lips blue with her kiss, her lungs full of her quenching word. Umberly's mercy saved her from a slow, sinking death in the beast's shadow. How dare this beast sully the safety of Grey Harbor? We will find its master and send him struggling into the bitch queen's embrace. Not a sweet sleep like Holly's, but a suffocating flood of fruitless garths and bursting flesh. You, supplicant, what tribute do you bring to honor the Wave Mother's fallen daughter? Yes. Then you know as well as Umberly that blood must soon be shed. Your tribute is well received. Breathe deep as she permits. Yes. Thank the Wave Mother. Blessed Umberly saw fit to spare her an ignoble death. But her passing was not as the Wave Mother intended. It was a beast who took her life. An unnatural one whose very existence is an affront to Umberly. A wretched metal monstrosity hewn by hubris. A rusting pollutant that bleeds black blood into Umberly's pristine waters. The bee struck Holly while she was swimming in Grey Harbor. She was found by some fishermen. She would have suffered a terrible, agonizing death had Umberly not bestowed upon her the mercy of drowning. The Queen of the Depths is generous to those who serve her. And her favor is far less deadly than her wrath. Find the master of this poisonous beast and slay him. Then one of her most precious gifts shall be yours. steady hand and a sharp gaze. I can barely keep my eyes open. I need to rest. You have a son, do you not? Is he as lazy and pathetic as his spineless mother? Wait! Stay your hand, I beg you. Prinsky's motivation sequence activated. Tell me, Gondian. Tell me about your son. He's not... <sighs> yes. Overseer Holt. He's frail in body and mind like me, like all of us. Yet by your grace, he lives. And your wife? She is... was... useless. And interfered with production quotas. You were wise to remove her from this world. Forgive my outburst. I will work through the night. This Watcher will be operational by dawn. I will allow it. But if your work is anything short of impeccable, your son will die screaming. Is that clear? Yes. Overseer Holtz. Nan Gufgrish of the Lore. 
Your nervous gait betrays your presence, stranger. You don't belong here. Who are you? What? Go away! Your presence imperils us all. If any of us attempts to escape, our kin will die. The Overseers, they have a contraption. When triggered, it will kill everyone who wears a collar. You underestimate the enemy. The Overseers, they are Glicksbran Rakfar. The collars are not only equipped with explosives, there is also a mechanism that alerts the Overseers if they're removed. One of us may be able to save themselves, but it would be at the expense of everyone else. We can't risk it. Even if we did somehow unshackle our collars simultaneously and overthrow our oppressors, there would be consequences. Our families are held elsewhere. The Overseers need only activate those contraptions they hold, and they suffer the consequences of our actions too. We cannot win. We must aid in building these Vagrun. Gun-gun. Aye. Even more, I'd help you destroy this place. I don't know where they are, but some of the Overseers must. You'll have to infiltrate deeper into the Foundry. Just make sure you don't get caught. If they raise the alarm, they'll trigger the collars. I will pray for you, my daughter. Her name is Obinia. Gond Ralfraka's Hulnish. May Gond be with you. You are fortunate to work shifts in the prison transport. Were you not, Red Brother? Found them? Our families. That makes sense. The Bay Knights must have a way of getting to and from the prison. I suggest you search the docks. What's this? You ain't supposed to be down here, mate. You spot a curious metal contraption in the water. A submersible. I am here for Duke Older Raven Guard. Show me the way. The Duke? I mean, if you see him, let him know I'm down for a drink. But he ain't here. Which begs the question, what are you bloody doing down here? Let me guess. This is about them Umbly servants. You tell them to stay out of the way. Cat needs the right of way. He can't stop on a dime when they go darting in front of the prow. Bloody salt is always flopping around in the water. I've almost hit one or two now. Might have even nicked one off the port bow the other day. Maybe they'll teach them to keep out of the way. This big boy, the captain of Grey Harbor, built him with my own two hands, can take the passage between here and the Iron Throne faster than you can say, fuck the absolute. Nothing without Lord Gortash's go-ahead. I transport whoever he needs taken to the Iron Throne. Prisoners, mostly, but that's his business. It's an underwater prison. Most secure in the realms. 
Myself and Cap are the only ones who can make it there in one piece. Lord Gortash keeps some Gondians there. Collateral to keep those working in the Steelwatch Foundry under control. Older Raven Guard is here. He must be. If he is, that's Lord Gortash's business. I don't ask questions. Do you now? Boss never sends anyone that away but prisoners. Oh, the Jableda's on you. Look, I don't want any trouble, but I know Lord Gortash is up to some mad shit in there. I'll take you in, but look, there's some bad shit going down in there. You don't want to get involved. Neither did I, but it was them or me. I'll get Cat warmed up. Get in when you're ready. Aren't you the intrepid little adventurer? Digging and diving where you don't belong. Wrong. Your presence here is the only real threat to their survival. Dead. They're no use to me. So I keep them safe, after a fashion. I have prepared for this eventuality, and if you interfere, I will destroy the Iron Throne. Return to the docks, or the deaths of everyone inside will be on your conscience. How many people are trapped within? How many lives will be lost? And what of Duke Ravenguard? Will may never forgive you if you abandon his father to this fate. That was a mistake. When the corpses start to wash up on the shore, remember, you could have prevented all of this. Act with haste. Duke Ravenguard is held within these walls. He must be extracted. Normally, I would find your people's lust for pleasantries amusing. Unfortunately, we have no time. There are many hostages here. Duke Ravenguard, chief among them. He needs your help. It is painful to say, but they cannot be your priority. Duke Ravenguard must be saved. The city needs him. I was only trying to secure this city's future, but you are correct. If we can, we should save the hostages too. Duke Ravenguard is held in the security wing. The hostages are placed throughout this prison. You must stretch your resources thin if you want to secure them all. Be careful. There are many hazards. This structure is collapsing. Act with speed. Act with efficiency. Good luck. Finally. Hold on, 
I'm coming. I'm getting you out of here. Stay focused. I'll keep Daddy Duke safe. you upon exiting the submersible. Unlike the Iron Throne, you remain intact. So, it seems, will the families of all the hostages rescued from the throne. Duke Ravenguard approaches you, looking confused. He's tadpoled, but under my protection now, just like you. His mind is his own again. Father? Will... God, it pains me to look at you. By Baldrin's graces, why have the hells ordained you to save me? Your tadpole resonates with Raven Guards. The exhausted Grand Duke is a flurry of emotion. By every last hell, son, I roll oh, my head! Ravenguard's head still aches so powerfully the pain seeps into you. The Absolute may be silenced, but the Duke's parasite still remains. I know you have questions. Please, go to our camp. You'll be safe there. We'll talk soon enough. Ravenguard answers with silence. He and Will have much to discuss. We actually All right, made it. we're good to go. Say goodbye to camp and come up the hatch when you're ready. Please, I want to ask you something. I just... I... I can't thank you enough. I was certain that place was to be my cold, wet tomb. You... you saved us. Saved us all. I thought it impossible, but... but you did it. We were kept hostage to control our families and the Steel Watch Foundry. To keep them building Gortash's death machines. Please. They need to know what happened here. They have no reason to obey Gortash anymore. If they rebel, it'll put a dent in Gortash's steel might. He... he did? Of course he did! I knew it. I knew he would do something. Your world's heir. I never imagined missing its feeling on my skin. Curious. I owe you a great debt, son child. One I shall repay. When I return to the surface, I will alert my colleagues at the Society. Find me there, and I will offer you what aid I can against this evil. to administer Umberly's justice. Instead, you conspire with the abomination. He who sickened the harbor with blood so black the sea itself chokes. Gods, they're not. You have to help me. Step out of the way. Protect him, and Umberly will swallow you whole. What? Mate, you've got to be kidding. Come quietly. The Sea Queen will judge you. I surrender, all right. 
You wouldn't hurt a harmless man, right? And you? Thanks for nothing, prick. You have beaten and tormented us to the brink of insanity. You cut out my eyes. But we will bow no more. Gondians! Rip the motivator from this bastard's hands! For Gond! to Obelia. Is she safe? <sighs> My heart. I thought her lost. I would give more than just my sight to keep her safe. Our destination is the Neurosita, the nerve center of the Steel Watch. Guide me there, and I'll do the rest. Wait! Elevator gyroscopes, triple set quadrupeds. No, it can't be. I hear it through the floor. Powerful, indestructible. The ultimate watcher, the Titan. Indestructible? We'll see about that. It shames me to admit this, but you must face this beast of Gondian folly alone. I would be crushed in an instant when it raises its shields. Strike it with every scrap of magic and might you possess, and pray to God that it does not fire upon you. Good luck, my friend. I can hear its hum. Familiar, yet painful. I helped design the Steel Watchers, toiled night and day on the first bipedal prototype. It is fitting it ends this way. I will bring down not only the Steel Watch, but the very foundry itself. This place will be smoke and rubble when I am finished. Are you ready, my friend? That was a hell of a show, my friend. Watchers collapse in the street as we speak. 
and the foundry. Well, it won't stain this beautiful city with its abominations. Not anymore. But it's not over. So long as a single parasitic Gondian remains, Baldur's Gate is under threat. Enough, Walprin. Gortash enslaved us, forced us to build his steel watches, but no more. Take the city, let the Iron Hands reign supreme. I just wish to go home and hold my daughter. Please. <laughs> if a Gondian told me the sky was blue, I'd look outside and check. You Gondians will lie, scheme, and torment this city until your dying breaths. Let's end this! Walbrin, enough! I won't watch as you poison your soul and the brilliant future that remains to the Iron Hand gnomes. I thought the Iron Hand gnomes had corrupted you, Walbrin. Now, I wonder if it wasn't the other way around. Kill the Gondians, and you kill all we love. Collaboration, challenge, solving problems with the power of reason, creativity and invention. I still want to believe you're better than that, Wolbrin. But even I am having my doubts. I say... I say you're right. They deserve a leader who'll encourage them to create, not destroy. They deserve someone like me. I can't save you from yourself, Wolbrin. It hurts terribly, but I can't. Toss your values in the bin if you want, but don't throw out the Iron Hands with them. This is ridiculous. Iron Hands. Kill this man. How dare you? Cowards! The Gondians recognize Barkus Root as leader of the Iron Hand Gnomes and look forward to ushering in a new peace between our factions. It is with a heavy heart that I remove Wolbrin Bongle from our ranks. You have until first light to leave the city. Wolbrin. I expect treachery from all sides, but you, little Barkus, the boy who followed me from the Underdark, who clung to me like moss to stone, when we next meet, my hammer will cleave your skull in two, and that is a promise. An alliance with the Iron Hands. I didn't think it possible. The Gondians are in your debt, my friend. Simply call, and we will be by your side. I swear it. Well, here we are. The most unexpected outcome. I am many things. A leader is not one of them. But no time like the present to learn. And I can't do any worse than Waldron. Sorry, as I am to say it. I don't know when he became so angry. So violent. But I'm glad to say I see the truth of it now. At last. Thank you for your encouragement. I needed it. And have done since the day we met. I may have lost Walbrin. But I found a far preferable ally. Friend. Now, uh, myself and the Iron Hand Gnomes have much to disentangle. But when you're ready to face what's waiting for you, believe me, we will be at your side. <clears throat> uh, um, shoe, then. For now. My friend. It is pleasurable to see you. Your intervention within the cult's underwater complex was a timely one. I am glad my carelessness did not cost the life of Duke Ravenguard. 
that you also saved me was unexpected. My meeting with you led me to a most unsettling conclusion, that my kind had begun to exert influence through this cult of the absolute. I felt illithid interference would not be conducive to this plane's survival. I sought out other infected individuals to ascertain the truth of my hypothesis. Unfortunately, I strayed too close. I was captured and transported to the prison in which you found me. There, I saw Gortash and his followers inflict cruelties far beyond any I witnessed in the Underdark. I am grateful that you were spared such a merciless fate. Once my report is completed, I will return to my usual work in the Underdark. There, at least, I may yet produce worthwhile results. Blurg and I have consulted on the matter of your reward. We first thought to ask the denizens of the Underdark for their aid in fighting the cult. Alas, our influence there remains negligible. Instead, we have selected a series of items from the Society's vaults. Curious, I appear to have left them elsewhere in the lodge. You found me at the bottom of the harbor. No doubt you'll track them down with ease. First you cleave my heart in twain, now you shatter it to pieces. My son, a monster. Twist it beyond recognition. To think my blood flows through those veins. Is this my fate? To be freed from Gortash's hell, only to be trapped in yours? It isn't what you think. It never was. You turned your back on me, on your city, to chase the she-devil and her power. She stinks up the place even now. It is exactly what I think. Raven God's tadpole clenches as your memories and wills flow into him. My tears rose. I'm in your mind. The Grand Duke sees Mizura and her infernal sisters. He sees the agony in Will's face as an impossible choice is set before him. No. My son. The past becomes present, and Will's thoughts are laid bare. Raven Guard sees Will partnering with Mizura to defeat Tiamat's cultists before they could lay siege to Baldur's Gate, and he sees everything beyond. The Nautiloid journey, the perilous path to Moonrise, the astral prism, and the Emperor within. Well, everything I did, I did for Baldur's Gate. I did for you. My son, you sold your soul to save Baldur's Gate, and I cast you out for it. You gave yourself to the Hell's eternal fire so I might walk free. By the gods, can you ever forgive me? There's nothing to forgive. You wanted to protect the city. I only ever wanted the same. You are a better man than most, and a better son than I deserve. I'll yet make amends, but... My duty is first and foremost to the city and its people. There's something I must ask of you. Before I was captured, I was on a mission. Returning from Elturel, I discovered the plans of the Absolutists. I immediately realized the city couldn't defend itself against such an army. I didn't despair, because the city has a secret guardian, a worm that sleeps beneath. 
He can be called upon in times of great need. This is such a time. You've been trained in the ways of the great champions and proven to be one of them. The worm will answer your call. You must seek him out. A bronze dragon, yes. He sleeps beneath us even now, awaiting a hero to rouse him. The worm goes by many names. Ansur, the waiting storm, the heart of the gate. He promised Baldurin he'd protect the city if ever its existence was threatened, but just the once. Since then, the city has faced countless threats, but we always overcame. There was never a need to call on the worm. Until now, the Absolute is the greatest threat Baldur's Gate ever faced. The worm must be awakened, and the task falls to you. Take this. The legend of Ansur. An ancient epic, ill-remembered, dismissed as a mere tale. Let it set the path before you. Thank you. And may the city know the truth of my only son. Pride of Ravenguard. Pride of Baldur's Gate. We'll finish what my father couldn't. We'll awaken Ansur, the heart of the gate. O oh, Baldurin, founder due veneration. His guardian dragon, Ansur, tremendous in worth. A savior below our eternal elation. It's not just a tale, it's a history. Consider this, to Wormway neath prison's deepest level. That must mean Worm's Rock Prison. That's where we'll find the entrance to this Wormway. Then this, with the shock of a true hero's spark flickers, the torches are light, and Worm's eyes shall awake a glitter. To open the way, we'll need to spark torches. This dragon, Onsor, was Baldurin's ally. We'd be fools to let him sleep while the Dead Three's Chosen raised the city. Oi, you! Get in the bloody queue! It's unusual for prey to supply the tools of its own butchery. Razors, scissors, nail files. So many cuts one couldn't make. And yet, such a fleeting window. But then, who am I to deny the auspices of destiny? For we are celebrating, Master Figaro. You have the delicious honor of being my crowning achievement. Your body is my ultimate gift to my lord, Bar. Together, we shall transcend. <laughs> the challenger. My lord tests me. This pity is awful. Will be your grave challenger. Another witness to my sacrament. Say, I'm damn lucky you showed up when you did. Can you believe what that monster was doing?
truly. Then you're made of sterner stuff than I, friend. I'll confess, it terrified me greatly. Can you imagine dressing entirely in red? <laughs> Jests aside, thank you. You forever have my humblest gratitude and a most generous discount on my wares. I should have known it would be you. Thank you. If it had been the dwarf alone, we might have stood a chance. But these doppelgangers, oh, they swarmed us. We were paralyzed before we even had the chance to fight back. I was heading that way after we last spoke, when I heard a commotion. I stepped in to see what was going on. It's not every day you have the chance to catch a killer in action. Not even in this profession. These killings aren't random. In fact, they seem to be part of some sort of test. That document you showed me before, the one with the victims' names on it, that was the briefing. The killers paralyzed their victims, take their hands as an offering for Baal, and make it look like the cult of the Absolute was behind it all. It grants them access to a tribunal. From what I could gather, it's some sort of rite of initiation for aspiring cultists to prove their worth. And it's taking place beneath Candle Hallow's tombstones. How did you... Perhaps it's best I don't ask. Do what you have to do. And I'll pick up where I left off. The upper city. When I'm done, I'll stop by the Basilisk Gate. Keep your distance, Bolt. Just here for walk. Don't engage. The locked door has red text on it reading, All are waited, all are embraced. None shall escape. You gaze upon murder's progeny, child. His most ill-trusted zealots. His faithful departed. Prodigal servants, each returns to do his bidding eternally. This man is known to all Baldurians, and his presence sparks dread in the pit of your stomach. Before you is Saravok Anchev, a barlist who almost brought Baldur's Gate to ruin a century ago. Devella was right. Not just an imitator, but Saravok himself. This is the court of the Dread Lord's Tribunal. I am its custodian. Here come those who seek to transcend. Aspirants of his most profane order. The would-be unholy assassins of Baal. But these are not aspirants. You have brought traitors of Baal into our midst. Harper Worm, the abdicating hero. Your keen sense for this city has withered in your absence. Saravok. Baal's least favorite son. Still tied to daddy's apron strings, I see. <laughs> the history they share may be long gone, but the threat of violence between them is as fresh as newly spilled blood. Neither party will let the other walk out of here alive. What purpose do you have in bringing this heretic to the court of Baal? Speak. Or death will be your final word. Do not parlay with this madman. Saravok reclaimed his soul once, and he still traded it back to his father for a pat on the head. He has earned his second death even more than his first. You speak of the past. I speak of the future. Well, aspirant. 
Do the shades of yesterday speak for you, too? There are two paths to the Temple of Baal. To carve your devotion into flesh. Or to be the carcass that is carved upon. Hmm. You get to my age. You have already done everything. Be my guest. And so the Grand Harper raises her weapons against Sarabak once more. Your hubris will be your undoing, as it was once mine. Only this time, you will fall. And Baal will have his offering by my hand. Of here. Citizen, thank the gods you're here. My wrinkles are starting to chafe. As an officer of the law, I demand you free me at once. Thanks for freeing me so quickly. No idea what those Baalist Burks had planned with me, but those chains were starting to chafe. Though I do wish you'd figured this all out before I... Uh, put the blame for Father Logan's murder on that... Poor refugee. Well, at least it's over now. Oh, well, I'd call you rude, but I have the misfortune of owing you my life. You gave these reprobates a proper seeing to. You clearly have what I don't. Courage, insight, heroism. The city needs you. I overheard these pigs talking. There's a Baal temple deep within the old undercity that the cult is using. A century ago, it was destroyed by a group of heroic sorts. Let's hope history repeats itself, eh? Mind who you call history, Holyphant. Very good. Now, let's talk and find that temple. Returns most shamefully unleaking. Prove your faith. You hold proof of faith, but to hold and deserve are different. How have you proven yourself in the Dread Lord's eyes? Unorthodox, but a show of faith nonetheless. Walk in blood. The Lord of Murder shall perish. But in his doom he shall spawn a score of mortal progeny. 
corpses, arranged with some intent. So saith the wise Alondo. I know this head. It belongs to Dribbles the Clown. All right. Enough awful. This ought to satisfy the ringmaster. Stone seals this chamber against the world. I confess that the last time I came here, I thought it would be my tomb. You can see why. The Baal amulet trembles in frightened awe. Will you return once you cross this threshold? and comes crawling into his sanctum with the tyrant unpoped. I know what you did. Spilled my grandfather's crimson. He was mine. He showed me how to slice and slit. He guides my dagger still. Oh, did it think it could protect? Did it think it could save? Only the blades can offer salvation. You do not lie, underling. It is your blood I am destined to spill. Your death spit will stain these walls, little lamb. Oh, your murder should have been exquisite. A crypt-born effigy to greet Baal's bleeding dawn. And now it will be nothing. Come to me, father. Set my flesh to your unholy purpose. light on something in the blood catches your eye. Another Another Balspawn falls, leaving only the final chosen. Find Gortash 
and take his nether stone. Uh, my head is pounding. To think I was taken captive by that disgusting creature. An error I'm glad you swiftly rectified. To camp. I will not let my guard slip again. I swear by Mother Gith's scion. At this point, nobody can control the brain. And it knows it. We must seize the third stone before it breaks free. I would be lying if I told you I was certain we would walk out of that temple alive. We faced Baal there once before. And I was not ready to count on luck a second time. But luck had no part in it. Just you. And now it is Gortash's turn. We'll need his stone to finish this. However you plan to acquire it. So let us go pay Lord Liar a visit. It is not in a Githyanki's nature to say thank you. Our language doesn't even have a phrase for it. Kraith Khan Jan is the closest equivalent I know. May your enemies know agony. But after releasing me from Orin's grip, there is only one proper response. Thank you. Sincerely. <sighs> well, good then. Let's carry on. Vos has done his duty. Now, we will do ours. We must find our way to the House of Hope and take the Orphic Hammer. When we next enter the Astral Prism, we will use the hammer to break Orpheus free. Hello again, my vicious little warrior. Any luck finding dribbles? Ah, oh, perfection. This is just what I need. His flesh has a few rat bites and his teeth are missing, but these are minor issues. I shall remake dribbles better than before, where once he was famous, he will now become legend. And you? Here, darling, a little something from your friend, Lucretius. My circus and I can now finally leave! And I you, you delectable vintage. Oh, and if you do take on the absolute, do try not to end up like poor Dribbles. You are so very pretty, after all. Mostly the same children's rhyme. The battered whistle of tin. I do not get a lot of time to practice. Oh, spare me this. My most perceptive, prospective customer. Welcome back. My offer still stands. You put me in a difficult position, mortal. You are almost certain to fail. Almost. And so, there is a chance you might succeed. Fine. I'd like to be able to carry all of my precious stock without the need of a team of oxen. There are gauntlets of hill giant strength within the House of Hope. Free passage, and you fetch them for me. Deal? Allow me to outline how this is going to work. First, you were never here. We never spoke. Second, you will perform the rites yourself. I want absolute deniability. Here's the grimoire and necessary components. Oh, take this key, too. It unlocks the ritual room upstairs. There's a blood circle already drawn. Don't ask whose blood. Along with the grimoire and components, Helsic hands you a note containing precise instructions for performing the ritual. Finally, you were never here. That is of utmost import to remember. Now be gone. I
strongly suggest that you reconsider this course of action. Whatever you expect to gain from the Hells is not worth the risk of traveling there uninvited. There is no reason to provoke him by invading his home. Gods, I can't believe I'm doing this. We're gonna get out of here, right? Get in, get the hammer, and go. Easy. Yeah, right. I want that hammer as much as you do. And I'm not afraid of Raphael. Hanging out in his playhouse has my hackles up, sure, but... But I've got this. On the bright side, my engine finally feels... normal. Like it isn't about to explode. <sighs> I gotta admit, that's pretty nice. Let's find that hammer and get out of here before I get used to feeling like I might live. I don't hear the Emperor. It can't reach us here, I guess. You came. Such a shame. Curiosity killed all the cats. It won't be so kind to you. As the woman speaks, you hear a distant rattle of chains, and she winces in pain. <sighs> the jailer will hear us. I shouldn't be talking to you. I must go. It's not kind to me. The figure flickers and starts to dim from view, but you sense she could be convinced to return. The figure shimmers brightly. Your words seem to have piqued her curiosity. I hope so, but it is a faint hope. Just like me, I can't leave. I could only suffer. But I'm supposed to do that in silence. Everyone here hates me for what I am. I'm the thing that kills you and the only reason you're alive. Made by a promise and done by the truth. A handshake, a hug, the first beat of a newborn's heart. I am hope. What little is left of her. A guttering candle in a universe of night. Raphael's driven her mad. Poor soul. I'm not much of a friend to anyone anymore. But I could use a friend myself. Do you want a friend to guide you through this madhouse? I hear the jailer. It hears me. It'll call Raphael, make every question kind. Make some of them kind twice. You must ask of the Orphic Hammer. Without it, the Prince of the Comet and the Githyanki people remain forever chained. Discovered an ancient Gith prince in need of a savior? The Orphic Hammer is the perfect tool for breaking all infernal chains. Hope can help. The Hammer is here in this house. It's... You hear a sound like the rattle of a chain, and an agonizing scream in your head as hope flickers from view momentarily. Shh. Quiet. There it goes. Everyone here is mad. Even you, especially me. And that makes them dangerous but it also makes them stupid. I'll make you seem as ruined as the rest of the people here. A simple glamour to make you a terrible wretch. <laughs> now whisper your questions, little wretch, but really quiet and very clever. Concentrate. Remember, quiet as a mouse. You'll find your sorry little soul when Raphael rips it out. 
in the archive down the corridor past the debtors. Oh, the debtors. They won't like you. But I like you. I know I do. I think I do. I hope I do. I just need to ask one question and I'll know for sure. Can you save me? Please, 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 please. You don't even know how. All right. You have to listen very, very, very closely. I will say this only once. Find the key, take the hammer, smash my chains. Find the key, take the hammer, smash my chains. Find the key, take the hammer, smash my chains. But be careful when you take the hammer. The fire will come and Raphael, you must run, 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 run. But don't forget me. Please, please, please. I don't want to burn. Not again. We won't. We'll get you out. I promise. The rattle of chains echoes louder from unseen places. And without a scream or a sigh, hope disappears. You look positively wretched. Perfect! Hello again, little mice. The price for speaking is steep, but I must give warning. Your prize is just ahead in the archive, but you can't take it yet. And even if you could, you mustn't. Trigger the alarm, and Raphael will come swooping home on wings of malice to rip out your soul. In this house, thieves are melted like butter and spread onto toast! I can. I shall. I can. I shall. The archivist is the key, but he's as stubborn as a king and as serious as a heart attack. Exploit his fiddling weakness and make him grovel! Oh no. They hear me. Speak quickly, speak softly. You know how this goes. You steady your mind and prepare your questions. He fears authority figures. Perhaps his teacher took a strap to him and left a deep impression at an early age. There's one regular visitor that he particularly fears. She is... A crack like breaking bone. Hope winces. Scarier things than you, little mice. Virilius. Virilius Receptor. A High Inquisitor of Zariel. Officially entitled to audit Raphael's collection. Her true form is so gargantuan and mind-scarring to behold that she takes on many guises when she visits. Play your part well and you can be one of those blasphemous guises! They're gnawing through my guts! Raphael sees everything you do! Guest, are you a client of the master or a visitor from elsewhere in the hells? I do not believe you were invited. One moment, I shall consult the visitor's schedule. Hmm. Hmm. His eyes flicker back and forth as if he is reading a book. He has the schedule memorized. Or it's carved into his eyelids. Hmm. Most irregular. The schedule is all but clear. And yet you are here. A thousand apologies, O oh majestic magistrate of the Infernal Court. Your mortal guise is so vile, I found it perfectly convincing. I would prostrate myself before you and kiss your calluses. 
but my spine is ruptured in a thousand places. You do know how Raphael likes to play. As always, the archive is yours to peruse. You'll find everything accounted for, and I can present documents of procurement if necessary. An exquisite and most unique artifact, crafted with materials hewn from the depths of the hells by Raphael's Merrigan labor force. As it was created by Raphael himself, we have no documents of procurement, nor do we require any. But if you wish to examine the artifact itself, you are more than welcome. As part of the special collection, that item is guarded by a master word that even I do not know. I suggest you wait until Raphael returns, and you can discuss the matter with him. You are welcome to relax in the boudoir until then. It is where Raphael conducts his most private matters of business and pleasure. You will need this to gain access. The resident of the boudoir will wish to explore every inch of your new form, and I'm sure you will be happy to share. Over here! The archivist told you to cool off in the boudoir. Well, here it is. A horrid place where pleasure is pain, and pain is pleasure, and hope cannot live at all. Everything in this house exists for Raphael's pleasure, and Raphael's pleasure alone. That includes Raphael himself, whatever form he takes. A lost little mouse is running through the house. Oh, God. What the fuck have I stumbled into? A thief in the night, greedy and here to take. Why are you here, little thief? Hmm. Raphael all but spent himself to get that hammer. And you want to take it off him? This is very naughty. Whatever are we to do? Why don't we play a game? You win, I give you everything you desire. <laughs> but you'll enjoy yourself more if you lose. It's a surprise. Off with your clothes. Ta. Tart. You will make a pretty feast. Is the Orphic hammer right within reach? A magical field surrounds the item, preventing you or anyone from touching it. You surmise it's controlled by a vocal component. 
magic words. You know the words. Now speak them. The magic blinks away at your words. I I'm all for thieving, but let's not be hasty. Steal this and the devil will notice. Dinner bell. And you are the entire. You claim to be who you are not. Stole from my master, and now you expect to leave. The moment you step outside this room, all hells will break loose. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a hopeless situation. <laughs> is ours. The means to Orpheus's release is in our hands. To the Undercity, Vos must hear of our victory. When we next enter the Astral Prism, we will break Orpheus free. For now, keep focused. Raphael will come to take back his treasure. This is our chance to find out how much this devil bleeds. I've got good news. A bad news. The worst news! C good news! You got what you came for. Successful visit! Great success! Fantastic work! Bad news. So many things will be on fire when you step outside of this room. You included! That's okay, no, right? It's hell! You expected it to be hot. Worst news, Raphael's on his way home, and oh boy, oh boy, he is spitting mad! You planned for this. I know you did. You have everything under control. It's really important that you don't panic, even when your eyes evaporate from the heat. Come to my prison, bring the hammer, break my chances, then we exit stage any which way. Work as a cockroach, lickety split if you don't mind. <laughs> in the room. I can see how you avoid looking at me. I must be so terribly mutilated after all these decades of torture. Don't hold back. Tell me how bad it is. I'd blush if they had left me any skin to redden, and I would kiss you if they had not torn off my lips. You truly are the kindest fool I've ever met. We'll carve our way to the entrance hall and chop Raphael into messes. That's the hopeful version, of course. The likely version is that we are the messes and he is the chopper. Onwards! It slows for a moment and the air becomes thicker. The master of the house is coming. There are many things in your world that I loathe. Litters of kittens, chattering children, the noise, and the chaos of it all. In my world, in my house, 
There is order, and there is decorum. You came here uninvited, and you stole from me. In doing so, you brought the chaos of your world into mine. I will not abide it. Sister, oh sister, I've wept and I've cried, but all would be well if you were by my side. Oh, Hope, you are such a piteous thing. All it takes is a crumb from the table and you forget the centuries of starvation. This insolence has earned you centuries more. Carilla. Tell our unwelcome guest about your role in their tragic downfall. I permitted you the freedom to decide your own fate. You could have been smart, selfless, saved the world. Instead, you came here and risked everything. It's the fatal flaw of mortal kind. Take away their free will and they call you a tyrant. Allow them to indulge it and they you would have been heroes if you'd only dealt fairly with me. Instead, you're not so different to doomed Cassus, overreaching your limits and burning your world to ash. Wrong! 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 They will save their world and smash you to smithereens! It's this charming naivety that makes your company such a joy to me, Hope. I'll even forgive this little rebellion once you're suitably chastised. This isn't a rebellion. It's a revolt. I'm revolting! <laughs> then hope dies today. Commander, you can salvage a trophy from these insects when I'm done with them. These insects? struck me down beneath the Shadowlands. They are worthy opponents. Their skulls will make fine trophies. To stand against a devil in his own home. Hmm. That takes courage. I'm with you. How tiresome. Am I to understand that you wish to die with them? I wish to fight with them. It's all the same in the end. If you have any last words, make it quick. It will only take a moment to finish you. No words? No matter. You will scream before the end, little mouse. Now, down comes the claw. All mortal lives expire. Souls go to their dooms in flame. Souls that couldn't be born. <laughs>
us are alive. Have you not? Pinch yourself and check we're not dreaming the last of our lives as we die screaming! <laughs> you are wide awake, and Raphael truly is defeated. That is incredible. We're incredible. We're spectacular. What a wonderful, jubilant, glorious day. <gasps> but my poor sister, Carilla. It is not right that she died. And that makes me want to weep an ocean. She was an entire person before she ever made that choice. When we were children, she always kept the last piece of pastry for me and bloodied the nose of the bullies who pulled my hair. She was my sister. But as a wise woman once said, there's no point in crying over spilt blood. We must go on. And despite all the years I've lost, I have enough love in my heart to guide you home. For the first time since you heard her voice, hope seems calm, and the peace flows from her into you. Soothing your very soul. And go where? I don't think I quite know how to be anywhere else but here anymore. With a lick of paint and a thorough cleaning, this could be a lovely little house. And I can hardly leave. After all, who would ever want to think of hell without hope? I hope I'll see Carilla again one day, and that she'll say sorry, and I'll tell her she's forgiven. I hope I find all the pieces of my mind that fell out of my head over all those years, and that I'll be able to put myself back together again. I hope the echoes of pain will fade, and memories of sorrow will die, and that you'll visit me here someday. And I hope you have a happy ending of your own. You fought well. We could use such strength in the blood war. You did us a favor, Yurgir, so I'm going to let that slide. <sighs> now I'm free of Raphael's blasted contract. I can return to the front lines. Whoever your enemies are, they have good reason to fear you. And I'll gladly lend you my skills against them when the time comes. Until then, good luck to you, little rabbit. You're a finer hunter than any wolf. So you burned your way into the Devil's Lair, risked mind, limb, and freedom, all to steal the Orphic Hammer. I hope your ambitions end there. I have already told you that the Githyanki Prince only wants to see you dead. But it seems you still do not trust me. His domination is what keeps you free. You know this already. Still, you would test our alliance. You are falling into the same trap as the Chosen. Their distrust of one another is their undoing. We must not make the same mistake. We must work together. And what then? When he wakens from his incarceration, what do you think he will make of you? The one who bears the spawn, his very nature bends him to revile. And even if you survived him, what of the Elder Brain? Without the protection I leverage for you, you would be enthralled in an instant. Careful. You will make a mind flare now. You may think yourself ingenious for having slain a devil, but you have merely ironed out a wrinkle. 
The Elder Brain will not be such an easy foe. It is time we resume our journey to find it. Careful, soldier. I'm burning really hot. <sighs> Had a nice break in the hells. Now that we're back, my engine's in overdrive again. <clears throat> Let's move. The trot will take my mind off being barbecued alive. Trips to the hells are usually one way. Especially when the traveler causes the kind of trouble you did. I knew you were a thief. Didn't realize you were a killer. Raphael's death is already causing quite a stir across the Hells. It's a rare thing for a mortal to slay a devil of his stature. In all the excitement, I hope you didn't forget our bargain. Do you have the gauntlets? Thank you very much. Your coin is always welcome here. And so are you, Devil Slayer. You've come. We await your good word. I'll keep forgetting. Always been... Come closer. Tell me what you see. His voice carries the weight of untold centuries, and his ridges are scarred with uncounted battles. This is no dragonborn. This is a red dragon. The very same who carried Voss near the Gith Crash. It is so. Call me Kudenos. Master of Flames, Splitter of Skies. I will be the one to carry Voss into battle against Vlakith. And I will be the one to breathe the flames that melt her. More than I could count, we were pacted by the Archdevil Tiamat and forced to serve the Gith Yankee. It is to the people that I'm loyal, not to the Lich Vlakith, a corpse in Gith clothing. I know Orpheus, just as I knew his mother. A new future will be planted in the wake of the comet. Until we meet again, mortal. I look forward to fighting alongside you. Vlakith will tremble at the sound of our roar. Kithrak Voss, may the Astral Sea be still as you cross it. And may your mind be of steel so your blade may be of silver to Lakmagir. Have you retrieved the Orphic Hammer? Will our prince's chains finally be broken? The Prince of the Comet is not dead. The Prince of the Comet will come again. The Prince of the Comet will liberate us from the Lich Queen's tyranny. The prophecy is one step closer to fruition. Gith's son will soon ride against Vlakith, Voss. And I will follow him into battle. And you will wield the greatest gift Mother Gith ever granted her dauntless children. A silver sword. I will carry it for the honor of Gith the great liberator, and her unforgotten son. Istik, now that you have the hammer, you must find a way to enter the astral prism. Once inside, smash Orpheus's bonds. His cry will shake the plains, and I will fly to your aid. The prince of the comet will sear the heavens again. First we'll defeat the absolute, then we let the Lich Queen tremble. Think again. I will not permit your entry. No, there is not. When I am done with the Gith Princeling, you may do with him as you like, but not a moment before. Questions, Istik? You seem to be lost in thought. Yes, but you will meet this challenge, as you've met so many others. Istik, friend to Orpheus, 
Together we will end the Elder Brain which shakes this city. Then I turn my sights to Vlakith, the Queen of Deceit. Since I was old enough to hold a blade, I've dreamt of wielding a silver sword. The swords cleave both meat and mind, body and brain. To swing one, mesmerizing. To be slain by one, agonizing. Everyone I bleed with the sword will be my tribute to Prince Orpheus. before you bears a familiar likeness. It is Balduran, the celebrated adventurer who founded the city of Baldur's Gate. Peril floods my province. The Palisades fall, the earth does tremble. The servants of shadow and blood assemble. Beyond lies the Grand Worm, deep in slumber, awaiting a true hero's advent. Should my domain drown in torment. Be you the deluge, turn away. Be you the hero, answer true. Are you worthy? Poetic nonsense. There is no worm and no savior. You sense neither life nor spirit within the statue. A powerful variant of magic mouth has been cast on it allowing it to speak only recorded messages. Ancient Ansor, hear me. A champion is proclaimed. The test begins. Let your judgment follow. Incredible. How old is this place? your worth to the heart of the gate. Only then may you enter. A true champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Justice. No pardon without repentance and no penalty without mercy. The right path often lies between the extremes. Wise indeed, though I can't take credit. It was my father who taught me the ways of the just. The dishonorable judge was banished, but judgment must still be passed. The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a ten-day left to serve judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. Banished the dishonorable judge and applied Lex Talionis, the principle of the sentence being proportional to the crime. You are a paragon of justice. Proceed. A champion burns bright. Even when rushing waters and moaning winds threaten to extinguish the flames, take the torch. Withstand the elements. Prove your courage. Your courage is a beacon to meek and mighty alike. May you ever withstand raging elements. Proceed. Prove your strategic wits. There is but one rule. The Dark King must fall in two moves. Are you a commander of armies? Or a shivering pawn? Fodder for cleverer minds. I'm afraid I have little experience with Lanceboard, let alone the command of soldiers.
good leader has the insight to find good counsel. As a war reaches its end, there is one who doesn't advise for the city's prosperity. Find him and strike him down. With courage does the hero march. Fettered by the taxing chains of fear, a stalwart soul must ever persevere. With insight does the hero choose. Guidance born of ancient wisdom proven. Peace, not strife, the undenied conclusion. With justice does the hero rule. Lead not the guiltless lamb to bloody slaughter, no, cleanse the lion's sins in sacred water. With strategy does the hero scheme. A cunning mind, a hundred steps ahead, your allies close, your rivals stunned in dread. Worthy you are found. Go forth, hero, seize your fate, and rise, great worm, heart of the gate. Great worm is nothing but bone and memories. The dragon's spirit floods your mind and memory in a great torrent of power. He is with you. He is within you. He is you. The next words that spill from your mouth are not yours, but the worms. I am Ansor, part of the gate, butchered in flesh, risen in spirit. Ansor wends his way through your mind like an unstoppable river. Your body is unmoving, yet thought flows effortlessly between you. The spirit pauses. And you feel the astral prism stir. Ansel senses the Emperor's presence within it. Answer me, Facey. Why have you come? A deep sigh resonates within you. The torrent stills, only disturbed by the dragon's next words. Brack. My words aren't meant for you. They're meant for him. The Emperor stirs in the astral prison, then in you, calm, curious, and detached. Bolduran, your presence has stirred me as it ever did. I am awakened. Answer. It's been too long. Older. No. I don't believe it. A name I once answered to. A name I did not expect to hear again. Least of all from the mouth of an old friend. Friend. Yes. And more. Until you killed me. Have you come to dance on my bones, Baldoran? Was slaying me not satisfaction enough? Satisfaction? No. You left me no choice. You had every choice. You were becoming illithid. I offered you merciful death. You chose to fight. And now you bring your thrall before me. How far has the great Baldoran fallen? Stillness. Ansur's consciousness hovers just above yours, searching, seeing. Dear Ansur. Enough! I gave you everything, Baldoran, and you repaid me in slaughter. It is time 
I return the favor. Let my bones rise and the storms gather. Witness Baldoran. The final tempest has come. I am the heart of the gate. I am the one who roars. This time, you will not escape it. It seems you are more interested in my past. Such sentimentality. Very well. It's like I always told you. I was just like you. An adventurer who yearned for greatness. And in mortal terms, I achieved it. As captain of the Wandering Eye, I acquired enough gold to fan Baldur's Gate. I stayed for a while to watch my city grow. But it was not enough. I grew restless again. The sea called to me. And I ran to her with open arms. Life at sea was not easy. Our last adventure was ruinous. My ship was destroyed. My crew lost, but my spirit was far from broken. I was determined to return in triumph once again. I heard of treasure in Moonrise. I strove to find it. What I found was an illithid colony, where I acquired a tadpole much like yours, and became a mind flayer, enthralled to the Elder Brain. It was Ansor who found me. Ansor who pulled me from the brain's domination. Ansor who brought me home. He sought to cure me of my sickness. Called on every healer he could find. Nearly broke his spirit in the attempt. But he failed to understand. I wanted no healing. I was not sick. Delmain's death was not my fault. Ansor's death was born of necessity. And make no mistake, I grieved them both. Ansor, in particular. Even after he had exhausted all possibility of reversing my condition, he still clung to hope. I tried to convince him of my reality. I was on the cusp of greatness beyond my wildest dreams. But all he could see was a mind flayer. He came to me as I slept. A mercy killing in his mind. I saw the tears. I felt his grief. I had no choice but to kill him first. It was an act of self-preservation.
Me too. I hope I never find myself in that situation again. While the past is beyond my influence, the present is not. It is time we move on. One nether stone remains. We must find it before the brain breaks free. I failed. The heart of the gate is dead. We need to see my father. He should know what happened with Ansel. The Hell of Baldurat. The Worm's Tempest and his roar hurtle through you. Ansu's essence still lives within the Helm, instilling you with power for as long as you wear it. Hot foot, hot foot! Place is trapped! This was your doing, wasn't it, Karlak? The destruction of my steel watch. Such a petty vengeance. Those things were evil. Just like their papa. To think I ever worked for you. <laughs> Proudly, too. I never meant to harm you, dear. Merely to help you realize your vast potential. You sent me to the hells. You let Zariel take my heart as though any of it was yours to give away. The greater good, Karlak. Something I wouldn't expect you to understand. You feel no regret, do you? All right. How about fear, then? Oh, you do quite misunderstand. I've already made a deal with your companion. We need each other. Do we now? You ought to reconsider. Divided, the Elder Brain will create an illithid army, yourself included in its ranks. Together, we can tame it. I'm sorry you feel wronged by how things ended between us all those years ago. But now, we must look to the future. You make it sound like we were lovers. Or friends. But that wasn't it. I trusted you. I respected you. It was my job to protect you. And that's what I did. I was so young. I didn't recognize evil when I saw it. When you turned on me, I was too dumbstruck to realize what was happening. No way he'd hurt me, I thought. He betrayed me for reasons I still don't quite understand. But I suppose evil has no real cause. It just is. Until it isn't. You utter brat. You're going to burn this place down. Good. No, you have to stop her. Do it now. Motherfucker. So Gortash is nothing more than a pile of flesh? Same as the rest of us. I feel like there should be a sunset for me to ride off into. Or an orchestral swell or... something. But there's nothing, is there? I killed the bastard who ruined my life and my prize is that I get to crawl into a corner and die. Am I fucking missing something? I'm beyond overwhelmed. I'm... I'm finished. <sighs> he's dead. And he's no fucking sorrier now than he was before. What was the point? I'm still dying. I'm 
dying. I'm going to die. Got a miracle in your back pocket you forgot to tell me about. I'm going to be as dead as a Gortash any day now. Any moment. And what then? Off to the city of judgment to waste into oblivion? Into the dirt to get eaten by maggots? Is that it for me? Is that fucking all? And you, you'll just keep going, won't you? Watching the stars, warming your hands on the campfire, dancing, eating, making fucking love all night, all of it, all of it! That's my reward for everything I suffered! That's why I survived 10 years of torment! The fighting, the clawing, the loneliness, <laughs> the fucking loneliness! All of it, so I could rot! Because the person I trusted the most gave me away to the devil! <laughs> it isn't fair. <laughs> I don't want it like this. You could try. You got a wish spell in that pack of yours. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do now? <laughs> Let's get out of here. I've always hated this place. Stupid fucking gigantic bridge or whatever. I think I need to go to camp for a while. Be alone. Scream at the sky. You can come and find me later if you want to. Thanks for listening. For existing. Love you. Stones pulse with psionic energy, permeating you, pulling you in line with their rhythm. The thrum quickens, rising, cresting on a single feeling. A location. A morphic pool beneath the city itself. So that's where the Chosen imprisoned the brain. With the stones in hand and the Chosen dead, we stand as good a chance as we ever will. As to how good a chance that is, I cannot say. But I have hope. If memory serves, there are smuggling routes beneath the city. They will take you underground. When we reach the pool, we will find the brain and we will end this. In death, thraldom, or freedom. But a word of caution. Once we cross into the Elder Brain's domain, there will be no turning back. Finish your business here before you proceed. The Brain will be waiting for us. Hey, soldier. You're back. Old habits. Did I miss anything while I was off having a sulk? Hm, nothing out of the ordinary, then. You know, soldier, we're so fucked. The Dark Three are trying to consume the Sword Coast. 
We've still got tadpoles in our eyes, and I've got a ticking time bomb in my chest. I'm not sure anyone has ever been more fucked than this. And yet, we're fine. In this moment, we're fine. Here I am, there you are, breathing, talking, even laughing if we want. Is it very precious to say that despite it all, I'm happy? No? I can't. I'd rather die here in Faerun, my home, than live in service to a devil. I've considered it. Believe me, I have. But it would take Zaryl all of a minute to suss me out and force me back into the blood war. I can't do it anymore. I'd wish for death every day. Let me go out surrounded by things I love, but things I hate. Speaking of which, there's something I wanted to ask you. Will you stay with me when it's time for me to go? I think I can do anything if you're there, even die. Don't. I hope I can count on you. You haven't let me down yet, and it'd be a poor showing to start now. Now, enough tragedy. I'm not gone yet, and our schedule is packed with important heroics, isn't it? Plus, if I cry any more, I'm going to run out of tears and start leaking motor oil. Thanks for everything, soldier. I'm extremely glad to be in this thing together. The Absolute's voice is gone, but I still hear its echoes. Reflections of reflections. A terrible fate for Answer, my son. Yet my hopes for the city's future have never been higher. I failed, father. The worm is fallen. A terrible fate for Answer, my son. Yet my hopes for the city's future have never been higher. I don't understand. You and your allies slayed the undead terror that was once the Great Answer. You are stronger than even the Great Worm. You will be the one to part the storms and lead the people through. You, not Answer, are the savior we need. First, you will fell the Absolute. Then we will rebuild Baldur's Gate. We will take back our city together. I will name you Baldur's Gate's newest Grand Duke of the Council. You will be hailed Heart of the Gate. Grand Duke? I look the part of a fiend. A half-devil possesses my very soul. I will tell the citizens and the patriarchs of your good works. They will know you carry your father's banner, but it is true. You are still under the She-Devil's thumb. Uncertainty fills the air. Will has reached a fork in his path. In which direction will he travel? Will? I fought to right the wrongs of the coast. To slay the men and monsters that hunt the helpless. It is in the wilds that I find my courage, not in the halls of upper city estates. There will be no Grand Duke Will Ravenguard, and there will be no Blade of Frontiers. I am now the Blade of Avernus. For as long as demons and devils imperil the Sword Coast, they will be my prey. Then go with my blessing. Be Faerun's great defender. Courage. Insight, strategy, justice. Let these be the lights that guide you, my son. Hail the Blade of Avernus.
The blade of Avernus. A calm settles over you. The elder brain is a menace, but with the blade of Avernus at your side, you know you can triumph. The blade of Avernus. How marvelous. It rolls right off the tongue. Tell me, little bug, who should Will's first target be? Yes, to kill the absolute, to free the infected, to end the illithid grand design. Could there be a more heroic journey? Well, apart from the whole devil pulling the strings aspect, of course. Don't worry, I won't keep too tight a leash. He scratches my horns and I'll scratch his. Ah, the thrill of the unknown. I can't wait to see how this epic plays out. The Blade of Avernus. A new name for a changed man. The four pillars finally rise within me. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. I'm not to abide them, but to become them. Ah, but enough reflection for today. I'm of a mind to celebrate. A hearty meal would do the trick. A few hunks of fresh venison, a round of brown ale, what do you say? Wonderful. Uh, you hunt the deer, I'll scrounge up the ale. Prepare your belly for a roast and a blade. <laughs> Let's hope Gale doesn't take offense if I assume cooking duties. Just the once. Pristine darkness in every direction. Silence, but for the gentle, rhythmic slap of water on rock as your vessel cuts through.
infused with magic. The brain is here. silence. The air is stale and putrid. It's close. Have the stones ready. Your blood slows. Your senses strung so tight they could snap in an instant. This was your role, and it is complete. 
Now you will witness the grand design. Again! The grand design must not come to pass! out just in time. The situation is worse than I thought. This is an elder brain, no longer. The magic of the crown has caused it to evolve. It has become something more. A nether brain. I thought so, too, but that was when I believed it was still an Elder Brain. It has been anticipating our every move from the start. I underestimated it. We will need to rethink our plan. I have assessed our encounter with the Nether Brain from every angle. I know why we failed. The problem was not the stones. The problem was you. You can make only one move at a time, but the Netherbrain calculates every possible move at once. It knows what you will do. It knows everything you could possibly do. You cannot outmaneuver it. To defeat it, you would have to think like an Anithid. Better yet, 
be one. Your mind is not capable of this. Mine is. You will give the stones to me. I will assimilate Orpheus, and then I will be able to leave this prison to face the brain. Assimilate him? Skva! No! Now is the time to liberate him! Do not stand against me. You still don't trust me. After all we've been through, Remember, I have been your salvation from the very beginning. Your knight in shining armor. I freed you from the Nautiloid, prevented you from crashing to your death. I have protected you ever since, at no small cost to myself. I came to you as a leader, but I did not shy away from showing you vulnerability. I needed you as much as you needed me. I was not above recognizing this. When you discovered my true identity, I did not flinch from the truth. I never lied to you, not once. I am just like you. We have the same enemy, the same story. I encouraged you to fulfill your potential, all while protecting you from harm. Now I ask you for the last time to trust me Release the Nether Stones to me. Do not forget, there's a card yet to come into play. The Orb. If we do not want to surrender the stones, we can still use it to ensure the brain's destruction. Along with my own, of course. This is a risk we cannot take. Your hubris drives you even now. You failed before. I cannot trust that you will not fail again. You must trust me. Hand me the stones. I told you we have to trust one another. I told you the Githyanki would only want to kill you for what you are. Still, you choose to break our alliance. Even united, the nether brain was going to be an impossible enemy. But apart, we have no chance of survival. Very well. Since you will not work with me, you work against me. You leave me no option but to join the nether brain. Day is gone. Our mission is set. Smash the crystals with the hammer and free the Prince of the Comet. Gith's beloved son will lead us to a sure victory against the Nether Brain. His eyes are unseeing, his voice silenced. But even with his mind caged, you can feel his power. The Yankee Prince takes his blade. A silent cry pierces your head. It's unlike any sensation you've ever felt. Oh, you reek of Illithid. You took advantage of my powers. And you slaughtered my honor guard. Nonetheless, it seems we must be allies. Your Majesty. The Prince of the Comet, Gith's true heir. It is an honor. Do not patronize me. You rejected the Illithid when it no longer suited your needs. No doubt you freed me because it suits you now. I will neither forgive nor forget your abuse of my powers. 
That is true. And it would have been the honorable outcome for one destined to become Gage. You had the opportunity to surrender yourself to my honor guard. They would have given you a noble end. They would have freed me, and I would have stopped the Elder Brain before it evolved into a Nether Brain. All that suffering... avoidable. Were it not for the choices you made! Yes, I do. The Gake was correct about one thing. The Netherbrain's power is beyond us. The hardest metal in the world would not cut through its mind, for it is made of thought itself. At this point, it will take an Elithin to unleash the full potential of the Netherstones. There is not. We face a Netherbrain. For there to be one way to defeat it is unlikely enough. There will not be another. Just as I was free. I will do it. I will become illithid. I will sacrifice my soul for my people. I will end the grand design. My prince, you cannot. This is not your burden to bear. The nether brain will be only too pleased to claim me. My prince, no! Even in my darkest hours, I knew it was my destiny to save my people. I could never have imagined this would be the way. Give Kartavki crushed. Let us seek out the nether brain and finish this. Once the grand design is ended, kill me. It is the very least you can do. Come. It's time for us to meet our fates and end this illithid nightmare. I will not forget what you did here today, nor will the Githyanki people. We have unchained the true bear. First, he will lead us to victory against the nether brain. Then, he will loose the Githyanki from Vlakit's undead talons.
what's become of you? The grand design must be ended. A sacrifice had to be made. The duty fell to me. I am not long for this world, or any other. What of Vlakith? What of our liberty? You underestimate your own people. Their imaginations have kept the name Orpheus alive for millennia. Bring them my message. Tell them my fate. Some will doubt. Some will mock. But some will listen. And the spark will be lit. Find your nerve, my friend. Today, we strike at the brain. This champion holds the key to the Grand Design's end. Answer to him as you would to me. Your Majesty. I have spoken. As you wish. I stand at the ready. Your friendship. Your constancy. When I fell to despair, they elated me. Thank you, my friend. Shavazai. Shavazai. Now, to the Netherbrain. Let it be the first victim in the war for the skies. We have lost much already. And we will lose more before the day is out. But even when the last soul falls, Baldur's Gate will stand. For Baldur's Gate is more than just a city. It is more than a place of opportunity for those of mercantile spirit. More than a place of refuge for those who are lost. More than a home for friends, loved ones, and adventuring souls. Baldur's Gate is a place where anyone can find what they need, if they're just willing to fight for it. Today, Baldur's Gate needs us. Today, we fight for... You're late, friend. This is the one you spoke of. That is, indeed, the one who purged my home of a terrible evil. My father, Ketherick. There's no one I'd trust more to protect this city. The Fist examines your illithid ally with suspicion. He was not expecting the savior of Baldur's Gate to be accompanied by a mind flayer. Appearances may change, but they do not mask the one within. This one, I know. Observe with whom it traveleth. Friends, this mind flare will fight with thee. It will save thy city and thy lives. The fist eyes your lithid ally with suspicion softening to curiosity, his hostility melting at the recognition that there's more behind those eyes than malice. My steel is yours, and I'm not alone. You helped me once. I figured it's time I paid you back. With magic. I'm better at crafting steel than wielding it. Your friend here is armored and potion-fueled and ready for battle. You've unexpected friends, <laughs> but my debt to you still stands. The Iron Hand Gnome's firepower is yours to command. Just show us where it's needed. The Moon Maiden's silver light is a shield in dark times. Today, it is mine to wield, and I hold her sword. Whatever strength I have to lend, I will lend it. I will make my city proud again. You carried me once, friend. And now, I'll carry you. <laughs> you can count on me, little rabbit. And your squiddy friend. I thirst for the hunt. I'm in the mood to crack some skulls after that fuckery in the Temple of Baal. The City Watch will be glad to oblige me. Not sure what I have to offer a mind flare, if I'm honest. But I hope my words of encouragement and reassurance will strengthen your resolve. The journey has been brutal. 
but I stand here a hell rider once more. And I would die a proud man if I died this day. I want my city back. And I've brought the toughest bastards from the guild to get the job done. My people have never hunted a monster this large. They are eager to join the fray. All the strength of the lands we healed flows through me. And from me to you. And whatever company you keep. I wouldn't miss this for all the souls in the city. Call my name, and I'll bring the Hellfire. Nature's servant awaits. Glad to have you with us. And not a moment too soon. The air is thick with anticipation. All eyes are on you. Well said. We'll prepare ourselves. We'll be ready when you call upon us. Baldurin's grace be with you. Dragons, overhead. Stay there. Fall back! Fall back! Matthew! Leave him be! We have to keep running! Over. He's frightened of your illithid ally, but the very fact it hasn't killed him on sight gives him reason to fork, and the rumors be true. Is this really the Mind Flayer who could save the city? You see his mind racing through its options, finding only one. Against all his better judgment, it's you and your mind flare. Remarkable. Never in all my life did I think to fight alongside a mind flare. Oh. We go back in there, we die, we flee, we last half a day at best. Shit! If this is it, then God damn it, let's make it count. City Watch, with me! We'll follow you to our last breaths.
Atlantis, the crown of Carsus, the site of power, the site of domination. The Netherstones might prove more effective if we use them now. Chance.
last. It is subdued. Spare me. Join me. Wield me. Become absolute. And thus, I honor my mother's legacy. The grand design, once again, ended by my line. The brain is on the cusp of its final thought, and it's taking all of Orpheus's strength to keep it there. An opportunity, perhaps. upon legions of unborn mythics. The pain rips through you, obliterating all thought, all feeling. Your tadpole burns in your brain. First time in a long time, your thoughts are entirely your own. And then, gravity. Everything you did, everything you sacrificed, it was worth it for this.
Loss of a mind is a terrible thing. But this time, I think I'll make an exception. I should feel relieved. Yet my blood still simmers. And the worm squirms no more. Who need not worry that his seat on my skull will grow suddenly stickier with Mind Flayer juice? Ah, forgive Minsk. It has been said that his mouth sometimes frolics and feels far ahead of his mind. Even when my time in the prison stretched out like eternity, when escape seemed impossible, I never lost hope. I knew that my destiny was to liberate my people. To return to them triumphant. I was wrong. It seems I can only fulfill one part of my destiny. My people will be liberated, but I cannot return to them. Not like this. You helped me destroy that abomination. Now help me destroy myself. You must kill me. But first, Lazel, I need your promise. Carry my hope. Carry my burden. Call my dragons, Kulos and Kuthos, and ride to the Astral Sea. Destroy Vlakith. Release our people. Be our future and our legacy. It will be done. I will never be free while my people are still bound by Vlakith's chains. Enough talk. Give me my freedom. Freedom from this form. Yes. But for how long? My mind screams. It will never stop until it has slipped away from me entirely. I will not be Gake. I did what I did to save my people. The rest is up to them. Someone else must rise within the ranks to lead the revolution against Vlakith. Give me my freedom from this form. Release my soul to the Astral Seas, while I still have one to call my own. Perhaps you are right. I may not be the one to lead my people, but I can still bear witness to their glory. I shall find a place for myself in a corner of these realms. For even in darkness, the stars of Tunarath will shine upon me. You were a worthy ally. Homecomings are never easy. I fear Orpheus will find the Githyanki much changed. And they him. See how the dragons flee you, Boo? Now they know you stand as this plane's protector. With the Githyanki gone, there's nothing left but the silence of the city. Smoldering, waiting to be rebuilt. But it seems that Gale's mind is elsewhere. The crown. It's somewhere in the Giontha. If I salvage the stones, I can reforge it. And once I have, I'll return it to Mistra. She'll cure me of my affliction, and I'll finally be free. And a more deserving one this time around. If this adventure has taught me anything, is that there are things in this world far more valuable than power. Besides, growing quite fond of this merry band of ours, but I'd quite like to see what happens to it. 
I'm sure Mistra will summon me soon enough, but until then, I propose we celebrate our victory the mortal way, with a drink in our hands and reckless abandon in our hearts. Revelry? A grand notion. We've earned the right to an indulgence or two. But I leave the final call to our esteemed leader. Very well. Perhaps after a drink or five, I'll be tempted to inflict some of my singing on you all. As if the city has not suffered enough. I honestly don't mind what we do once we get to the... Ow! It was nice when it lasted. Ah! I'm sorry. I've, I have to go. It seems that's the end of Astarian's love affair with the sun. That'll be hard on him. We did it, soldier. The city's going to be all right. And so are you. Engine's finally cooked. Held on just long enough. So, how'd I do? So are you, my friend, my companion. I adore you. allow this. Karlak, you're coming with me. Back to Avernus. You can't... So, what do you say? Die here now, or live on with the blade of Avernus at your side. Zariel won't touch you. I swear it, Karlak. Well, with you. But we have to go now. I can't hang on much longer. It's over. And it's all because of you. You, who were destined to become a thrall. Thanks to you, there will be no Illithid Empire, no Death God's tyranny. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. art the dead three thy faces gods thy actions barely worthy of the name didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed didst believe i would not notice thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals but souls vanish when their hosts 
become mind flares. Didst think the other gods would not notice? Gods thou may be, yet thou hast proven thyself fools, everyone. The supplication of Bane, the whimper of Baal, the death mule of Merkel. Felled by mortals, I overestimated thee. They did not. Vermin, away. Thou wilt trouble us no more.